Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's get this actually recording. At least try to get a recording screen. I don't know why. This game doesn't really like to uh, be recorded whenever I'm trying to do it. Gotta tinker around for a minute or two here. No, oh, there we go. Okay. Well, Gator Bros, we're back at it. <sighs> I know I said I wasn't going to do endings 1 and 2 on stream. But I thought about it. And now we're going to do endings 1 and 2 on stream. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you'll notice that Jeremy is not joining us uh, this time. At least not in the VC. He is in the chat. But, so I'm going to be soloing, running this. So hopefully the voice uh, shit works out fine for us. <laughs> I kind of, back when we were doing it over the weekend, I had a reprieve every now and again, but now we're going to be firing on all fucking cylinders. So honestly, I might need to grab like another bottle of water real quick, killer. But for now, we'll be fine. I'll show <clears throat> Jeremy over there using the emote. Very cool. Uh, we have two emotes now. Well, actually, we have three. Two free follower ones, I think is how it works, and then one animated one. So... The emotes are courtesy of Jeremy as well, so we'll probably be trying to get a couple more on the channel uh, over time. I just need to kind of think about what even we would want on the channel in the first place. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the, the, the quote unquote channel rebrand that I always uh, mention. Slowly working towards it now. Slowly but surely. But yeah, today we are doing the pain stream we're gonna be doing endings one and two i don't want to do endings one and two but i've heard that there's ending four epilogue you get if you've done all of the endings we've done endings three and four i cried what, so like what was it at the end of ending three i couldn't do it <laughs> i had to pass the mic to jeremy and then I had to mute and ball like a bitch for a minute or two. And then at the end of ending four, I was just very emotional and couldn't do the stream sign off. So, both of the, this game has two out of two so, or yeah, two out of four of the endings so far have made me emotional to the point where I am not able to speak. I'm soloing the depressing endings today. I'm pretty sure the game's gonna hit a 4 out of 4 here. We're kind of fucked, everybody. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of the way now. I apologize if I need to take a little bit of time <laughs> during some of these segments to kind of lean back and uh, find my voice for a minute. So, yeah. Should be, um, should be interesting. The, the way I'm gonna cope with this as well is I'm just gonna say, this is not my canon, you know? We got the three and four, those, those are the happy endings for me. Those are what we actually did. This is, this is the what could have been. And at the very least, I don't know if we'll do both endings tonight. We're gonna try to go for both. I think ending one should be a quicker one to get to, fingers crossed, but we'll just have to see. Um, Ending two is going to take a while. I'm figuring uh, if we're lucky, maybe we can wrap this up in about less than seven hours. Again, I have no idea how long it'll actually take to run this. So we'll just have to tell ourselves at the end of the fucking rainbows, uh, our, our beautiful ending four prologue. So, okay. I do need to take a quick peek at a guide, simply because we need to actually see what the point values we need to get for ending two are. Because ending one should be easy to get, we just have to flub everything, and that'll put us on ending one path. So for ending two, uh, let's see, endings, there is a nice little guide that should help us here. Yeah, here we go, ending guide. So, we're gonna need, for ending two, we need to get our Olivia score up 
to so so we need to get Olivia's score up and keep Inko's below three. Oh, interesting. Actually, if you get Inko's score up to okay, if you get Inko's score up to three and Olivia's up to five, then that still counts. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Because I think, um, I think, like, ending two is, like, the simp ending or something. At least I think I've seen that as the name. Who knows? The fucking finger touch. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, uh, drafted those up, uh, I want to say during either last stream or, like, after the stream. I, I can't remember when specifically, but <laughs> it was, a. Uh, it was during stream we were we were talking about like doing the little finger touch and I was telling him yeah I do that shit like actually in person a lot during streams I'll be like <laughs> um like if you hear me do that I'm usually doing the finger touch along with it it's just kind of like one of those things you know so having that as an emote should be pretty good and I think it'll be relevant uh, given <laughs> some of the stuff we'll probably be doing here yeah, into a simp. Yeah, so that makes sense then. If you, if Inko doesn't have enough confidence and he gets Olivia's score up, then it would make sense that that kind of railroads you onto that path. So, we're probably going to play with... I don't know. I don't think we'll play with the debug on. We'll just go ahead. I'll, I'll just use the... Uh, check the... Uh, whatchamacallits. Blech. I don't remember what the fucking words I'm looking for are here. Uh, the choice of acting scores. So, we've got like a little list here. We'll be using that. Uh, we're gonna skip through content that we haven't seen, or skip through content we have seen, which means that when we do the paths for the wrong choices, we're actually gonna be seeing more stuff here. Um, so, yeah, that should be good. I will say there is a decent chance that I need to take a quick break. I can feel my. My little uh, IBS belly uh, rumbling. Uh, it took a while to eat some dinner tonight. And so that might uh, be its ugly fucking head. But we'll cross that road when we get to it. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and kick it off. So, I think we could probably go ahead and start here. Um, just to kind of speed up the time a little bit. Because the first choices that we're going to be making, if I remember... Oh, actually, no, there is... No, we need to start from the beginning. Because there is one choice prior to the house here. And that's whether or not you draw on the paper or not. So... And that's one way to get an, uh, to keep your Inko score down. Now, Inko score... Yeah, In Inko's score is irrelevant to this ending. We just need to make sure that Olivia's score up. So we just got to care about Olivia. So we've got some choices here that I can go with. So let's go ahead and just hit start game. And then skip all dialogue up till uh, we can do any of these. It doesn't matter. Uh, this one doesn't matter either. Goes on for a little bit, Ben the Bastard. Still haven't forgiven him for what he's done. Alright, hold up a sec. Obligatory, uh, have to watch the cutscene. I also just want to throw in there. I think this track is one of my favorites in the game. I need to, um, at some point, uh, actually go through all of the tracks this game has. I didn't want to do it until after I'd gotten endings, or, well, seen, like, all the content, because I didn't want to accidentally hear something that's reserved for one of the other endings. Um, but I want to go through them at some point and kind of remember which ones are my favorites, specifically. I, I know for a fact this is one of them, though. I really like this track, especially this early on, and as the introductory to Olivia. I think it's an amazing track. But, that said, uh, we're gonna be fucking things up tonight with Olivia, so maybe I shouldn't really focus on that too much. <clears throat> you know, this is kind of how my life is. Just a fucking blur. I don't 
think this has this doesn't have any effect i'm pretty sure but let's take it just a quick look i pick a few other brands i recognize enough to tide me over for the rest of the school day well if i hit skip it should yeah so it doesn't even matter first introduction to mia there um we'll just do damien told me about you well, actually, we, we did Damien told me about you. Let's see what's, what happens when uh, Ben, we said that Ben sent us. I wanted to submit something for that art contest going on, but I don't have my school login info yet. Ben told me you'd be able to help. Ben, huh? Well, Ben and Damien. Hmm. She mumbles something beneath her breath and turns her head back to me. Yeah, I'm Liz. Yeah, so it was kind of like I mentioned before, you get, a, you get a more lukewarm response if you say Ben sent you. Damien was the uh, more welcoming option there. So. Um, we'll just do what we did before. We're trying to get to the... So if you were here last stream and you saw what we did when we were... Oh, shit. Um... And you saw what we did for going for ending four. Essentially, how we're going to be playing this is skip until we hit the new content. Um, specifically because I just don't want to rehash the stuff that we've already been through. If you want to check that out, it's on the archive channel. Um, we've got... Shit, it was like what? A six hour stream, a nine hour stream, and then like a 12 hour stream. So if, if you really want to see the content of the game... I'd recommend you go and check those out at some point honestly i might go through and add demarcations in those in that stream uh so that way you can easily skip to different chapters if you want to check different things out um because i've actually gotten pretty fucking good reception on this um so it might be a bad idea to like spruce it up just a little bit compared to the other stuff i do but yeah so Continuing onward, just gonna keep skipping until we get to, I believe it's Ms. Prockling's class, uh, when the note starts getting passed around. And it should be here. So, uh, this choice, if you draw the gator on a half pipe, you get one to Inko score. Um... Hold up just a second here. Because it's saying that there's something else that this triggers in the debug score. Score Inco supports. Okay. Okay, so this isn't a value. So there's one value that it's saying here it actually gets triggered, and that's score Inco draw note half pipe. Um, but in the debug score here, that actually isn't something that you see. You see score Inco support. And that's used when Mia is hounding Olivia. And you can either choose to defend her or just show support. Um, so I'm not sure what uh, what this one would be. Huh. Okay, okay. Um, well, we're not gonna we're gonna hold on to the sheet until after class. Painfully. As I said, this whole fucking the stream's just gonna be painful for me. <clears throat> I'll just hold on to this. That way Olivia will be spared from Miss Prockling's scolding. With a note safely in my pocket, I can focus entirely on the teacher's lecture. Which was dragging on... And on... And on... Suddenly, I find myself leaning over to see what the wheelchair-bound girl is doing now. She's hunched over, arms atop her desk, moving lazily. Hmm. Mr. Nito, is there a problem? I bolt upward when the teacher calls my name, and notice that a lot of eyes are now on me. N no ma'am, I was, uh, just trying to see the board better. Miss Prockling huffs. If you'd pay attention to what I said, that wouldn't be necessary, Mr. Nito. Yes ma'am. And that goes double for the rest of you. Yes, Miss Prockling. Good. Now where were we? Oh right, the old world myth of- Megalonica? Megalonic? Megalonic? Or what would be more accurate to say is my home continent. While she went on talking about her spider infested homeland, I found my eyes looking back at a certain someone. 
a certain someone who was now looking back at me with a wide-eyed shock. I caught in the brief. I was. I'm. Ugh. Don't worry, we're getting our flubs out early. I hope. I'm caught in the briefest of staring contests, and for once, I managed to win. Olivia's head whips back forward. It stayed locked forward for the rest of class. The look I, the last look I saw from her, that came after the surprise. That one radiated anger. I feel the folded paper in my pocket, and my mood suddenly dips. I mean, no one else was adding to it either. That look plus the knowledge of what I had in my pocket. I take the note back out, unfolding it to see the singular doodle on the page. From the corner of my vision, I notice Olivia raise her hand to Miss Prockling. Alright, Miss Halford, you may leave now. Everyone else, you may take the last five minutes to start on your homework. Olivia takes her time to pack away her supplies, occasionally glancing my way. Gone is the paranoia from earlier. It's now just... it's now become just plain annoyance. As she's leaving, I sketch the first thing that comes to mind. Olivia waits at the doorway for Miss Prockling to open it for her. Her head turns my way one last time, and I hold up the doodle page with a big fat doodle of Miss Prockling in the center of it. Her eyes widen again, though she's forced out when the teacher coughs meaningfully next to her. It's too late for me to realize that Prockling sees me holding the paper up. I try in vain to hide the paper, but by then the teacher is marching her way over. And what do we have here, Mr. Nito? She snatches the paper out of my grasp. Haven't I already told you about wasting the time you have in class? No, no, man, don't do it. We have to do it. We have to get the E4 epilogue. I, you know, the, the, what, what's the, what's the phrase? The, the hardest choices require the strongest wills or some shit. <clears throat> oh, I know I've, <laughs> I know I forced myself to get E2 so I could see the epilogue. It's worth it. Yeah, I heard the epilogue's really good. That's really the reason I'm doing this. Um, I mean, I could bitch out and just... Like, hit skip and skip all of the unseen text as well and act like this never happened. But it's part of the experience, right? Those bastards want me to fucking suffer to see my happy ending, so I guess I'm gonna suffer! So this is gonna be E1 first. Uh no, we're gonna we're gonna do E2 first and then E1. Uh we're just gonna go down the ladder. I <sighs> thank fucking god. Yeah, I figure uh if I'm gonna get owned, I need to get owned gently first before I get owned with the might of God. Um, so yeah. Hello, dear. <laughs> Ugh. You know, it was funny. Uh, I actually was in a call like yesterday during like my like weekly watch night, and one of my friends accidentally like slip of the tongue dropped the hello, dear. They did not live that shit down. They got torn into. <laughs> I don't know. It's worth it to just rip the bandage off. But you gotta you gotta drum up the drama, right? Like E1's supposed to be the worst ending. <laughs> Might as well start with E2, right? Haha. <laughs> yeah, right, guys? <laughs> oh, God. You know, you, you've gotten both endings, right? Would you say that, uh... Would you say e one shorter than E2? Because if so, we're gonna go E2 first. Because I don't know if we're gonna get them both necessarily tonight. If e one shorter, I'd rather get the longer one out of the way. That way, I can kind of have a better metric of, by the time we finish E2, how much more do I have to go? Don't honestly recall, I think they're about the same, I think? Okay. Yeah, then we'll just go with E2 first and say fuck it. I think E's teensy bit shorter. Alright. Yeah, ideally we get them both done tonight, but it is a midweek stream. It's a little easier for me to do, like, a, a fucking 12 hour stream uh, on the weekend when I don't have a work the next day. So we'll just have to see how this pans out. That said, even if I don't finish them both tonight, we would definitely finish it tomorrow because I'm going to be taking a vacation uh, over the weekend, so we won't be streaming then. And I want to go ahead and get the rest of uh, I Want a Hug out and done because one, I have it still fresh in my memory. 
I kind of remember the voices I'm doing for all these people. And two, I, I kind of got that gator brain rot, and I, I kind of need to see this through. It's gonna hurt no matter what. Like seriously, even thinking about you one gives me pain in the chest. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean like, I, after I finished the endings last stream, I honestly had like a day or two of uh, just kind of sitting there, just existing. My brain just kind of going on spin cycle for a little bit. And that's with the good endings. So the the, the, the bad endings here are not gonna be not gonna be fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm essentially poisoning myself for no good reason. <sighs> okay. Shake it off. Alright, here we go. She looks at me, face scrunched in anger. Is she gonna call Solly? Am I about to get fucking beamed? If this is your attempt at making a humorous gesture, Mr. Nito, then I do not find it funny at all. Before I could explain myself, Procklin crumpled up the papers in her hands and unceremoniously tossed it in the trash bin. Shoot. Defeated, I slump into my seat, now with no paper at all. Put it this way, there's never been a game that made me go, <laughs> God damn it, no. Oh, well. I get him. Oh, well, you'll get to see what I do live, so that'll be interesting, I guess. <laughs> Finally, the bell rings and the rest of us are excused. As I pack my things, I hope Olivia will understand what happened. No. Okay, so this should be recycle. Yeah, so now different content based off of the fact that we didn't actually draw on the paper. Um, okay. We can go ahead and toggle off the debug as well uh, until it becomes relevant again. We, we are going to use it when we get to the checkpoint to make sure we're still on track for ending two. God no, just knowing where you're heading and then hearing her name. Ugh. Ugh. <sighs> Look at that gator. You know, <laughs> I was kind of, uh, since I did finish the game and everything, I was trying to, um, like, look up some just, like, fan stuff, and it kind of hit me. I'm way too early to this game to, uh, be digesting fan content. <laughs> there, There is not as much as I would personally like. There's some fan stuff. Yeah, I can find a couple of things around. It's just not, like, big. At least, uh, I'm not, maybe I'm not looking in the right place, right? Big as in, like, volume-wise. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've seen some big... <laughs> We've all seen some big gator. I don't think I have it here. <laughs> but, there, there is large gator. That much is true. Sorry for the pauses. Head's kind of just like. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Well, did you clear the old saves? Uh, no, all the old saves are here. We just didn't have. I, I did not save on Fat Gator Ass because I was not about to be caught live that dredgerous. We've got all the cute gator stuff though. Look, it's cute. It's great. I'm gonna need to probably like emergency save sometimes and then go to the happier moments in order to finish this run. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know what, that's enough. I don't need fat get her booty, that's all. Screenshot of that instantly. Yeah, but <laughs> anything I do is eternal at this point. I can't be, I can't be going that wild. Ugh. <laughs> if I recorded the dance scene, just another scene from my own use. I mean, I've, I do have the save right... Uh, I want to say right here, right as the dance happens. So at any point, I could just go BAM! I do know that, uh, or at least I've heard that the game was released before it was fully ready. There was missing a couple things, and I think, um, at least I'm hoping, that the uh, gallery is something that'll be added later. That way you can more easily access all the... Um, different images and like all the cutscenes a little easier that'd be nice 
<clears throat> okay. She continues to look at me with a vague look of confusion, as if my being as a whole was an enigma. I mean, wouldn't hurt to try, right? Okay, what, what's the context here? Yeah, asking to be friends. Olivia hums in disagreement, finally turning away. Oh crap, maybe that was too forward of me? Oh, by the way, I, uh, don't have the note on me anymore. Note? What, with the doodles from class right now? Yeah, Prockling saw me when it, with it just as you left and she tossed it away. Sounds about right. And look, I didn't mean to hold on to it during class, but I didn't want you to get in trouble with Prockling if she saw you with it. Seemed like the best option for everyone, you know? She seems surprised by my reasoning, and stirs in her emotions until she settles on neutral. It's whatever. I deal with her on the regular anyways. Her head turns to look neutrally at... Huh, didn't know the school had elevators. Alright, this should be the same now. Skipped a lot of E1 and E2 besides the ending, so I'm a little worried to see just how... <laughs> how bad it all really is. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try not to skip anything that would be quote-unquote new content for us So like the wrong choices and their uh, their issues Ultimately though, I don't think those will take too long to go through. I mean choice wise in the game um, Shouldn't be too long to get through some of those especially since we are going to be doing the right choices with like all the Olivia stuff uh, it's just uh, Inko building his confidence. We're going to be smashing so we can get E2. Um, so the next choice is going to be essentially once we do the party. And so that one we can do the same one we did before. Because that gives us an Olivia score. So we should be good there. Again, for context, I am using a guide here to help us actually figure things out. Anyways, later. I'll, uh, see you tomorrow, then. I watch as the door slowly shut with a squeak until I can no longer see the green gator. My senses return to me, and I start making my way to the metro station. She doesn't let you ride with her? What? I hate it already. Oh, yeah, this is gonna be rough. This one's gonna be bad. As I make the journey home, I look back to my prog to the progress I've made with Olivia. <laughs> my heart, why, God. Don't worry, by the end of the stream, we'll be happy again. <laughs> we'll 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 go cope. We'll all cope together. It's definitely been a rocky start, but I put it on unfortunate circumstances. Though maybe there were some things I could have done better. Liz and Ben may have had a bit of a point about Olivia, but I'll keep trying. Just putting a band-aid over a bullet wound. No no no, this is a false reality. We just we, we dissociate right now. We're looking into somebody else's life. This is no longer us. We're good. <laughs> We have our happy endings. The Gator. <laughs> it's kind of funny watching everybody pop up. It just heard like somebody's bones break there. <laughs> uh, we can invite Olivia back outside. That's fine. And this is going to be all stuff that we've seen so we can help churn through everything quicker. Don't worry. We'll see what happens when we have to wreck Olivia's uh, shit as well. Okay. You didn't get the pool scene either? God damn it, oh well. I, I think it might have been just we skipped past it there because a lot of those ones, um, I mean, I think that's literally just a one-click scene. It's not like with the gator ass where you have like a little bit of dialogue while you're staring. So that one's just quick. At least I'm thinking. I mean, we could even go back and check. Like, my stream, I get up, oh, can't go back and check. Never mind, run it back. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is this this is Olivia so we can do this one as well we can go uh, full simp mode and just get all of Olivia's points Okay, yeah, so show support for Olivia We get in the elevator which is cool All right, and now we got to wait till we're outside and you would unlock the Ben story. So we just go with I can't hate you. And we've seen all this dialogue before because this is what we did on our first ending with E3. Everybody 
Everybody get ready. <laughs> We're gonna cheer for Olivia here too. At least I'm pretty sure that should be Olivia point. Yep. Cheer Olivia on. It's like watching someone dance into a minefield. Someone willingly dancing into a minefield. They know the mines are there, but like they just keep going. All right, lean moment incoming. Trippy Gator, Trippy Gator, my favorite. I want you hugs. <laughs> the Inko does not deserve Gator Lap Pillow in this route. I mean, his relationship with Olivia in this route is at least okay. It's just he's like got zero confidence. <laughs> Uh, consult others about Olivia. Mia being a bitch. Who would hey, we actually got a hug in this round. Did you see that? Look at that. Hold up. Uh, is this the hug? No, <laughs> we went too far. We don't get the hug. All right, come on, cutscene time, everybody. Get hype. Watch fucking Mia own herself. <laughs> Man, that doesn't count. It super counts. Actually, is this E2? I'm wrong entirely. If this is E2, I'm wrong entirely. Yeah, no, this is just E2 so far. We're, we're getting our Olivia score. We're not getting the Inko score. There is no love here. Hey guys. Guys, you wanna see a really cool cutscene? There we go, baby. There's such an overwhelming amount of Mia art like you wouldn't believe. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Look, when it comes to Mia, I'll agree her fucking her drips immaculate. But she's she's just an unapologetic bitch. And uh, <laughs> I'm not one of those guys who are like, oh, I like the girl who's going to fucking ruin my life. I'm like, OK. If if she's if she's rude but she's got a heart of gold inside, that's great. I love that. No, she's just an asshole. I don't like that. She's the kind of like she'd punch me and then just laugh at me on the ground and I'd be like, "What the fuck's wrong with you?" And she'd be like, "Yeah, you're an idiot." She is not Gator Girl. That's all I need to make my decision. Also true. This isn't I want to hug that bully. It's I want to hug I want to hug that Gator. By God, I, we've hugged that gator many a time. Th this run is not going to be happy. We're, we might get more hugs, but eventually it will end in downfall and crying. I think y'all discussed playing Snoot game last time. Consider I'm playing it right now. Can confirm there's a lot of dialogue that's not Twitch friendly. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I did like a little bit of looking myself. Not like too deep, but just kind of like what sort of themes are in it. I'm not going to say I'm not going to do it. It's just one of those things I might have to like really consider um, because I have heard that the game is much edgier. Like this is, I mean, we've played through a lot of this and barring these endings, it's much more acceptable. The way the handle Fang is also very touchy. <laughs> okay. I, I would still like to do it content wise. Maybe if it's bad enough, I won't do it on Twitch. I'll instead just record it and then post it. Um, and we'll kind of like dance around the different parts where maybe I need to kind of be a little more sensitive. Um, so I'll, I'll figure that out. I'll probably be thinking about that kind of stuff like <laughs> while I'm on vacation, to be honest. Uh, because we do have to figure out what the next big game we're going to be touching is after this. Got a couple ideas, but you know, it's always one of those things where I've got to kind of like feel it out. I'm an indecisive bastard after all. 
Um, so this one is, I believe, an Olivia point, correct? Uh, right. So, yeah, this is an Olivia point. So we can also just take a quick peek here. Uh, so the debug score, we should, yep, complete zero on Inko, three on Olivia. If we don't take the key, Olivia, go up. Yeah, so we're good there. So I think at this point, if I'm correct, yeah, we we physically cannot get anything other than ending two, I don't think. Uh, we can also take a look at the debug score. It might tell us, no, ending hasn't been locked in yet. I think it's at the midway point. It determines that, right? But there's only two more uh, points that Inco can get, meaning that even if we got both of those points now, we still are set for ending two. At least we should be. We're gonna also make sure, we're gonna make sure that fucking Inko gets zero points, all right? But, you know. Yeah, the safest language and way they handle Fang's character just won't be done smoothly. That's fair. Okay, so, we've done this before. Keep this shit rocking. See, this is why I'm hopeful that we might be able to get through both endings tonight, because we are going through a lot of stuff that has already been done on our end. There's just going to be minor differences when we have to make the wrong choices. Um, so this one, I believe, is going to end up being an Inco point. Yeah, where you have to do both of you are wrong. So we can go find... Uh... Yeah, let's just... Uh... I mean, we can just do this one. We we've done this before. Um... We're just going to be indecisive and say, I don't know who's right. And then we'll see where this goes. I think you both have some good points. But there's a bigger picture that we all need to see. Deep down, both of you want to be friends. So why not turn over a new leaf starting today? <laughs> Uh-oh. Inko's about to get fucking destroyed. Is that it? Uh, pretty much, yeah. There's, let me think, two fully new scenes with E2, but it's from minor changes of Olivia being in good mood when she's painted her windows versus depressed. Unsure of how much of that. Okay. Inko sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious the right choice is to say, hey, both of you are being dumb. Like, cool it. But Inko's just like, hey, can, can we just be friends, please? So are we good? Uh, sure, I guess. Yeah. Well, that didn't blow up as bad as I thought it would. I was expecting it to be like, Inko, what the fuck? <laughs> really? Just, just, can we be friends? Saving universe ass shit. Nah, for real though. <laughs> Which went much better than expected. Yeah, let's put it fucking lightly. After things settled down, we finished off our meals and we can skip. So yeah, not much happened there. Okay, here's this part. <laughs> it's okay, guys. Mia says she's sorry. No, I don't forgive Mia. Hell, I I don't really forgive Ben either for the shit, but you know. If in the good endings, you kind of have to, I suppose. Okay, so this is the last choice. Uh, let's see here. The condition asked Olivia to be true. What's that? Not true. <laughs> and Yedikin's dead, <laughs> and his fate has been sealed. Uh, so it hasn't actually locked us in yet. Interesting. Wish there was like a ending 4A and ending 4B, depending on if Olivia forgives Ben or not. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, I, I'd like that. Um, like, I can understand, like, in the context of the ending, why Olivia just forgives Ben, because at the end of the day, she's... What's the word? At the, at the end of the day, she just wants to be over it. She wants to move on with her life. I think what would have been a little bit better, at least in my opinion, would have been 
one where maybe maybe like an ending 3a 3b right where ben plays less of a role because I, I feel like telling off ben should get him to lay off you know like there should be a decision when the whole thing with mia happens where you explode on ben or you just walk away and if you walk away he thinks that everything's still fine and then that leads to the ending three that usually happens but going off on ben maybe makes him realize something because it's weird for Ben to see all that and still just assume, oh, everything's fine, this makes sense, instead of actually having, like, any introspection there. Because he's, you know, sure, he, he might be taking antipsychotics or any, or something, but, like, even he has to be able to tell, like, hey, this is, maybe I'm in the wrong here. She's over it, essentially doesn't care at that point. Get locked in with me, uh, Ben and me in here in principle. She wants to be a punch him option, not even as a joke or anything. Yeah, no, for real. I, I mean, when I did ending three, I thought that Inko was extremely justified in blowing up at Ben after the Mia and um, after Mia gets off like scot free and Ben's like, hey, we're winners here. This is all good. And it's like, no, you dumbass. This is not all good. If you saw Olivia as a friend, you would recognize why this is bad. I get that Mia has stuff on you, but. If you're gonna go that way, at least realize you're talking to someone that one doesn't like Mia, that Mia doesn't like, and you just helped someone that's been bullying Olivia get off the hook. Like it's just really weird for his character. If I'm honest, like he doesn't come off as somebody who would necessarily just be that oblivious, I guess. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I just have a bad read on his character. So, uh, so yeah, we gotta, this is, uh, this is an Inko point where if we do this, it's an Inko. So we're going to go ahead and do this and, uh, keep the zero pointage. <clears throat> so yeah, there's a new dialogue. Olivia needs us now more than ever. I think Ben has the right idea. It's what the Attican would want. These are scary times. So it makes sense to be afraid. To be hurt. Don't worry, Olivia. I place my other hand on Olivia's reassuringly. I'm here with you. We all are. Ben is extending the olive branch here, right? You just need to accept it. Ben gives a tense, shaky, but approving nod. I am glad you guys are seeing this situation for what it is, and just how important it is that we make this eulogy something beautiful. Olivia glances around hazily, her voice broken. I don't want it to be gone, Inko. There's too much that I didn't. I know. But we need to face reality. And we can do it together. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to face anything at all. It's okay, Olivia. I know I was close to Yedekin too, but... You clearly meant so much more to him. And him to you. He was the only teacher that seemed to really care, right? She nods. So you're the most hurt. Most afraid. Afraid? And we're here to support you. You just need to help us out. You just need to help us help you. If you're not ready to face reality, we can help you think straight. Face it together. Can you do that? Her eyes rove over Ben and I, and then back to our interlocked fingers. I take hold of her other one. She blushes and looks at me dead in the eyes. Can you help us? Okay. I'll, I'll think about it. I'm still afraid, but if you're there... I'm here. Ben clears his throat. Honestly, I think it's intentional of him to be that cruel to Olivia. Not some kind of mistake or anything. He says as much in E4 that he was jealous to see Olivia got all the help because her problems were visible. But she turned the help away. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's true. I, I don't know. It, it's just, it's... Yeah, I mean, I guess I would have to really do more looking at like specifically all the dialogue in the game to really get a full grasp on Ben's character and like what his motivations are and why he does the things he does because even then like I can try to make a statement and it's possible that I'm just missing out on some context that either slips my mind or um I just never properly interpreted fuck this route man go watch that dance scene real quick 
Yeah, if this dialogue isn't great from Inko's point of view, that's for sure. I'm definitely not gonna like any of this. <sighs> You're not gonna like any of this. I'm the motherfucker who has to read it. <laughs> I have to sit here and step in the shoes of this guy when he starts bumbling literally everything. <laughs> oh. already went through it, man. <sighs> now I watch another man experience it all over again. It's a vicious fucking sight. Look, all I got to say is blame the devs. They said if I want the really, the really happy good stuff after E4, I gotta go crush my balls in a vice. <laughs> Ugh, ben clears his throat. That was, uh, very inspiring of you, Inko. His hands aren't tensed up. He's calmed down a bit. Which I honestly appreciate. It's the completion of the one snow. <laughs> I'll just send you that vlog, man. No, 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 no. We have to earn this shit. We have to. We have to get it. We have to. We have to win this. He opens his mouth to continue, but I hold a hand up to stop him. Olivia's had enough for one day. Ben, could we get some alone time together? Oh, uh, of course. I'll give you a bit of time to process all this. Ben walks up to me and pats me on the shoulder. With a final solemn look at Olivia and nod towards me, he walks out of the classroom and leaves Olivia and I alone. Okay. Back to skippage. Is she gonna- Yep, she chewed on her face. Cool, cool. Do we know how long the two have known each other at this point? Uh, well, this is winter, so it's like half the school year, right? So, like, th their their relationship is still good. It's just Inko has no backbone. Well, okay. The relationship may not be good. You know, they're on route to be... Something more, but because of Inko's lack of backbone, I'm assuming that he's not going to stand up for something, and that's going to cause Olivia to get hurt, and then we're going to get sad. Get up, guys, let's go. We do be loving the gator kisses over here. Yep, there's there's your obligatory gator ass. So I don't know if this actually counts for anything. Because it doesn't actually come up on the choice affecting score here. So I actually want to kind of check that real quick. There's feelings, but I feel like they're not going to be good for each other. This does not? Okay. Yeah, I kind of figured that was the case. Then in that, in that case, let's try something different here. Just, I mean, we always did the little, little, little peck, little peck, but uh, let's see if, uh, see what happens when we do the other stuff here. Just like a little bit of flavored text, at least. Her brow scrunches up and I can see the goosebumps spreading on her arms. Kneeling down, I take the edge of the blanket and bring it back over her. As I turn away from her, something catches my wrist. Okay, there we go. Okay. Interesting. So I'm not going to have... Yeah, so we're, we're locked on to ending two now. So we don't even need this up. We can go ahead and get that off the screen. So this is going to show where I think Inko's lack of backbone is going to be more prominent. Because in ending three, obviously, we, be, we blow up on Ben. Because we have... We, we have, at that point, some more confidence. And we're like, oh, what the fuck? This is bullshit, Ben. What the hell are you doing? Um, okay. Let's see. I move to speak, but an over overwhelming feeling of exhaustion falls over me as I recount the events of the last few days. While Mia was completely out of line the whole way through, it's true that we provoked her into doing what she did. No! <laughs> no! Stop! <laughs> if we had just come to scale her about this earlier, none of this would have happened. So, doesn't that put some of the blame on us? No, he's a fucking doormat. <laughs> he's a doormat in this. I look over at Mia, who's currently staring at me with an intimidating glare. I quickly shift my gaze to Ben, who seems to be offering me a supportive smile. <sighs> Fine. I don't want to make this any bigger than it already is. I only blinded Mia with the camera flash because I thought she was hurting Olivia. 
We were scared, so we ran away, and there wasn't any time to explain the situation. It was just a big misunderstanding, Miss Scaler. That's all. Right. As Scaler uh, considers my explanation, Ben shifts toward me and pats me on the back. His gesture of support is contrasted by the evil grin painted on the face of the Crimson Devil towering behind him. Could not be me. <laughs> this could not. This would not. I, me personally, this would not stand. We all stand in silence as we wait, await a verdict. Ahem. The principal stands directly in front of us now with an unreadable expression. In addition to the report itself, uh, Iadikin left behind his account of what happened. In it, he describes me as actions as openly hostile and intentional. Could you blame her? She couldn't see anything and she was in a lot of pain. In either case, it seems both parties in agreement as to what happened. Iadikin didn't mention a motive in his report for some reason, but I suppose that clears it up. Besides, making a big deal out of this during the audit isn't such a good idea. Principal Scaly looks ready to object to the line of thinking, but ultimately says nothing. So, Mia gets off scot-free here, is essentially what's going to happen. And mm, feeling like Mia's probably going to cause some issue. <laughs> oh boy. Do you reckon he didn't leave in the motive because he really hoped that Inko would defend Olivia? <sighs> um... Yeah, I think it, uh, it it was either he wanted Inko, to, it might have been like twofold, where he wanted Olivia to speak up herself, and then if that doesn't happen, Inko to have her back, because he trusts Inko to help uh, Olivia, since in this run you are close with Olivia. There's no reason for him to leave the motive out unless it was because he really had faith in Inko. Yeah, I, I think it's because he had hoped, at, at the very least, one of them would help cover the other, essentially. Um... But because Olivia's not here, she can't chime in. Uh, not to say that she necessarily would. So, yeah, it might it might be that um, he was hoping that maybe Inko would maybe do some more here. I'm sure he would have never known that Olivia's chair would break the fountain. Yeah. I mean, he's got... He, <laughs> he seems to have, like, an idea of how he wanted things to play out. That definitely did not fit in the fucking picture. Now, I would like to give the benefit of the doubt, especially at a time like this, but given the extent of the destruction, I don't feel I can do that. It would bring me no greater relief than to have you off my mind for a few days, Miss Moretti. But given both of your classmates' statements, you may not be fully to blame. Alright, so, I was they get into a fight, then I rescue him from the elevator, then I fucking die. Wait, let me run that by the script again. Let me. Okay, yeah. Well, hey, if the script calls for it, guess I will. Shit. I think a week of Saturday detentions to assist with cleaning up the hallway is in order. Uh, huh? Miss Scaler, if I may. The principal sighs and nods. I spoke with the janitors about it. They all agreed that it could be done in a single day if it had enough hands. And they. Are we gonna have to? Are, are we gonna get fucking dragged into helping clean up fucking Mia's mess? And they all have plans for December. It wouldn't be fair to bring them in and ha cancel their leave. Miss Scaler growls and rubs her temples. Right, right. In that case, Mia, Inko, you'll both get one Saturday detention to help repair the hallway. You're expected to arrive at 10 a.m. shop and work on cleaning up the mess you made. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Oh. Fucking come on, man. <laughs> really? Really? Can I just punch Mia right now and get the detention by myself at least? God, I don't want to hang around her. Just think of this is an A or something. That's the only way I'm going to cope with this, that's for sure. That still means that somewhere in that A, you a getter girl gets a bad ending. We w I, Notice how... Keep in mind... At no point have we saved this. This is going to cease to exist. It gets collapsed. No no longer there. There will be no thread back to this. Never save? Exactly. We will never save this. 
this is just fan fiction, you know? <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> now, if the three of you don't mind, please leave me be. I can't, I can't keep a consistent accent for this, can I? I have more important things to focus on. At the end of the stream, we'll be happy. That's, yeah, it, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. That much is true. She doesn't even look up at any of us. I turn towards Ben, who looks absolutely relieved. And Mia, who looks positively overjoyed. She skips out of the office without another word, leaving both Ben and I to stare blankly at each other for a few seconds. Eventually, we shuffle out of the room together. Well, I guess that's it. <laughs> no matter how what you say, always justify. With Gator somewhere, still have bad ending. I'll have to do God's work and do some fan fiction later, I guess. To restore the balance. If I bring bad into the world, I must bring good. Ugh. Damn it. Never gotten detention before, but... I find it hard to care much. Anyway, I just want to go home. We're going to see Olivia again. Inko, are you okay? My head turns half-heartedly towards Ben. No, not really. Look, man, I'm really sorry for what happened back there. But thanks for helping me out. I didn't want to make a big deal out of this since me and Olivia are both struggling. <laughs> Make Mod real quickly gives Olivia a baseball bat to bust Ben's kneecaps. Let's put both Ben and me in a wheelchair. Now speaking of Olivia, is she doing all right? She's at home right now. Well, you ought to comfort her. She's going through a lot right now. I think I don't know that. I know you are too. You could use each other, especially after what happened. <laughs> Fuck you, Ben. Fuck you. Yeah, I kind of want to go like, uh, just jump to the, uh, the ending three where we say, what the fuck, Ben? What was that? <laughs> Already going to go see her after school. That's good. I have to go. But thanks again, Inko. You really did me a solid here. Besides, detention isn't all that bad. And it's not going to appear on your record. I can make sure of that. Oh, huh. thanks, Ben. Don't mention it. With a smile, the student council president nods at me and turns to leave. I'm going to punch his glasses into his brain. Before long, it's just me standing in an empty hallway outside of the office. It's only lunch, and I already want to go home and fall asleep. At least Damien and Liz are probably waiting for me. I'm occasionally glancing over here just to see, like... I'm assuming that it's going to actually be pretty different here on out after school i took the metro back home to shower and put on some new clothes as it turns out my parents really were on a business trip for the weekend as indicated by the sticky note in the fridge <laughs> well back of the pains again regardless okay we got skip again oh, why does this feel even more depressing than last time and i see blackness olivia Room is extremely dark. The only source of light coming from the entryway. We can't skip, so this is some new stuff. I have to take my sunglasses off in an attempt to see the dark through the darkness better. Olivia, the heck happened in here? Why is it so dark? I can make it Olivia's shape in her bed. Hmm. It's a long story. Come sit on the bed. Don't you have a lamp? Can't you turn it on? Oh, are we not going to have enough of a backbone to help bring her out of the funk here? <sighs> Oof. I don't want to ruin it. Is darkness really that necessary for whatever this is? Yes. All right. Jeez. Take a few careful steps forward and stub my toe on the edge of the bed. I fall forward onto it, crunching into something. Shit, Inko. Are you all right? Yeah. I have a better view now. Livy sits in the middle of, the, of her bed, wrapped in her blanket. Surrounding her are piles and stacks of her old drawings and sketchbooks through the years. They're arranged in rings around her. And I've fallen onto the outer ring. Whoops. Oh, crap. Sorry. Get up! Get up! I carefully lift myself back up. There's not too much damage. Olivia shoes me off that part of the bed. What is all this? 
Actually, how is it so dark to begin with? Don't you have a wind? I can explain. Uh, please do. Olivia inhales deeply. <sighs> After you left, I had some time to really think. It was just me and my thoughts. Alone. Maybe a little too alone. Something within me just needed to come out. I just felt this need to. Um, I was inspired to do this. She doesn't even make a joke about the window. Nah, she's in like a really bad headspace right now. Some act of defiance against the world or something. I'm still figuring it all out. I feel kind of bad now just leaving you alone here. Sorry. I could have called or out sick or something. There's no need to feel bad though. I really needed this. Because after I got everything set up, I got to thinking. All I had, and I had all day to do it. Yet it can put a lot, in a lot of effort on me. You wouldn't be proud of me throwing a pity party for myself. So all this, I'm getting it out of my system. They're called performance pieces when someone does this sort of thing. It's all I can do, but I don't think it's enough. Performance piece. Olivia, this is amazing. You're able to keep striving onward with your work. Thanks. I mean it. You're not missing a beat. Not letting what happened get you down. Inko, <laughs> my guy. She looks down as fuck right now. <laughs> what are you saying? And here I've been all day, all gloomy. I admire it. I guess you're right. It's one way of looking at it. Do you want to come into the living room? No. I think I want to stay here a while longer. It still hurts. Alright. Inko, you do not leave, motherfucker. Get the fuck back over there and keep her company right fucking now. <laughs> this is not a request. This is a demand. You walk out that door, I am personally going to beat you up. Squeeze her hand and head back to the door. I'll be out here I'll be out here for a while then. She nods and shuts the lamp off again. I shut the door and sit back on the couch. <laughs> Everyone fucking hated that. Everybody hated that, Inko. Inko, 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 you stupid son of a bitch. <sighs> uh a performance piece. I never would have thought of that. Dude, he is so fucking dense. Oh my god. Man, that really is something else. <laughs> God, Inko. Holy shit. He's sitting there like, hands on his hip like, wow. She's such an inspiration. <laughs> oh. God damn it. Zero point Inko, no brain. Cut the Inko, cut the Inko. Oh my god. Oh. Man. Man. <laughs> you still want this? You still want this ending? Hey, I would like to direct you to the title of this stream. <laughs> I really don't want to do this. Oh. <sighs> Yet you persist. I want that E4 epilogue now. Shut up, Vinny, I'm not in the mood. No, Inko's perfectly in the mood to chat right now. For all he knows, everything's hunky fucking dory. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Every click is the gator getting hurt. Yeah. I'm gonna need to, like, get the cat of nine tails after this stream and, like, do a Hail Mary or something, huh? Oh, okay. The question is, do I do I do the... No, because that's Jeremy's thing. I can't do the toad. I, I gotta just do, like, high-pitched. Alright. Hey, Vinny. I wave at Vinny and Damien, the two brothers entering the living room from behind me. Guess their room is back there. Man, do I have a great timing or what? I 
take a moment to consider what he means when Vinny plants himself right in front of the television and begins pulling something from the cabinet underneath. <laughs> Do the toad give us something good about this run? No, no joy may be found. Uh, you know, I think we probably could use a little bit of lightheartedness to uh, make it even harder when we uh, inevitably big fuck up soon. Depend on all hope, ye who enter. That really is the stream today, isn't it? There is nothing great to be here. Oh, man. I'm gonna crack my neck a little bit. I got a little bit of something in the back of my neck I'm feeling right now. It's not a headache, it's not a migraine, but there's something. Maybe it's just anxiety and stress for what's coming. <laughs> this is fanfic, fan fiction Vinny's voice. It's odd. I mean, Vinny's gone through, I think, three iterations of voice on, on these streams, so... I only just realized this, but the theme written for this game has lyrics and they're adorable. Yeah, I think I remember seeing some of the lyrics, um, and I was like, aw, hell yeah. We can take a look at that later. After we, uh, hurt ourselves plenty. You mean it's game time then? <laughs> yeah, man, it's game time! Damien takes the spot right next to his brother and helps him in setting up the large squat block of a console. Man, that thing looks pretty old. And huge. Alright, we're all set! The controller's tossed into my lap and I marvel at just how large it is. Er, thanks, Damien. But I'm not much of a gamer. In fact, I've never actually played anything more than some Flash games online. Nah, it's cool! We can play something simple till you get used to it, or... I don't want to be a bother, Damien. I'll be fine just watching for now. That's weird, Inky! You're weird! Bro, chill. Give Inko some time. I'll be playing once he sees how awesome it is. If he's going through severe depression, he goes just like, VIDEO GAMES! Whoa! <laughs> young boy nods and focuses back on the screen. The screen flashes to a menu screen of some kind. It's interesting, because in ending 2, we don't even play the game. In ending 3, we play the game, but we suck. In ending 4, we play the game, but we suck, but we learn because Olivia was willing to teach us. Reclining deeper into the couch, I allow my mind to drift. Man, I'm getting the whisk for this. Yeah, I might need to go get the, the fucking vodka. I'm, I'm, I might need some liquid courage for the endings here. Damn, we passed out for a while, huh? I don't know how long my brain was off, only that it came back when I heard the telltale noise of the door hinge opening. Looking in the direction of the noise, I see Olivia on her knees, casually shuffling over to the couch. Hey, Olivia. The game pauses when I say that, and two brothers also wave at her. Hey, guys. Dinner ready yet? Almost. <clears throat> what was the voice I did for him? Almost little lace. I don't know. I did like some kind of like country. I feel like forget liquid courage. Just to be liquid amnesia. We getting blackout tonight, boys. <laughs> Randy shout came from the kitchen. When did he get there? Man, I must have spaced out for a while. We don't even get a pizza party. This fucking sucks. <laughs> Quick check on my phone says I'd been in deep uh, thought for at least an hour. Whew! Okay, fish is ready, you guys! Fish? But I didn't hear any cooking. And I don't smell anything. You guys coming? Just a sec! Olivia and Vinny follow after Randy's voice without a word, while Damien quickly pauses his game and sets the controllers aside before motioning me to join them. <laughs> right, why didn't you show up for work? Get a girl was getting bullied, so I had to get drunk. You know, that should get you off work, honestly. They should give you a salute and call you a fucking hero. Push myself up and trudge toward the kitchen. Inside the Payne family is hurrying to sit at the dining, t uh, dining table. Even Olivia is struggling to help herself up onto the chair, but a hand from Damien pulls her up. On the dining room table sits a silver tray covered in raw fish, wasabi, bottles of soy sauce, and slices of ginger. Ever have sashimi, Inko? <laughs> she looks so fucking sad. <laughs> to be fair, this is like her default look. <laughs> we just know that given the context, it looks even worse. <laughs> it doesn't even help. <laughs> help her, you ask? Yeah. Yeah, Inko just sucks. 
I'm actually very familiar with it. I'm surprised at my sudden turn of luck. Many times, actually. My family orders this stuff on the weekends a lot. Finally get the sushi they talked about. No pizza parties here on 10 stupid game. I would much rather be having a pizza party. Sushi's cool, don't get me wrong, but pizza party makes everybody happy. Crying that ginger into Inko's eyes and make him snort wasabi. Just put him through the fucking pain torture. Right now. Hey, that's great to hear. Well, don't just stand there. Feel free to join us. I think I, I'm hitting a bit more of my stride on Randy. I really take a seat, starting to feel slightly rejuvenated. Everybody begins to pass out plates to one another, and we all pluck pieces of salmon from the tray and place them onto our plates. Five minutes in, everybody's enjoying the fish. Marge, chop his dick off. Marge, take his glasses away. <laughs> Burn his Gucci jacket. I can't help but just, uh, notice not nobody else is eating properly, though. They soak their fish in soy sauce, and the ginger seems to be eaten at random rather than used as a palate cleanser. Have you seen this version of Inko? He's dickless. <laughs> True. Inko, you are not going to do Guys, you're not appreciating the fish. You gotta you gotta save it. It's so fucking not crack this fan at their own dinner table. To just one Tonley eat this delicious meal like that. Please g tell me that Ingo is not about to pipe up here. Please tell me. Like, he has not said anything. He has not defended himself. Is this the hill he dies on? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I raise my voice, dude, he's gonna have the whole squad laughing in a second here. I raise my voice to get the attention of everybody at the table. <laughs> I want to just look away from this train wreck. I can't do this, man. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Uh, you know you're supposed to be using the wasabi and soy sauce on the same piece of fish, right? On opposite sides, like this. Ah, uh, for a demonstration. Okay. It looks like they aren't gonna fucking dog him, alright? <laughs> it, it's bad! It's bad, it's not too bad yet, though. No kidding. <clears throat> no, wait, no kidding. Good to know. And the ginger slice is supposed to be eaten between pieces as a way of cleansing your palate and aiding digestion. Come on, who has time? Plus, I like the taste. If you're gonna eat traditional food, you should eat it the right way. Damien smirks at me, and I can tell neither he nor Vinny have bothered to listen to what I have to say. <laughs> so I think it's time you leave. <laughs> at least Randy and Sophia have at least tried out the technique, albeit sloppy. And Olivia is looking at me with a bit of a pat on her face. What's wrong? We're not a restaurant, Nico. Let them eat out where they want. But the correct way ensures a balanced flavor. Maybe, but there's no accounting for taste, you know? Technique is the most important part of food like this. In some cases, it's even deadly if you don't follow the careful instructions. They're way too nice to him. Should have kicked him out. Put him in his place, Gator Girl. Bite his throat. Ever heard of fugu su uh, sashimi? It's made from puffer fish, and if you don't prepare it right, it can be deadly. Good thing we're not eating puffer fish then. W well, yeah, but it's the idea behind it. You're welcome to eat it however you want. Just let us enjoy the food, okay? Fine. Livia gives me an earnest smile before returning to her fish. It's a little disappointing to hear, especially since they don't get to eat this kind of food very often. Kind of a waste if they don't eat it right. See, this wouldn't be cringe if he did it as more of like trivia and not like, um, actually. Okay, it wasn't that bad. Oh yeah, no, it could have been super, super worse. Olivia, cast a stick in the torsion. 
Yeah, I don't know why Inko decided that this is the hill in particular he was gonna die on the night. After dinner, Olivia, the Payne brothers, and I are all back in the living room. On the TV screen, two large robot-looking figures fire at one another with automatic weapons. We have to keep in con we we have to keep it in mind that while this is rough, um, Inko still has a good relationship with the Payne family. So it's not like he's out here not being f like really friends with people. It's still cringe. It's still cringe. Don't get me wrong, but. The family at least probably just looks at him doing this and is like, ah, it's just Inko being a silly guy. You just know that when Inko's gone, Rain's gonna pull Olivia inside. <laughs> like, really? Really? Why him? Oh, we, we, we got a hell no! Hell no! I love that video. That video's fucking great. His relationship with the Payne family is fine. His relationship with Olivia is virtually non-existent. Um... No, because in this in this run, he still has the relationship with Olivia, I believe, right? Because we we've we've increased our relationship with her, doing those choices at least. Mind you, he visited their home to see his girlfriend and then left her depressed, alone in the. Yeah, no, he's just fucking dumb. He's a fucking idiot. I I, I will I will not fight you on that. He is not. He's not great in this run, but he is at the very least friends or better with Olivia. No one bothered to keep track of time. We were all too enraptured by the pixelated entertainment before us. Which is how I'd missed my last chance home. Miss Payne didn't look too upset though. In fact, I think they expected me to spend the night again. Especially with how Randy has been so quick to pull out some blankets and pillows for me. Both of the parents insisted I stay. and It's not like I could realistically walk home. So is Olivia going to try to uh, even sleep uh, out here with us tonight because in ending three she tries and we tell her no and then in ending four I think she ends up doing it regardless All right but this is after they become official you know the kiss he's just holy fuck he's terrible incredibly dense uh, again he has no backbone he has I mean this ending is called the simp ending right so like it yeah ending four yes she'll spend the night with Inko yeah so once again I'm staying over, and currently sat on the foot of the couch with Olivia, and we're both bundled up to stave off the chilly winter night. The soft growling purr that Olivia makes when she's content has become almost therapeutic to me. <laughs> I'm no illuminated here, I'm dumb as fuck actually, but this motherfucker makes me feel like a Tesla. Damn! Damn! <laughs> that is a roast! Holy shit! I, I, I'm reeling a bit from that one. So, how are you feeling? Mm, I really enjoy spending time with everyone like this. Thank you for being here, Nico. Nico, sorry. I feel a lot better knowing you're with me. Same here. Her, palms, her palm wraps around my left hand, and I give her a reassuring smile. In all honesty, I should probably go to bed now tired and sad, you know? Yeah, I get it. Well, you can always join me in my room. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, I couldn't. Randy would kill me. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You want to help me up? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I can't stand this. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> dude. I love, I, I love how this is Inko right now, but everybody, everybody and their mother would be like, the moment that Olivia's like, hey, you could come in my room with me, they'd be like, <laughs> Orm? Okay. Sure. Randy will kill me? Some things are worth dying for, alright? That's sometimes, sometimes you gotta you gotta be a man and stand for what you believe in. <laughs> so clearly needs someone right now. Fucking yeah. But our our pro tag this time is about as bright as a bag of rocks. Randy will kill me, but I'll die happy. Who knows, maybe she'll smother us in the middle of the night. <laughs> and that'll be our end. Go out of warrior's death. 
With some careful movements in support of her tail, I help Olivia shuffle herself towards her room. I narrowly avoid stubbing my toe again as I set her down on the bed. She quickly, quickly wraps herself in blankets. See you in the morning, Minko. Y you too. I quickly make my exit and close the door behind me, eager to hide the growing blush on my face. This one, I don't think I'll ever get used to this whole romance thing. Either way, I head back into the living room and fall on the couch, getting ready to pass out. All in all, today was pretty good. No. <laughs> Alright. Skip time. Uh, Alright, so, taking a seat at the table, I begin scrolling through my phone's feed. Yep. As always, it's top of the line content. It's simply great how much can be done now with social networks. Really giving a voice to the people. I consider sharing it with the others, but I don't want to ruin their fun. Okay, even another moment of no backbone. Okay, okay, so, alright. Alright, silence cooking. In ending four, he does not care for the content in his phone. Yeah. I think ending three, he, like, takes note of it, but decides not to do anything with it? Or... No, I think it's earlier on that he watches a video while he's eating. Shows he's grown because he's not interested in mundane bullshit. Yeah. Exactly. Though, I mean, like, yeah, it's like a, it's a small thing, right? It kind of shows uh, some development there. Or at least his priorities, right? Instead of, like, caring about what is on his phone, he's paying more attention to, like, the moment and, like, what's going on with the pains and everything. So that makes sense. <clears throat> I hear the nor uh, nearby door creak open. Out crawls a tired gator, rubbing the sleep from her eyes. Oh. Okay, keep in mind here, um, we actually don't get the text from Olivia this time, asking with her asking if we can come help her out of the room. She just does it on her own. Oh, this hurts. See, we, we did this we did this in the super wrong order, man. Cause then, cause if we did these first endings one and two, it would fucking wreck us. But then later, <laughs> but then later when we do ending three and four, it'd be like, oh, she trusts us so much. It's so cute. But now it's just, oh, oh, this is not great. This is there's there's pain. Ooh, symbolism. Out crawls a tired gator, rubbing the sleep from her eyes. She helps herself up on the couch. Morning, sleepyhead. Welcome back to the land of living! Morning, Livia! This game's proof I still have a heart because it's breaking right now. For me, it's like those small, like, minor, minor chips happening right now. Cause I know that they're gonna they're gonna reach into my fucking chest and crush it when the end like when the actual ending shit happens. Olivia, eyes still close, closed, mumbles out what sounds like a good morning. Shut up. Sleep well? Eh, kinda. Couldn't fall asleep until two in the morning. Same. Damon and Vinny start shouting in victory as the home team gets the final score. What a slap shot! Heard the excitement in the room. Watching hockey again? Sophia settles herself into the, onto the recliner, opening up her laptop. We can skip. Send it! Actually... Okay, yeah, so... Yeah, they're talking about the winter formal now. I turn to Olivia and give her my undivided attention. Yes? Oh, I was thinking. 2 a.m. where I live. We're hitting about midnight where I am right now, so... It's interesting seeing the uh, different time zones people are in. We've had a uh, pretty wide spread of uh, people on the in the chat. Yeah. Uh, you and me and all. My head tilts in confusion. Yes. Frustrated growl emanates from her clenched maw. You, me, somewhere, together. What? Mm. 
Mm-mm-mm. You know, Inko, if you want, I could take over from here. You know, we could, we could like tag team. I, I can I can run it for a little bit, you know, forever. <laughs> I'm gonna like clue those characters, but here's where I draw the line. This is this is like this isn't even like a like a, a cl like what's the word I'm looking for here like a, a cute clueless. This is just like a hey dumbass. How are you not picking like this is just this is just a couple steps too far. Take it back a little bit. She literally spelled it out for you. Oh my god. Oh my god. It hurts most knowing that we know Inko can do better. N not better than her, by the way. Let's make that let's make that very clear. Let's make that very clear. We know that Inko can be a better person. <laughs> That's what makes it rough. Ah, okay. As her annoyance grows visibly on her face, I can't help but shy away. I fear she's gonna snap. Oh! My back hits the rug on the floor roughly as Olivia hovers over me with, uh, on her hands and knees. Uh, Olivia? You, me, together, go somewhere. Wait. <laughs> Better than Gator Girl? Do I need to start some shit? No, 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 no. Gator Girl's the peak. She's the summit. <laughs> there is nothing better. Don't start a fight. I mean, by all means, punch Ingo in the face. Or Ben. Or both. Both that would be fine. I don't want no smoke. Wait, does she mean... Well, like a date? Yes! Oh. I'd never been on a date. And I only know what I've seen in movies and shows and stuff. Well, uh... We are a couple now, so... And so this would be a regular thing. Right? Sh sure, yeah. A date sounds, uh, good. Her tail waves happily behind her, and her annoyed face finally melts away into smug satisfaction. So, uh, where do you want to go, then? Oh, I've got some ideas. <laughs> Fucking cliché twat. Mm, okay. You'll definitely love them. Of course. And I promise it won't be anything crazy expensive. I don't mind, Olivia. He is, he, like, he is so, like, white bread right now, bland. <laughs> he's, he's just like, yes, dear. Yes, dear. Like, say, like, get excited. Be like, yeah, that sounds like a great time, Olivia. I'm so excited. <laughs> Hope she death rolls him and on the fun, cute way like before. <laughs> he ain't doing a good job being a simp right now. He's the doormat simp right now, is what I would say. Great. Perfect. She lowers herself onto me, wrapping her arms around me in a powerful hug that threatens to my lungs and spine. I do my best to return the hug, but at least, at best, it comes as me kind of petting her back with both hands. Seems to be enough, though, as I feel the rumbling purr, she admits. TFW, you'll never have the purring girlfriend. Oh, it's over, bros. Spine, really? We know this fucker doesn't have one. He got it surgically removed. Um, shut up, we're having a moment, Damien. Yeah, a moment in the living room. Shouldn't you have it on your actual date? No, I'm making up for lost time. What? Nothing. You shut up too. Okay. I'm too busy enjoying the feeling of purring to top me anyway. Keep in mind, um, a similar scene happens in ending three. And we get this. In this, it's just him laying there like, Gator on me. Yay. Date. Okay, at least this is wholesome. But it can be better. That's the thing. It's okay. You know? Is he really getting E1? We're doing E2 right now. So the plan is E2, then E1. Then we uh, cleanse our palates with, uh, and get happy with uh, E1. What, E4 epilogue, right? The rest of our day was spent in that living room, crowded around the old TV. At first, Olivia kept playing a few games, but after a while, she swapped it uh, over to a comedy channel on cable. It was pretty fun to relax a while, take her mind off things, and chuckle every now and again at some bozo getting pranked in public. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling comfy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not comfy and I don't even know what's coming. 
<laughs> at least you have the uh, the gift of foresight about what's coming. You can see the car. I don't even know what the car looks like. I don't got the make, model, or color. <sighs> when the sun began to set, though, I decided I should head home. I needed a shower and change of clothes, and both of Damien's parents were still up. I felt bad when I left Damien's place that night. You can see a car coming, you know it's gonna hit. Doesn't mean it won't hurt just as bad though. Damien's place! <laughs> oh man. Oh no. <laughs> it's so over, bros. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Not my wonderful girl, gator girl's house, Damien's fucking house. Dude, are we on the Damien route? Like, unknowingly? Are we gonna romance Damien? Are we gonna cuck Liz? <laughs> I'm just wordless. Oh, I felt bad looking at Olivia as I walked away from those guys. Guys, we mentioned Olivia. Guys, look, Olivia. <laughs> <sighs> Olivia just sleeps and stores her socks there. Oh, Inko stocks are plummeting. Sell now. <laughs> if you're gonna excuse me, I'm gonna go count bullets. You don't need bullets for Inko. Just breathe on him hard enough and he'll fall over dead. It only grew worse as I went from the metro to my quiet neighborhood and ultimately our empty home. Seeing the small pile of letters at the front door made me realize what that feeling was. Loneliness. Maybe I should have just waited to ask the pains if I could have spent the entire weekend. If I did that, would I be overstaying my welcome? I don't want to abuse their hospitality after all. <coughs> Withdrawing my phone from my pocket, I see that Olivia just sent me a new doodle. So I think we don't- we didn't get this before. I, at least I don't think. Because I don't recognize this image. Not before this shit hurts. Olivia ain't my GF, she's just my really close friend. Fucking Sheldon Cooper Athlon. <laughs> she just asked me on a date, we're a couple, but we're just really good friends, guys, don't worry. So obviously love somebody so clueless, it, it, it isn't even in a cute way. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, we, we, oh, I'm trying to, okay, well, I can't open up the settings right now. Ah, hold up a sec. What's our what's our uh, Olivia score? Yeah, we got uh, Olivia at four, so like we we're pretty up there. <clears throat> Withdrawing my phone from the pocket. Yeah, okay, so we got this. Uh, fucking potato rat. It was nice having you over. Despite the coldness in the house, Olivia's message brings some warmth to my heart. I had fun. Hope they can come over again soon. Still figuring out where we can go for our dates. Take your time, we have at least a week. Kicking my door closed, I head for my computer so I can continue talking to her online. Occasionally, I search online for any form of blog updates while she's gushing over her favorite anime. No, you pay 100% attention to her right fucking now. Do not become distracted. I lose track of how much time we spend instant messaging and sharing videos, but by the time I check my computer's clock, I realize it's past midnight. Shoot, I'm gonna be exhausted tomorrow. Totally worth it. Listen to that, Wani. At least it didn't say he was ignoring her. It was just doing something while they were messaging back and forth. If, if you, I mean, that's cope, but you know. The next few days went by without much fanfare. By the time I knew it, the weekend had already passed, and I was back to my usual weekday routine. Go to school, do the work, hang out with Olivia, and then head back home. As much as I felt compelled to check in on her after school, I didn't want to become intrusive. <sighs> Ah, oh, god damn it. Besides, Olivia and I still talked over text and online anyway, and she said she was getting by just fine. It's okay, it's okay. Just, keep, just keep walking. Pitch doesn't even visit. Once Friday finally comes around again though, I find myself lounging on the Payne's couch with Olivia. Initially, she had called me over to show her off her new wheelchair. We weren't even there to help her build it. And who was I to say no? 
Well, this is nice. Well, this brings a little bit of a smile to my face. Watching her do donuts in the living room till she was exhausted was certainly entertaining, and a good demonstration of how nice the new chair was. <laughs> it doesn't bring a smile to mind. Look, we have to take... We have to take what we can get. In in these pits of despair, is any, any monochrome of hope must be grasped tightly before it is wrenched from our hands. And now it sat abandoned in the middle of the room while Olivia sprawled across the rest of the couch with her head laid out across my lap. I'm gonna take pure genuine gator love this, not this bullshit. Oh. Look, I, I can't keep despairing or this is gonna be r really hard for me. <laughs> I have to take this, I have to take this in stride. My hand runs across her back, eliciting more of those sweet gator purrs of hers. Though the relaxing mood ends when the purrs stop and she speaks up. I've been thinking for dating, go. Oh? Do tell? The annual Volcadera Modernist Expressionist Art Showcase. I've only been there a few times with the Attican on school trips. I figured we could check it out. Modernist Expressionist? Can't even envision what that style would look like. Oh, that certainly does sound experimental. I know. I can't wait to see what new ways people have to express their ideas. I'd love to see if it could, if I could meld it into my own work. Her thirst for artistic knowledge is certainly commendable. Yeah, sure. That sounds like fun. Perfect. Trust me, Ego. It'll be a great experience for the both of us. I'm excited to see it. For the rest of the afternoon, Olivia shows off more of her video game collection. She even convinces me to play a few rounds of one of her favorite party games. I still suck pretty bad at all of this, but it was fun. So far, so good. Yeah, that's the that's the thing that's got me looking around. I got I like, look over my shoulder and like. Where's the man with the baseball bat who's about to knock me out? <laughs> Saturday morning. The big day is here. Olivia started sending me restless texts after midnight. Honestly, I was pretty excited too, so I stayed up with her for a while. She sent excited ideas and doodles of her plans for the day, and they became increasingly unhinged and wobbly until I had to convince her to go to bed. Man, she's cute. That does sound adorable. Anyway, it's only about 10 in the morning. I'm left sorting through a dozen or so reminder texts from Olivia, like she's afraid I'll forget. I realize too late that I don't have much time to get ready, so I skip breakfast, get dressed, and head out the door. Apparently Olivia studied the metro schedule, so she'll be in the same cabin that comes to pick me up. It's a pretty nice day out, especially for a trip to the city. Despite the sun shining and blue skies, the air is brisk enough that a light for a light jacket. Hopefully the showcase is heated well. Before long, the metro comes sliding into the station and reaches a halt. Go over here. Olivia waves me over after we spot each other. Hey, Olivia. Go. Did you get my text? Yes, all fifty of them. You already know which stop we're getting off at. We get four minutes of Inko with normal behavior. Doesn't even fucking pick her up. Well, it seems like in this route, it Inko definitely takes more of like the the passive role in a in like a relationship, right? So. You know. Whereas Olivia's taking more of the active. Could have uh, walked with her at least. Yeah, I think Jen's point is that um, Inko didn't even like meet up with her at the train station. She met up with him instead. Which, you know. I, I don't remember if that's the way that everything pans out in the other routes or not. I just remember that they get on the train together, so. I have it memorized. I scout out the whole place online. It's not far from South Valcadera Central. Heck yeah. Anything in particular you've been looking forward to seeing? It's more like he just doesn't try in the relationship. It's not passive, he's outright ignorant. I guess right now what I'm trying to think is where does the line get drawn between ignorant and passive when the relationship- Like, he's dense. He's a dense motherfucker. We saw that when it came to, like, the whole going on a date thing. But... I don't know, I guess when I think ignorant, I, it comes off more as malicious. 
Bethany would meet her at house for other dates. What was the date in E4? E3 was the bluffs, correct. E4, they went to... Um, like, the, the one district, and they got, like, the, the food. The hibachi place, yeah. That's where Inko learned what Wani means. The only route where Inko learns Wani. <laughs> said this place is a whole section dedicated to expressionism. Uh-huh. You don't know what that means, do you? Nope. I just click pretty pictures with my magic expensive talent box. Gonna see the VOD tomorrow. Bye, you guys. Alright, Rex. Take care. Fuck you, Nico. Because I'm not still that chef playing wing that, that did happen. <laughs> alright, alright. I'll tell you the absolute basics. The art genres for dummy, goofy, little silly baby. Oh, the art genres for dummy, goofy, little silly billies. She really did just say that whole thing, huh? That's your worst one yet. Hush. Olivia smiles herself, gathering her thoughts. Modernism tends to be more abstract, so you're going to see a lot of attempts at high concept stuff. Some that's going to completely miss the mark, so don't think too hard about the meaning. If you don't get the gist of it in less than a minute, chances are it's just pretentious. Right. I'll keep that in mind. Okay, so expressionism as an art form is focused on evolving specific emotions or feelings in the viewer. And as a predominantly post-war style, it really strives to capture the visual elements of dissociation, fear, and even death. The next thing I remember is being pulled by the hand off the train. Alright, we're close. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you for going with me. Yeah, no problem. Come on, we got all day and not wasting a second of it. Olivia drags me out of the metro down the custom-paved walkway. This part of town sure is different. Just on the outskirts of the downtown area, with skyscrapers looming overhead more mere blocks away. Very city-like, but also very lush with plants and landscaping. Just close enough to the business that the wealth is shared but not enough so it's invaded by regulated concrete offices. There's more sub uh, suburbs nearby as well. The place we're going to may as well be the, a city center with how close it is to normal life. It's a standard of living I could certainly get used to. The McMansion we live in is fine, but this sort of thing really appeals to me. I'm imagining starting a family here. Inko. Oops, did you say something? We're almost here, look. Olivia jabs her finger at a building ahead of us on the walkway. Surrounded by a wide open field stands a vaguely modernist looking building. The structure and overall design make it seem like the building itself is part of the exhibit, while also not being too intrusive with the surrounding architecture. And the door doesn't budge. Huh? Olivia impatiently tries pulling the door open again, trying to jerk it open. It clunks uselessly. What the fuck? Olivia, the sign? It opens at 10. And my phone says it's only half past 9. Mm. Okay, we'll just have to waste some time for a little bit. But... She's interrupted by a low rumbling noise, and a dusting of red blooms on her cheeks. Uh, Olivia? Did you just wake up and rush to the metro without breakfast? Mm. Yeah. Well, I can't blame you. I was excited and forgot to eat as well. Sorry. Eh, don't be sorry. It's a local cafe just across the street. I gesture at. Come on, let's get out of the cold. Mm, okay. That took a little bit. Olivia was doing a good job of ignoring the chills, but she gave a deep sigh of relief once we enter the warm cafe. We order breakfast with hot chocolate and take a seat near the window. <laughs> I really thought I was going to... He was gonna straight up close the whole day. Oh, uh, yeah, no, luckily it wasn't. It's just, ha we gotta wait half an hour. Excuse for us to go get some, some, some cafe date time in, which is cool. Olivia takes her first warm sip and melts into her chair. For a while, we just rest quietly. She looks back at the gallery building. Another reason I wanted to go here. Darn, is closed. Okay, bye, Olivia. You know he'd pull that shit. No, I don't think he would pull that shit on this. I think what he would say is, well, is there anything else you want to do? He wouldn't offer up a suggestion necessarily. He would just be like, uh, 
Maybe, maybe it's something else. Do you, do you want to do something else? He'd be seeking her opinion rather than trying to give it anything else. Mm hmm. I need to give a speech at the formal for Yadikin. Something that'd make him proud. Something that'd do him justice. Oh. I heard some of his earlier work ended up here. I wanted to see it. That's a very thoughtful idea, Olivia. E4 Giga Chad would grab the wheelchair, take her somewhere she wants to be. And go be like, look, I'm taking you to Ahbachi oh, Place. <laughs> it's a very thoughtful idea, Olivia. Do you really think it's here? It better be. Better be. Olivia blows into her hot chocolate and then takes a deep, careful sip. With the early morning lighting and the building in the back, it sets a delicately somber mood. The young lady taking a moment to herself from the elements outside. No, not letting this chance escape me. Hey, stay still for a second. Mm hmm? Do that again. I don't want to save this. Red creeps back across her cheeks. The coloring only enhances the potential shot before me. I lift my camera and carefully back away from Olivia, surveying the shot from all angles. Will you hurry up? Shh, just go back to the hot cocoa, Olivia. It's weird, Inko. You're being weird. Though she said that, Olivia does return to savoring the warm drink slowly. It says her lips finally touch against the cup that the shot is perfect. My camera clicks in rapid succession, capturing the entire moment of her delicate sip. Even her soft sigh afterwards, the scarlet on her cheeks growing more and more and... Inko! Ah, oh, sorry, Liv. Got the shot. Returning to the table, I turned to display her waist so she could see the best of the 15 shots. Her face practically explodes with embarrassment as she draws her hoodie up to hide it. It's a shame that he doesn't take adorable pics of Olivia in E3 or 4. It's mostly group shots, right? Yeah, and those really... Because, uh, see, that's the one thing that uh, I think has been kind of consistently missing in like a lot of this. We don't really get much of Inko uh, and his like photography. Like the the most we we get is um, when the Attican invites us to the wedding, so that we can uh, do the photos there. Uh, otherwise, th there really isn't too many times that uh, Inko's actually taking shots, which kind of sucks, because that's supposed to be like a pivotal part of his character, and it only gets touched on a handful of times. Whereas with Olivia, like she's doing like art all the time. Uh, just one little gripe I have. Her face practically explodes with embarrassment as she draws her hoodie up to hide it. You look great, Olivia. Shut up. Do you really think so? Absolutely. You're, motopho you're more photogenic than you think, Olivia. With an annoyed huff, she pulls her hoodie back. You suck at compliments, Inko. I was so hopeful with the Sky Tower restaurant when he was looking at her as she watched the view, but the dumbass didn't have a camera. I sort of agree, but feel much differently about it. Uh oh. <laughs> even as she said that, her smile speak lou uh, speaks even louder. Olivia looks back out again. Is that. Oh, yes. People are going in. Come on, let's go. I nod and put away my things. Olivia's already out the door while I throw our trash out. Alright, for real this time. Art gallery, here we come. The door swings wide open this time, granting us access to the treasures within. Upon entering the hall, it feels as though we're transported into a new world. One I've experienced before. The Neve Rich World. My footsteps in the quiet creaking of Olivia's wheelchair echo through the halls. There's already a few others, some older folk, and college students. We're definitely the youngest people here. Olivia waves to me to come close and speaks in a quiet voice. Alright, they got sculptures over that way. Now those are cool, but what I'm looking for is the regular painting wall halls, which should be... She looks around a bit and jams a finger down a corridor. That way. Got it. 
I wheel her down the direction she picked, into a large room. It's definitely what she was looking for. Paintings adorn the walls, evenly spaced apart and displayed with all the relevant information. If the Attican's work is anywhere, it'll be here. We start searching, and man, this building is beautiful. I am taking lots of shots. Olivia was a bit nervous, and I made it very clear if I it made it very clear if I used flash even once she'd nibble my arm off. I'm taking shots of Olivia looking around, the building itself, the occasional sculpture or painting I find neat. This is really fun. We definitely got to make this a reoccurring thing. At some points, Olivia stops and talks with one of the other visitors. She's actually handed it off pretty good introducing herself. She even gets to make a couple of connections to local artists. A few even give her a business card. Didn't know artists use those. And the art itself. Some of the paintings are beautiful landscapes. Some more abstract. Might be that modernism thing Olivia bum rushed me with on the way here. Some though are just trash. Overly pretentious, just warped ugly figures, or meaningless arrangements of colors. Ugh, I can do better than this. Olivia stares a bit at some of them. Don't know what for. As far as I know, a lot of this stuff is just used in money laundering. We search on and on, but none of the paintings we see are by Attican. Uh, even after an hour, even after splitting up to check some of the smaller rooms, we find nothing. Eventually, we take a break in the main hall. Even the benches here are sleek. So far, all the modern art stuff have been... To be honest, they felt like absurd jokes. Between very questionable shaped statues to just objects glued onto hanging canvases, it's all just bizarre to me. So, no luck? Mm, nope. Is that a rotating golden toilet? I don't know... Like, what I was expecting in this route. But... This was not part of what I was expecting. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue, I guess. <clears throat> we watched a small group bickering before a stone relief... Of a toilet. Very nice toilet, but still. It's fucking art. It's where I shit. <laughs> My foot jostles Olivia's empty chair before us, which we've used as a makeshift table for all our stuff. Say, Inko. There's a glint of mischief in her silver eyes. Then you made art? Damn, that's powerful. <laughs> she motions me close and whispers her idea under my ear. I feel my own mischievous grin start to form. With a nod of agreement, my hands reach for the handlebars of Olivia's chair. Ten minutes later. Are we using Olivia's chair as, like, an art piece? <laughs> hmm, must be a statement against modern industrial pharmaceutical companies. No, no, no. Clearly a display of isolation of the average artist today. Our makeshift hand puppets drop as we laugh, watching as a pair of suit-wearing 30-somethings debate over my camera sat in Olivia's wheelchair. <laughs> on the other end of the room. We're sat together, leaning heavily on each other as we eagerly keep an eye out on our own little artistic display. On one end of the hall, us, just a normal unassuming couple taking a breather and enjoying each other's company. On the other end, in front of a blank section of wall, a lone wheelchair sits with a camera carefully placed in its seat. It was Olivia's idea. She's a genius. Every few uh, few minutes, a patron will come waltzing down the hall to take pause and stare at it. Like it's the most profound thing they've ever seen. When some journalist-looking guy took a knee to get a picture, it took all we had not to burst into laughter. It worked on everyone that passed by. Without fail. Every time. Eventually the flow of people slows down, and I feel Olivia squeeze my hand. You okay? Yeah. I'm having a lot of fun. Sorry we haven't found what you were looking for yet. It's fine. I'm still seeing a lot of neat stuff. It does kind of suck it's probably not here, though. Yeah. I hear ya. You got some new buddies, I saw. Yeah. We're not the only artists here right now. One of them was here to check her work, since it was recently displayed. Wow. 
And there's a lot of great stuff here. Nice. I'm glad. I really like the... Now, who's this lady? Oh, what do we have here? It's an older woman who calls out to us, approaching with a serpentine look in her eye. From her elegant second dress to her bright golden heels that click with each step, I can only guess... I can only guess that she's some important figure here. Wait, uh, ma'am, would you be... Olivia's excited words are cut off by the well-dressed woman, now standing right before us and sporting a simple smile. <laughs> she isn't Gator Girl, that's all you need to know. Yes, Alina Scarborough. I own and operate this gallery. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Miss Scarborough. The rehearsed words come out so easily. All those garden parties I'd attended having helped me learn proper etiquette. I'm Nico Nito, and she's Olivia Halford. You two are awfully young. Are you two on a date? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Olivia blushes a bit at how confidently I say it. Why here of all places? What piqued your curiosity, if I may ask? I'm working towards becoming a photographer myself, and today was all Olivia's idea. And I can see that DSLR you have will certainly bring back some memories. Olivia straightens her posture with some confidence. I'm an inspiring artist, Miss Scarborough. Please, Elena is just fine. Right, Elena. I wanted to learn more about the current art world, and there's a particular art piece I'd like to see here. Elena nods. <laughs> Inko's rich side really comes out here. He's like, this is my place. I'm in my element. Um, is there anything here by Trent Yadikin? Yadikin. That's definitely a unique name. One I haven't heard in a long time. And one I couldn't possibly forget. You mean... Yes, I'm certain we have some work from him still around. Would you like me to lead the way? Yes, please. I believe it's a bit far on the other end of the facility. I can see how it'd be easy to miss. It's a bit hidden away in one of the smaller rooms. Come. She stops mid-turn. Are we gonna get kicked out? Huh. I don't remember that being installed. Interesting. <laughs> hey. Oh. Well, aren't you two rambunctious? Well played. Sorry, Elena. Don't be sorry. Being little rascals is what all... Is what a lot of us is all about. Come, it's this way. I start pushing Olivia, following the gallery owner. Olivia motions me to come and whispers in my ear. I like her. She's fun, yeah. Elena rounds a corner and clears her throat again. So, Olivia. Yes, ma'am. You say you're looking to be a better artist. Do you mean professionally? Yes, actually. That's wonderful. I'd love to see your work sometime. If it's good enough, we can even feature it here someday. Really? Oh yes, this place is a great way for our local artists to be supported. Why is that? The building in my business is a non-profit, yes. But artists can choose to display their work for commercial purposes. A substantial amount here is for sale, and all the money goes to the artists. A substantial amount? Maybe Olivia would appreciate some memorabilia for today. Wow. That's amazing. I'm definitely interested. Great. I didn't even know there was a place like this. Do you know of the other advantages that could work for you then? Advantages? No, I don't. The gallery owner takes out a small tablet, tapping lightly on the display until she presents a digital flyer to Olivia. Yes, there's several organizations that support disabled artists. From simple connections up to running their own exclusive events. If you want, I could pass your name around to some of the busybodies that tend to show up to poach up-and-coming artists. Can help but cock an eyebrow at her tone, or else she will use the word poach. Olivia must have thought similarly when she shook her head. No, thank you. Yeah, because remember, Olivia doesn't want uh, any handouts because of her disability. I need to be an artist that's good enough on my own. And I need to be an artist that Yadikin would be proud of, without any crutches. I'd be a terrible student if I did. 
Oh, you knew a Yadigan. I should have figured. How is he doing these days, Dad? Oh. Uh. Hmm. Yadigan's passed away. Oh. I'm so sorry. My condolences. Was he important to you? Olivia was a student. I understand. I only met him decades ago. His work was superb. But I didn't know he had an apprentice. Oh, are you his apprentice? I... Miss Elena, a moment please. Abraham, I'm currently in the middle of... What is it? The shipment is here. They need you to sign right away. Oh, follow the timing. I'm sorry, you two. This will only take a moment. Yes, Elena. She points down into a room next to us. It's right in there. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back, I promise. You good? Yeah. Well, let's go see it. We enter the small display room. The lights are kept intentionally dim in this room to create a calmer atmosphere. All along the walls are more paintings, and there's a lone bench in the middle of the room. Which one is the Atticans? Maybe there's more than one. Interesting. I think I like this one the most. Right here. Kind of reminds me of, like, Disco Elysium, I think. Never played it, but I've seen, like, um, some of the art from the game. Here it is. I caught up to her. The name on the painting is unmistakable. Trent Yadigan, age 19. Alma Mater. Or Alma Mater. St. Hamond High School. And then the painting itself. An elaborate depiction of a dino, twisted and warped stylistically. Can't tell if it's mocking or what. And it's part of a set. This guy is like fucking... He's got something going on. There's half a dozen of its type on the wall here. Huh. It's the real thing. Wow. They're amazing. But what is it? Didn't I tell you on the way over? Yadikin's early work was expressionist portraits. He made these when he was just a year older than I am now. Some of these are historical figures, some are just people he knew personally. A few are just everyman. They're made in a very special way. The portraits show the person distorted in unique ways, based on that person's life and Yadikin's opinion of them. Uh-huh. Are they in praise of the people they depicted? Or critical? People would get in arguments over that. If there were satirical caricatures with a little too much effort put into them, or if they was, were in praise, showing people's lives as truly a part of them, through the brilliant brushwork. But he never said. I wonder why. If you ask me, I think it's both. It's not about how good or bad he wanted to depict people. It's a brutal sincerity, an urge to embrace your flaws and strengths together. People either dis disregarded one or the other in their interpretations. It's like he re recreated the proverbial half glass of water. Amazing, right? I think? Hmm. Honestly, to me, it just looks like ironically ugly distortions of characters painted in a very skilled way. I like your interpretation. It's really deep. Thanks. In all honesty, I don't understand what the purpose of these paintings are. Swirling some colors around a person's head doesn't do much to express their personality. I wonder what people would say about Olivia's paintings if they were hung up here. Will she even get that chance? It's a lot harder to get into the mainstream nowadays than when it was than than it was when Iadkin was her age. Speaking of, hey, Olivia. Hmm. Why did you reject Elena's offer earlier? I said already, I wouldn't be a good artist without that stuff. If I'm the Attican's legacy, I need to live up to his accomplishments. The Attican didn't need any benefits to get where he was, so I shouldn't either. Are you sure? Olivia cocks an eyebrow. It's just a kickstart to your career. It's a safety net. 
It's a guarantee that later you can live up to a skill. It's a better chance to even surpass his acclaim. And here we go. And Inko, everything was nice. Now Inko's fumbling. But it's not the one I want. He had to compass on what he knew to me. It's not right to take the easy way up. Besides, I don't want to be shoehorned in some niche category simply because I was born into it. <laughs> the advice from Ben is really kicking in. Yeah. For real. This is... Me no likey this part. And what of your own legacy eventually? What happens if you just can't find another big break like that? You wouldn't be able to pass on what he taught you to someone else. Isn't that scary? It's terrifying. Her words shook as she said that. You make a good point, but... Olivia's eyes look at Yadikin's name on the wall, which seems to fill her with courage. For now, I'll just think about it, alright? <laughs> um, actually... The loud clicking of heels causes Olivia and I to look toward the entrance of the room. And did you two find it? Oh, excellent. Yes, Elena, we found it. Ah, I just love this set. Who doesn't love a good bit of critical analysis? And did you get what you wanted? Yes. Yes, I think I did. I needed to see the real thing. Thanks, Elena. Of course. I'm glad to help. Is there anything else you needed? Uh, actually, Elena. Hmm. Is this set for sale? And the set here. Now that I think about it, it was. Although the price was pretty high, I think he only wanted the money if it were really substantial. And if you if you two know him, I could lower it a bit for you to be something more reasonable. I think he would want that. I think it'd be nice to get at least one for Olivia. Inko! Huh. She tugs at my sleeve. No, please don't. Yeah, she wants this to be hung here, dude, so that other people can see it. Come on, don't be dumb right where they need to be but you just said everyone else doesn't get it even so i want it to stay here where everyone can see it i can never keep it to myself like it's some kind of personal keepsake please and go don't okay okay sorry just thought you'd appreciate it thanks for thinking of me but no okay i take olivia's hand her tense claws slowly receding um how much longer will he stay up? Oh, indefinitely, probably. People do really like the work, they just can't... afford it. I suppose if someone does buy it now, his next of kin would get the money. I should contact them to make sure that this sort of thing is arranged, just in case. Sorry for getting emotional right there. No, not at all. I think it's mind... I think that mindset is very noble of you. Well, I have other things to attend to, if you'll excuse me. Thank you for your visit. Please let me know if there's anything else you need. As the owner starts walking away, Olivia squeezes my hand. Within her silver eyes, I can see Olivia's thoughts at war with one another. Um, Elena? She stops and turns again. Yes? You asked before if I was Yadikin's apprentice. Oh, yes, and then I got cut off. My bad. Are you? I am. Elena gives a warm smile. And then I expect big things from you. With Olivia's, while Olivia said I shouldn't buy Edgin's pieces, I could still give something to Olivia. Taking up my camera, I adjust the ISO and f-stop so I won't need to use my flash within the room. Inko? This will just take a moment. It's a simple matter. The paintings being the sole subject of the photos I take, I don't even have them to manually focus on them. My camera clicks near, near silently as I pace the room, capturing the perfect duplicate of each of our art teacher's artwork. When we finish here, I'll be sure to print and frame them for Olivia. But for now, I should focus on our date. I stroll back to Olivia and hand her my camera, so that she can inspect the shots herself. She smiles as she looks over them, and I take hold of her chair. Say, want to go snag some of the little sandwiches they had at the front? Sure, you drive. With a nod, we exit the room and start heading back to the main hall of the gallery. Inko. Hmm. Olivia's head tilts back so she can look me in the eye. Sorry if this wasn't the ideal date. What? 
No, I'm enjoying it, Olivia. You sure? Absolutely. In fact, I want to see more galleries like this. Just the two of us, critiquing fascinating new pieces, giving our honest thoughts, snapping photos of the best ones. Definitely picture us going on more dates like this. However, there's also another date I had in mind. Olivia. Yeah? About the winter formal. Yeah? Do you still want to go with me? Aww. Oh. <sighs> Happy Gator. Nearly stumble over her now wagging tail. Of course. We are going together. Yes, I know, but I mean... Yes, Inko, I want to go with you. Her eager words sent a wave of uneasiness uh, through my mind and body, relieving tension that I hadn't even noticed. So, it's a date? It's a date. A smile tugs at her face as she reaches out for my hand. I take hers, and we continue our walk to the exit. Uh-oh. Pat the gator now. On the metro ride back, Olivia leans against my shoulder. Our eyes follow landmarks out the window on the other side of the car as we pass them by. Despite the loud humming of the tracks, I feel Olivia humming to herself. So, what are you thinking? Mm, I'm trying to put my thoughts together. What I'm gonna say for Yadikin's memorial. I definitely have all the pieces I need. Just having a hard time stringing them together. How so? The no. Just needs to be something that will really do him justice. I need a solid direction. We pass under a few bridges while the thought sits. And what do you think? A direction? She nods. In that case, I think I have a few ideas. And what I saw today. I saw a lot of you. How Yadikin affected you. How his teaching shaped who you are now. That story is amazing. Now everyone else will love it as much as I do. That's your angle. Olivia doesn't respond, but I feel her humming to herself again. Maybe. That is a good point. What if people don't get it, though? I'm unsure still. No, the more I think about it, the more I think that needs to be the big thing. After all, who's closer to him than you? Even if you say... Even if... Even you say you're his apprentice. Doesn't that mean you're the end result of his life's work? Let his work live on through you. I'm sure he'd love that. She smiles to herself. Yeah, I think you're right. Thanks, it's really helped. Glad to be of service. Uh, you know, I get a bad feeling that this is gonna end with something bad happening during her speech at the memorial. Maybe the advice that Inko gave there is going to make it seem like she's talking more about herself than Yadikin. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I got a, like a weird feeling there. The rest of the ride goes quieter, just us enjoying each other's company. I try to escort Olivia back home when the time comes, but she insists she can get on there. She can get there on her own. She offers me one last hug before we part ways for the day. As the metro races towards my stop, I think about the future. Olivia and I are going to the winter formal together. I'll need a good outfit and a bouquet if I want to impress her. I wonder what kind of dress she'll want to wear. It might be hard since she's disabled, but maybe I can look into it and give her some suggestions. It's December. Winter in Volcadero Bluffs is officially here. Okay, so we can skip now. She's worked herself. She worked on her dress the whole week for it to look perfect. Work? Worked on it? You mean she made it herself? More like she helped me in making it for her. Even added her own personal flair to it. A homemade dress? Oh, wow. If Olivia helps, she's going to look amazing. Oh, Inko, I see that look. My face ignites in embarrassment as the rest of the room laughs at me. Ah, it's just some ribbon, Ninko. Don't want you feeling left out after all. Gee, thanks, Randy. There's more laughter, but I can't stay angry with, at the pains. 
Instead, I take the last spot on the couch and lean back, mindful not to crease my suit too much. For the next couple of minutes, we simply wait and relax. Well, Damien and I relax. A blush is slowly spreading from Liz's cheeks and down her neck. Kinda reminds me of a thermometer. Damien shuffles closer to her, her red face coming down closer to him. He whispers something into her ear. And whatever he said makes the lizometer hit a thousand degrees with an alerted yelp. His parents are just grinning as she squirms under their gaze. I don't feel too bad for her though. This is what she wants, I think. Still, the heck did Damien tell her? No, scratch that. Is Damien even doing this on purpose? Why are we all staring at a red garden hose? I turn to Olivia's voice and... Hmm. Interesting. So we've got kind of a comparison here. So it's much simpler. There's, there's not like a lot of flair to it compared to the E4. You also see that uh, she looks way more confident in this one. It's not as fancy of a dress. It still looks good. Uh, oh. Wow. I... Oh, I knew you'd look amazing, Olivia. But to go so far... A hand slaps my back hard and and then motions me toward Olivia. Olivia, you look... So many words fill my head to describe her. I can feel my mouth flapping uselessly as I try to pick one. I look... Gulping in a breath of air, I finally pick... Beautiful. A single word is enough to make Olivia's blush reach as far as her shoulders. And yet she smiles, even twirling chair side to side so I can take in all the angles of her dress. Sophia said you helped make it. More like she helped me. It's quite a vibrant it's quite vibrant in color. Something that I've come to realize when it comes to any work Olivia does. So what are we waiting for? Traffic's gonna suck like hell. Shouldn't we be getting into Liz's car now? About that. Uh -uh. What the uh. <laughs> That'll be our cue. Thank you again for having me, Sophia. Randy. If my hands weren't preoccupied with rolling my confused date to the door, I would have waited back to Damien's parents. Damien holds the door open so Olivia is able to clearly see our ride from the night. Whoa, awesome! A pristine white limousine parked out front where idols waiting for us. Our chauffeur exits his seat and rounds the car to hold the door open for us. Mindful of him, I wheel Olivia as close to the entryway. The driver moves to assist Olivia, but I hold my hand out to stop him. I'll help her. Could you handle her chair? Of course, sir. Uh, he holds the chair in place, if I may. Yeah, yeah, I get it. With all the care necessary, one arm snakes behind Olivia's knee and the other around her back. I lift Olivia from her chair in a princess carry, feeling my legs shaking as I take the final two steps. Olivia tucks her head against my neck her hot breath making my skin tingle pleasantly. Finally, I set her down onto the soft leather seat within, right next to the tiny fridge and bar. Looking through the back window, the driver has finished securing her wheelchair in the trunk. He gives me a nod and returns back to the passenger door where Damien is guiding Liz in. Oh wow, <laughs> looks even nicer than on the website. Hey Inky, the bar's free game, right? Throw Damien a thumbs up. All paid for. Hey, no, oh, wait. Inko, we didn't agree. It's fine, Liz. I covered the extra cost. Awesome! Damon's already pulling, pulled two glass bottles of cola from the tiny fridge. That was with his tooth. Grabs a, a second one with his minimal effort. For you. He waves his bottle over to me in offering. I decline. Leaning over, I manage to snag two bottles and the fancy bottle opener. All the bottles open, I hold up mine for all to see. But tell us before we get there. To what, though? Ah, uh, crap. Didn't think this far ahead. To a good night. And to Yadigan's memory. Yeah. Our bottles clink loudly against each other, and we proceed to drink our frothy caffeinated beverages. By the time we reach the convention center, 
The fridge has been thoroughly emptied of its contents. I'm honestly impressed that Damien could drink so much. <laughs> Somehow he hasn't burped a single time. I don't even try to wrap my head around how anymore. Olivia's hand wraps around mine while we wait for the limousine to come to a stop. Peering out of the tinted window, I see plenty of activity just outside the venue's door. It looks like a line has already formed. All the dinosaurs are dressed in colorful formal wear as they socialize with each other and drink from suspiciously opaque bottles. We're not even in the door and the party's already started. Olivia suddenly wraps her hand around mine, drawing my attention away from the sight. Everybody else is going to be so jealous of us. <laughs> that was my intention. I smile and squeeze Olivia's hand. She squeezes back. Hmm. We're in the eye of the storm now, fellas. It's going to be rough when we leave it. The shining moment finally comes as our limousine pulls us pulls into the open carport in front of the venue, quieting the crowd down just to murmurs. We wait in deafening silence for another minute or so before the passenger door opens wide. Taking initiative, I step out into the open as the driver sets up the wheelchair with a flourish. Our ride makes a great set piece, and naturally draws the attention of everyone nearby as I ease Olivia into her chair gently. Whoa, is that... that's Linko and Olivia! A human dino couple? Cringe! Holy shit, it's Sisyphus! I bask in my peers' admiration as Damien and Liz follow after us. There's a figurative red carpet stretching from our limousine to the entrance of the venue. Have a good evening, sir and ladies. Before the driver turns away, I shake his hand, palming him the necessary tip. The sound of the car door shuts behind me, and I take this as our cue to push Olivia forward and get us in a sp uh, spot in line. As we make our way inside, our fellow classmates continue to vocalize their astonishment. Damn, coming to s the party in style, Nito. Olivia, looking good, girl. You can make that dress yourself? Is it just me, or do Inko and Olivia kind of look cute together? As much as I hate to admit it. Wait, the hell am I saying? I'm loving this. After months of feeling regarded as school's outcast, spotlight's finally shining on me, and I'm reveling in it. Not on you, on you both. And it feels good knowing that Olivia was getting the attention she rightfully deserves. Okay, good. Me and my cadre... My McDare... I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Kader slowly moved past the crowd with heads held high. We approach the sign-in table where more people in line look our way. <sighs> Figures. Think we could cut in? Wait, why would we be allowed to? Let's go, Inko. With an odd, I push Olivia around the line and head directly for the table. Looking back, Liz frowns, but Damien simply nods in understanding. My peers in line beside us are watching as we casually roll up to the table where Ben is waiting. Olivia! Inko! You made it! Hey. Ignoring Olivia's clipped tone, I smile back at Ben. Of course we did. In a limo, no less. What better way to start off the night? Ben moves a clipboard to Olivia and she quickly fills in her name. I lean over her shoulder and sign myself in too. Alright, you guys are good to go. What about the Atticans Memorial? I was never told when I'd be speaking. He hands over a slip of paper to Olivia. We'll be doing it at the end. We want everyone to enjoy the night first. Figured he would have liked it that way. Looking at the sheet over Olivia's shoulder, I see that it's a collection of bullet points related to Yadikin's eulogy. Olivia scowls and crumples the sheet in a tiny ball, into a tiny ball between her palms. Olivia? I have a speech ready, Ben. Look, I know. It's just a backup. Just in case, all right? Nothing can go wrong. <sighs> she tosses the balled up paper into her wheelchair compartment. Let's go, Inko. R right. <clears throat> R right. See you inside, Ben. Below her breath, Olivia mutters. No, I'm not. We move past the check in, venturing deeper into the halls of the venue. Ahead of us, an open set of double doors leads to the main hall. Near the side, we enter. Several rows of neat round tables. The other half is reserved for the dance floor. And on the far side, a large stage for live performances. Nobody seems particularly interested in the Christmas music that echoes from the wall mounted speakers. Now that we're here, I didn't think they'd take the winter part so literally. 
Drapes of white and light blue hang on the walls. All the table's centerpieces look like crystalline statues shaped into snowflakes. Even the large chandelier hanging above the crowd seems to have drooping icicles hanging from it. Above us is a giant glass ceiling that opens into the night sky. There's too much light pollution to make out any constellations, but the moon is real pretty. An image comes to mind immediately. Lights dimming, music slows to something soft. Only real source of light is the moon hanging overhead. A true moonlit dance. I wonder if I can make that happen. It'd be nice. This isn't the only room, of course. Off to the sides, in several directions, are doors that lead to other halls and rooms. Olivia's looking around at the other exits, too. Well, we made it. What do you want to do? I gesture towards the dance floor. Can I get in jiggy with it? Olivia gives a wincing smile. I thought you were supposed to be cool. Nope. When have I ever gave you that impression? But dancing... I don't want a lot for Christmas. No, I think I'd rather die. Besides, somewhere around here is a room they set up for Yadigan. Right, yeah. We should pay respects to him first before anything else. Alright. Olivia's tail guides my wrist as I push us towards one of the exits. The memorial room isn't hard to find. It's a smaller room. Well lit and with little furniture. On the far end, a framed picture of the Attican and some of his old pictures from his classroom. Some from him, some from other students. There's a few other students here, paying their respects. Olivia taps my wrist with her tail, and I let go. I walk alongside her as we approach the portrait. I wonder when this was taken. It can't have been that long ago. It looks just like he did earlier this year. Hmm. Olivia doesn't seem like she's ready just yet. I'll give her a bit of privacy. Inko, you baboon. You should have stayed with her, you fool. I wait outside the memorial room, leaning against the wall. I can see a bit into the main hall from here. The music swapped from the festive to proper upbeat dance music. In fact, I'm pretty sure I see... No, you stand by her and silence the shit. Yeah, no. Or at the very least, you ask, Hey, do you need a moment? You don't just walk away. Yep, Liz's head towers over the rest of the students, spinning and bouncing rhythmically, just like a metal spring. I'm sure Damien's doing his best to keep up. He must be having a blast. I'm glad. And it's still so real to even be here. I never thought I would have ended up on a date with someone to an event like this. I've seen all sorts of stuff like this in the movies, but to actually experience it gives me the jitters. One big night to make the sparks fly. Olivia touches my hand, using the other to wipe at her eyes. Hey, you ready to go? She nods. Yeah, thanks for waiting. Music's changed in the ballroom. Olivia looks over and smiles. Tempting. Very tempting. But, uh, I didn't actually eat lunch today. That's turning into a bad habit. I know. I spent all day writing, reading, writing, rereading, on and on. I get you. Come on. I think I saw where they were serving food. Passing through the main hall once more, Olivia's hunched over something. Her phone. I craned my neck around her shoulder to get a better look. She's carefully studying pictures she'd taken of her written speech. Ah. Saying the room must have renewed her drive. You'll do great, Olivia. I hope so. I have to get this right. If you want, we can find a table first. Then I can get us dinner and give you a bit of extra time if you want. Would you? Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Olivia points me to the table in the corner, furthest away from the uh, commotion. Can't watch anymore. Do you know when you'll do E1 and then follow up with that blog? Um, I get the feeling that we're going to actually be coming up on the end of E2 not too long from now, so I think we'll probably try and do it tonight, honestly. Get it all in one. Ugh. So. Oh, no. Yeah, if, if, if you have to step away for E2 here, then I would say just, uh... I don't know. You know the pace that we're going. You might have a good idea of, like, uh, how long it'll take. So... 
by all means. Feel free to stop back later if you have to. Oh, God, it's... Yeah, it's ending too right now, so... Olivia points me to the table in the corner, farthest away from the commotion. After naturally getting ending three and, and then into four and watching this, it's fucking rough. Yeah, we, uh, last stream we did, we got ending three and four, so we are, uh, kind of crushing our own soul willingly to get the E4 epilogue. But, you know, ha have to do it. It's... I mean, we could pussy out and skip everything, but we gotta do this. It's... It's important. Wait, you gotta go through all four? Yeah, that's what I've heard. Apparently, um, you need, uh, all endings to get, uh, the E4 epilogue. Fuck. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. So, suffering in order to get our, our perfect... <laughs> Please, no. <sighs> Look, the longer we sit here and dread it, the worse it's gonna be. We gotta rip the fucking band-aid off at some point. But the, like the thing is, even though it's gonna be bad, you know, we we've got we've got everything. We we we've got, look look, we've got where she's she looks great, and and then where she's hugging us from behind, and then and then we we got the day. We we're we're gonna be able to uh. We're gonna be able to we'll get through this, Gator Bros. All right. Fellow Gator Huggers, it's not over. It'll hurt, but at the end of the day, we will be better off after we get the epilogue. It is worth it. She is worth it. Alright. Just like our spot in the lunchroom at school. How about that? You want meat, right? I know it. <laughs> A little crouch there. With these types of events, they would either have catering or meal tickets. At least, where I attended with my parents. But judging by the sight of my peers carrying small plates of food, it's a simple buffet. Of course, catering with some 100 active seniors is bound to go wrong. The scent of spiced meat wafts through this spacious hallway. You can only imagine how Damien would feel right about now. I follow the movement of the crowd, letting the finer-nosed dinosaurs pinpoint the location of the buffet for me. As the ambient music dies down, the chatter starts to grow louder. I turn the corner of the hallway and find myself exactly where I want to be. Buffet stations run parallel along each wall in this cafeteria-esque room. There's even a chef and a grill in the corner, prepping personal selected cuts of meat to specification. Most of the dinosaurs struggle to remain civilized in the presence of this kind of food. Having skipped a meal, I don't know if Olivia would fare much better. Nearly every station is swarmed with high school seniors. I walk over to one of the few tables in the room that's still open. Salad bar. Hmm. I'm getting some pretty good ideas. I'll impress Olivia with the nicest darn looking meal she's ever seen. That'd be great for soothing her anxious nerves and setting a romantic tone. Taking, a balancing tr uh, taking and balancing a tray on one arm, I consider how best to arrange a full dinner properly. Wait. Video I had recently watched starts replaying in my head. Remember, most important part of a high-quality meal is the garnishing. Okay, I'll start here, get some veggies around the edges of the plate. It's framing, like in a painting. And then I'll go find the best meats to fill the rest. Start waiting in line, eyeing the main courses as it slowly moves me forward. There's some decent variety. I can really work with this. Oh god, why, Inka? Hey, mind if I cut in? Bah! Damien! Hey, thanks, don't mind if I do! Can you wait in, like, line like everyone else? I did! The first time! This is round three. No use getting annoyed. If he gets beat up in the parking lot later, it's his own problem. So, how's your night going? It's going well. Olivia and I are having a great time so far. Hey, that's great! Liz and I have been dancing like crazy. It's a blast! Gotta say, I'm happy for you. Sorry for being unsure earlier when you two first became an item. Looks like I was completely off the mark. Yeah, don't sweat it, man. Yeah. Got two plates for yourself, I see. Smart. I should have done that. <laughs> no, uh, one's for Olivia. He cocks an eyebrow. You sure? Yeah, I'm gonna put everything in... To, I'm putting... Yeah, I'm going to put everything into prettying it up. That's herb for food, son. It is now. I know what I'm doing. 
are finally at the front of the line. I start carefully picking out the best cuts and strips of the various meats on display. I saw a guide on this once. It'll end up crazy romantic. Romantic, huh? She likes turkey more than duck. I dropped the roasted mallet with the tongs and grabbed the preferred bird. You'll see. It'll be great. If you say so. I'm sure it'll be fine then. Damien just loads his plate with stacks upon stacks of brisket and fillets, nearly forgetting to use the tongs at all. Once he has his plate stacked high, he gives a salute and slinks back out of the room. I, however, still have a mission to do. There's a few more lines for things like side dishes. This is going to be perfect. She's going to look at the meal and be like, oh, okay. 20 minutes later and two trays of perfectly picked meals are balanced precariously in my hands. Came out pretty great, I think. I even used the condiments to my advantage, leaving perfect dots of flavor where they'll be most effective. I hope Olivia likes it. Here we go. Ta-da! Just like Olivia's tray before her. Part of me is irked that she'd have her elbows on the table. Cringe. Even resting her head on her hands. Hey, Shinko, you took so long I thought you were going to bring back, like, an entire crew or something. An entire cow or something. She smiles and rolls her eyes when she sees the tray. Very funny. Come on, where's the real one? Hmm? Her smile fades. This is it? Are the lines really that bad? What do you mean? Like, were there a lot of people? There's barely anything on the plate. What's she talking about? That's a cut of rare cooked filet mignon and turkey breast with scallions and asparagus, plus some slices of salmon sashimi on the side. All properly garnished, of course. My plate is exactly the same. Well, it looks and smells delicious. <sighs> Did I mess up? Uh, yeah. Lines out of the door. I'll run back for seconds. Hopefully it'll clear up when we finish this. I'm sorry. I tried to arrange it nice, like we were at a fancy restaurant. She nods and stabs a fork through a piece of salmon. Well, I appreciate the thought. It does look pretty. Thanks. Once more recalling proper etiquette, I slice my own steak into tiny morsels, savoring each small bite of succulent meat. Olivia doesn't look as enthusiastic about the meal as I do. I always believe that presentation helps elevate the flavor of food, but the sight of Olivia picking hers apart with a look of disinterest leaves a sour taste in my mouth. As we continue eating, I notice the colon in my glass begins to ripple and fizz a lot more than usual. Is this an earthquake? Thunk. Oh, there is Mr. Ferris. <clears throat> Good evening, you two. It's Mr. Ferris. Wow, I haven't seen him since he gave the bad news. Glances over at Livia. That's right. He had to tell her too. So he's probably here to check up on us. He really needs to get the stick out of his ass. He's just very, um... Uh, how you say, refined. <laughs> a real piece of shit. He's seated down with a heaping plate of dinner. Olivia looks up from her plate longingly at it. Whoa, hey, Mr. Ferris. Dang, nice outfit. Thank you. I actually picked it up myself. Wow, you're getting some fine taste. That means a lot. Thank you. Are you chaperoning? I am. Although it would be more accurate to say ATF. No, not maybe. Turns out when you organize an event with a hundred teenagers, some of them decide it's not enough and try to bring their own fun. I've lost count of how many brand new flasks I've confiscated. Between you and I, the other staff plan on making sure it doesn't go to waste after the party's over. Oh, brother. Taking a short break from <clears throat> for my own meal, and I see you two hidden away here in the corner. So how goes it? Is the night treating you well? Yeah, we're having fun. It's going good. I'm just trying to memorize my memorial speech for later. Whoops, wrong button. Of course, I should have guessed. The whaleman proceeds to bite into... Ugh, I mean, it was right, it's hard to watch. Last I saw you two, it was a terrible occasion. So I'm glad to see that both of you have bounced back. Thanks. That's a pretty stern look you have, Olivia. It's nothing. Listen, don't worry about your speech. I'm sure it'll be great. No need to overwork yourself. Relax a little. It should be a fun night, not a stressful one. You're right. Yeah, Olivia, don't worry too much about memorizing a script. You should speak from the heart. Anybody knows how to pay respects to Yadikin, it's you. 
Yeah, that's kind of the problem. Nobody else here would understand most of what I wanted to say. They don't know Yadikin like I did. How am I supposed to summarize everything he meant to me in five minutes? Have some faith, Olivia. People will understand when you speak from the heart. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, this speech is gonna bomb. He goes, right, Olivia, people are genuinely empathetic after all. Okay, who is this? Huh? Oh, great, it's Ben. Follow the source of the voice, spouting, uh, spotting Ben as he approaches the table with a wide smile. Everybody's experienced loss, Olivia. You'd be surprised just how much they'll understand. As Ben takes a seat, Olivia doesn't look happy. In fact, she looks noticeably more upset than she did five seconds ago. Good evening, Mr. Benjamin. You've done a bang-up job organizing tonight. The design of it wasn't all me. The student council all worked together. But of course, a lot of decorations are just reused from year to year as well. Ben skillfully forks several vegetables together into one bite. Seems content that Olivia is actually tolerating his presence. Um, if I may be a bit open here... No, you may not. Leave. Go. I want to thank you guys for being here. I'm so relieved this is all going off without a hitch. I've been crazy nervous myself that things wouldn't go well. Like, if I mess up, I may as well spit on his grave, too. Ben? Ben, are you trying to, like, psych Olivia out? I'll fucking kill you. Wait, what? Can you go back a couple times? Which part in particular are you looking for? Pro, what the fuck? Yeah, no. Ben's a real shit ass. Sorry, I missed it. Good now? Got it. <clears throat> Those kinds of thoughts plagued me the entire time I was working on this. Why's that? Because Mr. Yadikin was the best teacher. The table is shaking under my wrists. Looking over, I notice how Olivia's free hand clutches the edge of the table tightly. Honestly, I loved his classes the most. Can't fucking take him. Oh my god. Yeah, right? He really had a way with teaching. Something in his tone. Can't help but note all his words of praise for our teachers. Simply angering Olivia. Y yeah, he went above and beyond. He was really inspirational. Ferris has even given him that stank eye, too, yeah? Olivia grunts in her own agreement. She's really gripping the table's edge, like she's trying to snap it in two. So I'm just really glad I'm doing Yadikin proud. I feel like I really got to know him, you know? God, you know what? I'm not doing this. Inko, we're dancing. My girlfriend grabs my arm and starts dragging me from the table. But Olivia, what's wrong? Through the grit, she responds roughly. Just feeling that holiday spirit, Inko. Okay. Uh, have fun. She doesn't even look back at Ben or Mr. Ferris as we shove our way through the crowd toward the dance floor. She's still talking me along with her tail running around my wrist. As the upbeat music grows louder, I can barely hear Olivia grumbling to herself. Nerve. What's he know? I'm trying to make himself feel better. You feel the tension within Olivia through her tail squeezing roughly around my wrist. Tension that melts away from her when a gentle stroke of my thumb runs over her scaly appendage. <sighs> Olivia's breath leaves her slowly, the exhale seeming to take all of her frustration with it as she slows down. And once it's all gone, her body goes slack. I have to actually catch her tail before it hits the floor, and I earn an appreciative smile from her before we continue towards the dance floor. Eventually, enough students are displaced and we have a section of the floor to ourselves. I only just now realize the situation I'm in. Good news. I do know... I do in fact know how to dance. Several years of tagging along to business parties make sure of that. Even then, I actually looked up some guides yesterday to keep myself refreshed just in case. Bad news. I do not know how to bust it down epic style. Even as a quirked up human with a little bit of swagger, I am not goaded with the sauce. The very concept of busting a move is foreign to me. I've only ever seen it in shows and occasionally from game characters during a live stream. Don't be stupid, it can't be that hard. 
Hey. Olivia's moving and grooving, bobbing in her wheelchair and rolling her shoulders. <sighs> wow, I'm an idiot. This is just how anyone dances when they're j in a, jamming in a car. Thought I thought it was going to bring up the chair. Oh, we, we've we still got time. She pauses for a second when she notices me staring. Come on, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you're too refined to do even this rich boy. Wow. I'm messing with you. I know you're not. You're just a dork. Doesn't take long to match her rhythm. As we dance, her small smile evolves into a radiant grin. Her annoyance after that dinner is completely gone. A thing of the past. Even when the song ends and a new one starts, we seamlessly bridge into the new rhythm. Everything else fades away until it's simply us. Lost time and the world, and we're caught up in the music now. Eventually, the tracks swap over to a slower tempo. Olivia takes the cue to check the time on her phone. Oh man, it's about time. She shows me. 9.20. We still have time. Olivia shakes her head. Not much. We need to prepare. Oh, but the music just got good. I was wanting to show... Sorry, I can't, Inko. I really need to make sure this goes well. Be here for me, please. Okay. I understand. Thank you. No slow dance. It's so over. Olivia takes both my hands in hers, weaving our fingers together tightly. I can feel her pulse beat through our linked hands. She must be feeling mine, too. Her eyes close slowly, and I can feel her heartbeat slowly fall in line with mine. Finally, she gently lets go. She turns her wheelchair and starts off in another direction, not breaking eye contact until she's nearly lost in the crowd. Well, that was it. That was amazing. It's a shame we couldn't get to do a proper slow dance, though. Yeah. A shame. A few people glance my way. Get stood up. Oh crap, I'm just standing here on the dance floor like a chump. I cut through the crowd to reach the sidelines. The chair set up along the walls is resting. Am I just being selfish? We just dance for what? An hour? It's not like we can ever... We can't ever dance again. Olivia has responsibilities. And she takes them seriously. That's what makes her so great. She wasn't like that at all at the start of the year, was she? This hurts, dude. It hurts a little bit. Across the dance floor, I catch sight of Damien with his date. The two sway along, carefully stepping around each other. Damien's actually struggling, but Liz holds him tight, taking him through the motions. <laughs> it does hurt that I gotta do this later, man. Fuck. <laughs> Not happy about this. Well, the song goes on, he gets more confident in his strides. More impressive is how he seems to handle her neck, which makes the girl's head swoon and melt in his embrace. By the end of it, it almost looks like he was the one teaching her. After a few songs, the lights fade out more. Looks like I was writing my guess earlier. This must be the last song. Fireworks above the building burst into bright flashes of color. The iridescent sparks fall away with each cacophonous boom, some into colorful shapes, but most into a kaleidoscope of fading embers. While the song is eclipsed by the blast of the fireworks, I still see couples lost within the gentle melody. Even Liz and Damien are still dancing, ignorant of the fiery display overhead. The last song fades out, and the lights start getting warmer. It stings a little. On stage, Principal Scaler steps up to the lone microphone and gives a thumbs up to have it turned on. Good evening, everyone. I, I, that was... I hope you've all had a wonderful night. The remaining chatter gets quieter. Thank you all for coming to tonight's event. I'm happy to see so many participate in St. Amon's oldest traditions. Although this year we've cut it short, cut it just a bit short for a special occasion. As you all know, earlier this year we lost one of our most beloved teachers at St. Amon. He had been taught for many years and gave it to, and gave it his all helping his students learn. So we have a few words of service prepared for his send off. First, we'll be hearing from our student council president, Benjamin McKnight. Oh boy. Oh, this is where it's all gonna fucking collapse, isn't it? <sighs> She's gonna, like, get choked up on the stage and not be able to do it. Oh, boy. Well, everybody, let me just go ahead and uh, pop open the old bottle here. <sighs> oh, 
You need something stronger than water. <laughs> I can't. Fucking can't. <sighs> Buckle up. Ben approaches from offstage, graciously taking Scaler's position in front of the microphone. There's a bit of a polite applause, and Principal Scaler moves back. I notice a few students already leaving out the back door. Pricks. Well, whatever. Now, the thing is, is Ben going to throw off uh, Olivia here with his speech and cause her to not be able to speak? Or is Ben going to go over time and make it so that Olivia doesn't get to do her speech? That seems like a Ben fucking move. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Thank you, Principal Scaler. When I learned of Mr. Yadigan's passing, my whole world seemed to just break. I had known him for four years, but in that time he had become a very important person in my life. Would it shock you if I said worse? No. <laughs> it actually wouldn't. He was a mentor figure to me. Someone who guided and... Though Ben spoke passionately, he prattled. The student council president made his point and then some. Like he didn't want to stop talking. Enough so that the next speaker, not Olivia, but a familiar white and black raptor girl, only had a few minutes of her own words. She was much more succinct, given a traditional prayer in his name. Finally, the girl took the microphone from its stand and handed it to Olivia as she wheeled on the stage. <sighs> Alright, fellas, I'm gonna edge you for a second. I, I need to take a piss and get another bottle of water for this. I, I would I it's about to get really bad. So do whatever you gotta. Take a breather. Do a little walk. <laughs> We're gonna need to get ready, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, no, Obama. If you want the if you want the good stuff for the Gator, you're gonna have to go back to the previous stream, dog. This is the bad stream. This is where all the pain comes in. <clears throat> all right. Well, piss has been emptied. Got a new bottle of water here. You crying yet? No, not yet. Though there's a uh, distinct possibility we cry again tonight. Oh, we cried at the last stream. On, like, both of the endings, so that was something. <sighs> okay. You know, I got that, I got that, like, feeling in my gut. You know, the one that's got, like, a rock. Ugh. So, this will be fun. Alright. <laughs> Finally, the girl took the microphone from its stand and handed it to Olivia as she wheeled on the stage. That rock is gonna be a boulder. It's gonna get, it's gonna turn into a goddamn mountain soon, I'm sure. Livia moves into the spotlight with a look of determination on her face. She takes a moment, breathing deeply before scanning over everyone still inside the room. Kidney stone. <laughs> the true pain. I, feel, I flash her a thumbs up, though I don't know if she can see me under that bright light. Finally, she brings the mouth to her, mic to her mouth and begins. Um, sorry, I'm a little nervous. 
Hello, my name is Olivia Halford. Many of you know of me, the quiet girl in a wheelchair at school. But for the longest time, Yadikin was the only person to actually show he cared. Does your neck feel like barbed wires? No, we're not at that point yet. Although, I feel like I'm going to need to choke myself out in a second here. The only teacher to truly teach me. The only one to really reach out. Is this the music, or...? It is, okay. I'm back when I missed. We, j we just started the, um, the speech. In a dark, lonely world, when I thought I was all alone, he was there for me. Not along as Olivia talks, absorbing her genuine words. That's part of why I was asked to talk today. I can't hope to say I was his favorite student, but he was definitely my favorite teacher. From a child, I always had a passion for art, and I've had many teachers through the years learning. After so long, I just had the impression none of them actually liked art. Rather, to them it was another subject to teach, to equally disinterested students for throwaway grades. And I can say, none of them went above and beyond the way he did for his students. She takes a pause to catch her breath. And I notice her eyes still half-lidded as she peers left and right. That spotlight must be poorly angled. It looks to be aimed right in her eyes. Yadikin was one of the best. And he was taken from us too soon. But he does live on. Through the students that he really did teach. It's how he taught. Giving it his all. Not getting discouraged by apathetic classes of ungrateful, unwilling students. If just one student was there to learn. He would teach them all he knew, and I'm honored to have been that for him. There's some whispers around me, and I notice more and more some of our peers are quietly speaking during her speech. Oh no. Oh, they're not gonna boo her off stage, are they? Oh no. A dark presence enters the room. Fucking true. I wave my arm, silently pleading she notices me. Sadly, because of that damn spotlight, Olivia can't take my hint to reel her speech back on course. In his prime, he was known for his portrait work. Controversial as his efforts were, there was no denying his skill. Even though I don't do portraits so often, no, I'm not as skilled as him yet. Someone like me was able to win an art contest in just months of his class. Teaching like that takes serious talent. In a serious heart. And through his efforts and those he's affected and live on. <sighs> Shit. I'll continue to make great work. I'll continue to do his name justice and carry his torch. As his apprentice, it's what he deserves most. Thank you and have a good night. <laughs> it's gonna suck, buddy. My brother and Raptor Christ. So here's the thing. I don't even think that was like a bad speech or anything. Like. Maybe a little bit like. About you. You know. Instead of Yadikin. I suppose. But. You know. It's still speaking good of him. It's still showing that he's made an impact on someone. You know. It wasn't but other people are going to take it the wrong way. Absolutely. I mean this is a fucking high school. That's just the thing. She made his death about herself. Yeah. Just click on. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Silence. A bit more polite clapping, but also some murmurs from the crowd. Olivia, as much as I hate to say it, is in the wrong. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll hold my judgment for a little bit. She took Inko's advice. That was the issue. <laughs> Should not have taken Inko's advice. Is she all right? That's it. And you know I've been falling over this Gator Girl for two streams. Oh, I know you have. Did 
Did she just say we were ungrateful and unwilling? No, that isn't what I meant. Murmurs grow into chatter. Olivia looks my way, confused and etched into her features. That's it? That's the whole speech? I don't know who said it, but it was with an angry tone. That was just cheap puff piece about yourself. That one... That was hurtful. N no, uh, of course not, I just... Olivia's hands fumble for something. The chatter is growing louder as Olivia pulls a small white ball from her chair storage compartment. Her hands shake, the sound of paper crumpling coming from the speakers. Ben's notes. Um, t to continue, Yadikin was an important member of the community and... <laughs> oh my god, that really was the whole thing! Are you serious? How insulting to Yadikin. You should be ashamed. Woman moment. My mind is scrambling. What can I even do? The damage has been done. No, it, it's fine. So long as Olivia calms down, she can have a good comeback. I gotta do something. You're doing great, Olivia! Keep it coming! She instantly rips the paper in two. Uh-oh. Yeah. Who was that? Are you mocking me? What's wrong with all of you? Shit, that isn't what I meant. Principal rushes on stage. Olivia bats her arm away. No, let go of me. Vicious growl permeates through her clenched teeth. So her eyes glare daggers at every person still in the room shouting back at her. Enraged, she smashes the paper in her hands back into a ball and chucks it at the crowd. Fuck you all! None of you knew him like I did. <sighs> Katakin meant more to me than anyone fucking else. Olivia, please. The speakers let out a terrifying noise as the microphone is tossed aside. Olivia turns away from the angry crowd, rolling herself off stage and toward the back exit. For a moment, I can see Damien and Liz among the churning sea of bodies. They looked at me with utter confusion and shock. Coming back to my senses, I run out of the hall and chase after Olivia. Pushing the side exit open, the frigid breeze of outside air hits my face. Where'd she go? Catch a glimpse of her turning the corner of the building. Olivia, wait up! Olivia, wait. Fucking hell. Hold on. It takes me a moment to catch my breath. What the hell happened back there? By the carport. There's crowds of people exiting the building. Some are waiting by the curb, probably for the valley or some other transportation. Her eyes level on me. Eyes a mixture of anger and pain. Olivia? Olivia, you just blew up out of nowhere at everyone. What's wrong? Olivia's on the brink of tears, her enraged eyes welling up. Why? Why didn't they get it? What did I do wrong? My teeth rattle painfully as I close my mouth. I poured my heart and soul out to those assholes. Look what happened. Ugh. It was all for nothing. Those freaks. Get it right, Ingo. Yeah, I do. Listen, it's not over. Of course it is. And I can deserve better than this. What a disgrace. Look, there's a way to make it up. Olivia turns and sniffles a little bit. She's listening. Right now, things seem really down, I know. But the stage is probably still open. I'm sure if I just give the word to with Ben or Scaler, they'll let you continue and you can apologize. Up. Yadikin was wrong. All those assholes, even you, Inko. Inko is missing his frontal lobe. He should be. A bite of 87 is ass right now. All they cared about was themselves. Well, I mean, your speech. It. I took your advice, Inko. Hey, I said tell your story to them. I don't recall saying to make it all about yourself. So, sorry on my part. Maybe you should go back and apologize, too. Ooh. Fuck them. Why should I? Because it'll make you look bad if you don't? Hmm. 
like I should give two shits about what they think of me. Why give two shits? Because it's going to make me look bad. Oh my god. Oh my god, Anko. What the fuck? How do you bungle it this fucking hard? Holy shit. Okay. I really shouldn't have said that. No shit. But I'm right though, aren't I? Are you seriously making this about you? It's not about me. I'm trying to help you so it affects me. She tries to yell something, but her voice cracks and breaks into a miserable growl. I watch his tears begin to stream from her still vicious eyes. Come on, Olivia. That's all I ever wanted to do. Maybe. I don't want you to help. Her voice is deep and stern. You don't really want that, do you? How do you know? You think you understand me? You've all figured out. You know what I want? F fuck you, Inko. Hollow feeling resonates through me. She doesn't mean that. She can't. Can she? Look, Olivia, why don't we just go back home? We can talk about this, and maybe on Monday you can... Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going home. Here, let me call... S no! No, I'm going home alone. Seriously? Yeah, it's... It's over. Over? What do you mean, over? She turns her chair away from me, rolling herself down the sidewalk away from the venue. You can't walk home alone. Olivia, listen. Sounds unmistakable. I nearly just lost my hand. Fuck off. I want to follow after, desperately try and reason with her, but. My legs refuse to move. Part of me forces myself to watch Olivia as she slowly moves down the sidewalk. As other students pass her by, toss hateful words her way. As the world itself seems to throw all its vitriol on this wheelchair-bound girl, buffeting her with blistering cold gusts. As she waits at the metro station in view, I'm incapable of looking away. It must be some punishment for what I had said. I can see Olivia finally quake with tears at the station. Just as Olivia wails with agony, the train comes, hiding her from me. That wail was the last thing I heard from her that night, though at times her haunting cry resurfaces in my memories, returning to tear at my heart without remorse, with no reason or warning as to why. Alone. I'm afraid. I've always heard the stories of events like prom ending with merriment and talk of after parties. The ride back home was silent. I opened the door to my undecorated house, feeling there feeling much colder than it did outside. I didn't bother turning the lights on as I hobbled through the empty halls. My movements are robotic. Each step up the stairs is forced. The bedroom door swings open, but I can't be bothered to close it. Better than never looked so inviting. Hello, maybe it's the other way around. Nothing else is too cold. It's the new center of the universe. I just flump face first into it. I'm alone. The winter days dragged on endlessly during the Christmas break. Something inside me just sapped any and all strength from me. Wake up whenever I can't sleep anymore. Eat whenever so my stomach wouldn't hurt. Stare at my computer's monitor without really acknowledging what was going on. The bare minimum of existing. The one singular thought that pervaded my mind was... I want to see her. I'd find myself looking at my phone's messenger app. Eyes glancing over the old pictures and messages I sent. All those doodles she'd sent that meant nothing to her now, meant the world to me. Fingers 
tapping the digital keys with whatever words I thought, asking her if she was okay, asking if I could see her, asking for forgiveness, only for the words to vanish as my thumb held down the delete key. In this cold and lonely room, I desperately wanted to reach out to Olivia. In each passing day, I would muster up just enough courage to write a longer and longer message. But my courage would vanish by the end, and I'd go back to simply existing. Lost in an ocean of apathy in this room. It's Christmas Eve today. Got some new house robes from my parents. Had them pre-wrapped and sent over. They'll open it when they get home tomorrow night. Everyone else is having a big meal with their families. They all got their own yearly traditions. Whatever old comedy gets put on like a ritual. Before bed, the kids get to open one present early. Everyone else stays up chattering with others, each other a while. But not me. Just in my pajamas watching a show I don't even like. It's senior year. <laughs> Next year I'll have taxes. Looking at my messenger app again. Sorry at the message I composed. My thumb lowers over the backspace key. Breathe in. Breathe out. I did it at last. My heart thumps roughly as immediately after I see the typing animation on my screen. My thumbs want to mash away wildly on the keys. Right on an infinite number of things that just fly to the forefront of my mind. But I hold off. And think. Until I finally decide. In the most literal sense of the word, nothing. She included a drawn guts looking depressed. A strange sensation overtook my face. It was my smile. I've forgotten what it felt like to smile in only just a week. My fingers didn't move without me realizing. Before I could explain, I saw Olivia typing a reply and held myself. Another rough thump of my heart rattled in my chest. A few seconds. No response. Was it too much? Too little? <sighs> what am I even doing? Let my phone fall into my chest and rub my eyes. Idiots. Oop. I jerk up straight. Thank you, Raptor Jesus. I swear I'm going to church for every Sunday from now on. I 
There's a pause between her replies, time during which I could feel my breath leaving me, and my heart slow in its beating. Some of that squeezing feelings back. I really jacked myself, didn't I? I guess I deserve it. If this is my price to pay. I decided to flip on an old Christmas movie. It's one meant for kids, but... I remember watching it with my family once. As I doze off, it's just a little less bitter. We texted more and more over the winter break. By the time I saw Olivia again at school, it almost felt like how things used to be. Almost. I had a lot to make up for after all. But I was back in her good graces. It's more than I could have asked for, honestly. The rest of the school year seemed more like a formality, and instead I'd put my efforts on just being there for Olivia. After all, it was just us two versus the world once we graduated. Another day of work. Another walk home through the shit show that was an urban rush hour. I sigh as several car horns continue to blare at each other with reckless abandon. At least it's Friday. The words linger in the air as a faint evening breeze washes over me. Experience has taught me that walking home from my office building is faster than trying to drive through this mess. I briefly stop to observe the source of the massive buildup. I've been doing construction on this intersection for like the last three months. Damn it. I'm off work early today. Something about corporate reorganization, though that's usually code for downsizing. At least I'll get to see Olivia in her prime. I'm always so busy these days. But tonight can be special. I don't even remember the last time we went out together for a date night. So, she's sure to love a nice dinner date. And it'll be like old times. After another 15 minutes of dodging cars and homeless people, I'm finally at my destination. The Volcadera Gallery of Arts. Olivia had spoken with Elena and they'd come to some agreement to start producing and selling her work at Elena's gallery. And over the years, the arrangement changed, as Olivia became a part-time assistant to Elena. It's a nice gig, but it doesn't pay the most. Of course, it's just until her career really takes off. After that, it's a beachfront life for the both of us. If the schedule she gave me is right, Olivia should be showcasing her work right about now. The inside of the gallery is dry and cool, a contrast to the hot and humid weather outside. Independent conversations echo throughout the room as I walk past the front desk. Nobody dares to question me. I think her showcase is in the east wing, right next to the Attican's old section. As I follow my vague memories, I come to a wide open section of the gallery. I spot Olivia not too far away. Looks like she's talking to someone. I approach her slowly to overhear the conversation, trying not to interrupt. How am I feeling right now? I don't feel great, but I feel like it could have went insanely worse. But I mean, there's still time for it to go even worse here. Like I'm, 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 right now. I, I kind of let out a breath of relief because there's the chance to at least try and make up for the shit. You know, we fucked up. Obviously, big fucky wucky. Waiting to see this guy fall apart. Uh, well, I think I'll make it through ending two here without falling apart as long as there isn't anything too wild. Ending one, uh, no promises. You made several comments earlier in this interview about your inspiration for your latest work. Do you want to elaborate on this? Okay. So it's just a random journalist, I suppose. She's holding a tablet, tapping away as she speaks. A journalist, then. Hmm. Yes, yes, I can. Recently, I've been looking a lot more into the warmer tones. Interesting. Get up. 
My usual palette favored cool tones that were evocative of evening theming, but for this series I wanted to tackle what comes after the nighttime vistas. At least from daybreak to noon. Olivia finally notices my presence and turns her head toward me. Inko, did something happen? What are you doing over here? I wanted to surprise you. <laughs> well, that's nice. Is he your husband, Miss Halford? Oh, no, we're just dating. Would you mind if I got comments from him as well? It may be useful. Mm, I don't know. I guess it'd be fine. Excellent. The woman turns to me, pushing her tablet well within my personal bubble. Miss Halford said you're Inko. Inko G. Nito. You've been an item for three years now. Three years? Since high school, then? Yes, we met and started dating our senior year together. Since you've been with her for a while, you must be very familiar with her process as well. I'd say so, yes. When could you tell me about Olivia's presence in the art world, then? Her work really stands out, yet her pieces aren't that widespread. Well, I can see Olivia's head shaking. It's a personal talk we've had more and more often these days. Tablet pushes further into my space, urging me to speak. It's not that Olivia doesn't want her work to spread. It's just the majority of people that approach her have been from varying advocacy organizations for disabled individuals. I don't see how that would be a problem. It isn't, honestly, but... And we fumbled. Ah, <sighs> Inko, why? Before I can continue, Olivia forced herself between the journalists and I. I think that's enough for now. The reporter reluctantly nods, politely excusing herself in the presence of Olivia's leer. Look, Olivia, I... Olivia pulls me to the aside and around a corner, whispering angrily. What are you doing? I've told you. I've told you time and time again. I'm not doing it that way. Okay, sorry. You shouldn't even be here. Shouldn't you be at work? I got to go home early today. Relax. And I wanted to see you. A gentle puff of air slips from her lips. Thanks. Hey, we haven't been somewhere in forever. And now that I have some time off, would you want to have dinner someplace nice tonight? You seem stressed. Olivia intenses herself a little. Dinner. Well, I guess it has been a long while. Yeah, I think I'd like that. Great. Anywhere in mind you'd like to go? She closes her eyes in contemplation. No, nothing in particular. I'd be glad to relax a bit wherever. All right. You getting off work at the same time today? Yep, 5 p.m. Look, this interview's really important. This guy's from a pretty major publication. I can't have this go wrong, all right? I really think this is my big chance. I get the idea. All right. Okay. Just relax, okay? You're doing great with the interview. Thanks. You'll do great, and tonight, we can celebrate. Yeah. All right, you should go. I'm going, I'm going. On my way out, I wave back at the confused journalist while Olivia rolls back her direction to finish the interview. I walk home with a bit more pep in my step. Man, I really need this date too. I'm getting a few butterflies again. I open the door and flick a light switch, revealing our dignified flat. There's not much furniture, with most of the floor being reserved for Olivia's art supplies in space to maneuver her wheelchair. Honestly, it looks a bit like an extension of the gallery she works at. Some might call it messy, but I'd like to think of it as homely. On the way to our bedroom, I pass the kitchen and catch a glimpse of the sink. Still need to wash the dishes and sweep the floor. <sighs> Never mind that now. There's something much more important. I make it to the master bedroom, opening up the expansive wardrobe that lies just inside. Went to where... An hour of hygiene and fashion later, I'm all cleaned up. Take a seat on the living room sofa, waiting patiently for Olivia to get home. It's a little after five. She'll probably be here in ten minutes or so. I haven't actually decided where I'll take her. It's gotta be barbecue. Somewhere like, uh... <sighs> Man, we've been living here for ages and I don't actually know where anything is. He was already wearing that. Shh! <laughs> he pulled the identical clothes out. My phone's old proprietary matte boots, and I check around for restaurants within walking distance. 
Handful of falafel. Hmm, looks great. Or before the name, just so can't. That means then there must be quick check for search settings confirms it. Only carnivore locations. <laughs> Wore the same clothes for his entire senior year. And so did Olivia. Yeah, you gotta love like the repeat wardrobe kind of shit. There we go. Find a list of nearby locations. One in particular is even marked as new. Simone's. Just opened a few months ago. And it looks pretty neat. Checking the website, I see that they still have some available tables for tonight. And the menu looks exquisite. Alright, that decides it. I checked the time. 5.15. Should've figured the foot traffic would've been bad today. It's Friday after all. Olivia should be here any minute. Man, is it that bad? We should check up on her. Oh no. Oh no, bros. <laughs> no response. Is it still going on then? Jeez. I'm starting to get worried. Pit starts gathering in my gut. Or I'm just hungry. <sighs> no, I'm not eating before a date. Come on. Olivia, get home already. That's it. I'll just call her. If it interrupts the interview, it interrupts the interview. I find Olivia's contact and... <sighs> Shit. Oh, come on. Is her phone off? Man. I guess a sandwich wouldn't hurt. My knees pop when I stand. Guess I was sitting a while. While I busy myself with sandwich crafting, I can feel my worries bubble further. Maybe I should just go back to the gallery? No, if she left, it'd be too easy for us to just pass each other. Nothing else to do, I flip on the TV. It's a new documentary series. Now yeah, that, that'll fill the noise nicely. Hardly pay attention to it, just getting bites into my little sandwich until it's all gone. Guilt pangs me. What else am I supposed to do? I sigh and look out the window. Outside, the unmistakable wail of an ambulance. No. 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 Of course not. That'd be stupid. Quit worrying. Mm. Dang it, Olivia. Can't this have waited just one day? <sighs> what am I thinking? Knock that off, me. Just need to have some faith. Getting worked up for nothing. We can laugh about it over dinner tonight. Yeah, I'm just worrying over nothing. I'll just sit back and relax until Olivia arrives. Ooh, uh, holy crap! I flip around on the couch. Fuck! From the loud thumping, I can already guess. She is not happy. Olivia's tail slams loudly on the floor in frustration as she wheels herself into our living room. Olivia! What happened? I was getting worried. I was at that damn interview for hours. The fucking reporter. Holy shit, I need to punch something. Your interview didn't go well. What do you think? Olivia stops herself and exhales deeply. Sorry. No, no it didn't. She loved my work. We were right there, ready to make this happen. Then she shows me her notes. You know what they said? Differently abled, passionately enabled. I tell her to drop the angle. She says she's not interested in the article otherwise. She was just there to make her shitty little story about the disabled artist to ride my situation to stardom. She tries to say it's mutually beneficial. So for hours, I'm trying to keep the conversation going, to show her my process, anything to just get her to say yes. I was right there, Inko, right there. All I needed to hear was a yes, for once. God, why does nobody get it? It was all for nothing. Now I just... Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm sorry I'm late. I can go on our date thing now. I'm hungry. Everything's closed, Olivia. Fucking fantastic. None of this would have happened if she had just done it. I look like a desperate idiot. I'm still stuck at the place making barely above minimum wage, and I don't even get the date. Just doomed to mediocrity forever. 
if it matters that much, maybe you should just accept it. I didn't mean to mumble that. I hope Olivia didn't notice. And this is what's going to get her to walk out on me. She noticed. What the fuck was that? She's giving me a chance to change what I said. I've gotten a few of those over the years. Whenever I broke the unspoken rule of hers. And I'd always capitulate because I figured that's what a good boyfriend would do. Oh boy. Except today. This was my only early day in a while. First time in years I could have felt like her boyfriend for once. Something boils over. No, no. No. No, no. I wasn't supposed to be like this. I can't bring myself to say anything more. I, shouldn't, I just sit in silence while Olivia starts tensing up. What does that mean? You're supposed to support me. We're here for each other. That's what all this is for. I've been supporting you, Olivia. I love you. Then why? Her breathing is getting heavier. I see her claws poking up, pressing into her armrest. Those scared me once. She won't use them. Olivia, listen to me. Is she gonna rip our head off? Please? This is the first time in years that I could have taken you on a date. We could have gone anywhere we wanted to. And we would have. We would have been back by now, having fun. <laughs> I'm spent on even more of this stupid, stupid, stubborn nonsense. Who are you? The guy that's had to deal with this crap for three years now. I like you, Olivia. I love you. I want to do stuff with you. Can't you make it easy to deal with you? Oh, like you would know. Your fucking parents aren't even around. I'd rather get shit-faced every night than deal with you once. My parents didn't abandon me to some other poor family to raise instead. Her brows furrow and her eyes widen. We're going bother feeling guilty about this statement, she roars. How can you know the situation I was in, you prick? I'm just trying to make my shitty situation not shit. It wouldn't be that way if you didn't demand everyone else pay play by your rules. You're no different than those so-called phonies that abuse their disability. Except you're broke. What the fuck, Nito? What the fuck? Oh my fucking god. Is it so much to ask for one person who gets it? Am I the- am I insane one here? I don't need you turning on me too, you spineless sack of shit. Is it really just the entire world conspiring against me to make sure I'm painting under a bridge with condiments and shit within the next few years? Is it so much to ask for one fucking person to not just use me to climb the social ladder? If you're so concerned about it, then let them! It's been three damn years, Olivia! Face it, your career isn't not taking off because you refuse to let anyone actually see it! Because you're so hung up about your stupid fucking wheelchair! Fuck you, you useless sack of shit skinny! Oh! <gasps> oh! <gasps> I'm dead. Shit. That was too far. What are we doing? What's happened to us? Is it supposed to be like this? We stand motionless, just staring at the carnage of the vase. Water leaks across the tile. Flowers. Birthday gift from me to her. They withered on the floor in pieces. Olivia finally meets my eyes. Her expression is a horrid mix of shock and remorse. The fire has died. All heat is gone. And this place is simply two burnt out individuals. The reality that we had ignored for so long. Her head falls and she rolls away to the office room we turned into her studio. The door creaks slowly before shutting softly. I... Grabbing a towel from the kitchen, I try to carefully collect the broken pieces of the vase. <sighs> Not carefully enough, though, as my palm is cut on a jagged edge. Thankfully, the 
towel staunch is the small cut enough that I can clean up the rest of the damage. Set the damaged flower in the sink, since there's a chance some of them can be saved. The vase is a lost cause, though. So I look at it, I feel... Sounds of sniffling reaches my ears, and I look to the closed studio door. An idea comes to mind. There's one less undamaged tool up here. I could take it to her and apologize for my harsh words. <sighs> Maybe she'd even apologize too. Maybe. But I don't even know anymore. <sighs> Setting the last living flower into a cup. I fill it with some water. <sighs> Looks horrible. Petals are damaged. Stem is bent. Some of my blood is mixed with the water, making it look disgusting. For a picture, a perfect representation of us right now. But I gave that up. I gave up a lot of things for Olivia. It's like she doesn't understand that, though. I place the glass where the vase once was. Lay down on the couch once more. This is our life now. It's been our life for so long. I don't even know where this life is going to take us. And it's with that final horrifying thought that I drift into a dreamless sleep. Well, that didn't feel great. <laughs> Plain old heartache. Yeah, well, that's kind of the natural conclusion of that, isn't it? It's unfortunate, isn't it? Terrible ending, the worst one ever. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> there's ending one. And if you haven't noticed, there's a theme of going down, get worse. So, <laughs> I hope you're ready for that. <sighs> Let's get this shit over with. Yeah, we will. I just kind of want to formulate my thoughts on that ending. Like... rough i mean a lot of it is because nito just never really figured out how to handle the things he's thinking and the ways that he wants to articulate himself and, and from the <laughs> i hate i i fucking hate this and from there it just you know, never improved. They decided to give it another chance even when they saw it wasn't gonna work and... I mean, sometimes that works, but other times it just ends up with this. I mean, you can love somebody, but... not be a good fit for them, right? Wish we started with one and worked our way up to four. Wouldn't that have been great? <laughs> let Olivia walk all over him in the end, but she got bad. Focused on her work instead of him. They both stopped caring about each other. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I guess she didn't want to take handouts or anything, but... Because she wasn't willing to do that, she put way too much time into her work. And... Obviously... Inko felt like he was neglected. Olivia felt like she never under she was never being understood by Inko. Bad communication on both ends. Unresolved like animosity. Yeah. It's a realistic ending, I suppose. And an earned ending, really, when I mean, to get that ending you have to make it so you appease her, but you never actually do anything yourself. You're always just bending the knee. So, 
Really thought that simp meant much more like supportive dumb himbo shit. Very unhappy. <laughs> because I'm a hazmat suit because things are going to get toxic. Oh. I'll remember the worst ending. Yep. So if that's, uh, if that's Inko when he has no confidence in some relationship with uh, Olivia. Now we're going to see what happens when it doesn't matter what uh, confidence Inko has. When he fucks up and doesn't form a relationship with Olivia. He's probably going to, if I'm going to take a guess, I'm going to say that it's probably something along the lines of he keeps trying to be her friend even though she doesn't want it. And that's not going to be a good uh, outcome. So... Let's go ahead and run it back. I always view the score as growth. Olivia grew. She became confident without Inko to help balance it out. She grows overconfident. I could see that. Yeah. Which by that metric then, getting this other ending means that she has no confidence and... <sighs> I'm not going to like that. For this one, neither of them can grow. Maybe like ending wise, or yeah, maybe like ending wise. Score wise, you just have to make sure Olivia's only has a two. Anything um, more than that puts you on the path for one of the other endings. At least according to this guide I'm looking at, so. usual stuff oh boy can't wait for everything to get rough here so we'll just uh we'll make sure we get all of the wrong answers at this point shouldn't be too hard i just choose the option that gives nobody a point yeah we can do that there's no reason to like up inkos so we're just gonna keep skipping along here Such pain that we don't get to ride in the elevator. <laughs> There's the fucking bones cracking again. Alright, so now we have to... Convince. Right? Yeah, convince Olivia why her family needs her out there. Maybe it wouldn't hurt if you took a break and went outside. Just for a few minutes. What? I mean, it could help you decompress. Is this you trying to get me to join the party? It isn't working. I don't mean it like that. Then what? Look, Inko, Mr. and Miss Payne already have Damien and Vinny to handle. We want to let just extra weight for them to carry. That seems a bit harsh. And it's like I said, soon enough I'll be out of the house and out of their hair. Remember when we thought that meant she was gonna like die of cancer or something? Boy, <laughs> were we off the mark there. Should have been looking at Eatican. The best I can do for them at this point is not be in the way. And it was every argument she had. The kind of arguments that come from desperation and guilt. To convince herself it's for the good of everybody. But doesn't she see that's pushing them away and just makes them worse? They willingly have her here because they love her, and yet she tries to remove herself. Anyone would be lucky to come home to a family like this. No amount of wealth could substitute the kind of emotional support they offer her. They're doing the best they can to take care of you, Olivia. Damien's always by your side. Vinny seems like a nice little brother. And both Mr. and Miss Payne have your best interests at heart. She's not making eye, eye contact anymore, but she's listening intently. This is all stuff she's already know she known already. Wouldn't you want to reciprocate their affection? It's the least you could do. Why the hell are you telling me about my own family and friends like you know better? Wish you well on your dark path, gotta hit the hay. Rest easy, JFab. This dark path will sap my energy for sure. With nothing else to say, I make my way towards the sliding door. At least I tried. Wait. Hmm. Oh, go. 
so. Really? Thought about it and you're right. If it'll make him happy, I guess I'll try. There's a twinge of shame in her voice, but that's to be expected after an internal struggle. Glad you came around. Alright, we got the skip button, so there's no new dialogue there. Gotta bob along. Alright, uh, defend Olivia. We've technically already done this dialogue in the past, so we can go ahead and do that. Okay, well actually, we didn't actually go all the way through, so we'll just continue where we had left off when we were trying it. I soap to Mia for Olivia and I ended up in this mess. Okay, now, nah. we literally just missed one statement on that then. Oh man, I'm gonna hate the fucking arcade. You know, sometimes it's hard, it's easy to forget how much of the game there actually is. But thinking back to that confrontation with Mia, standing up for her there didn't really pay off either. But that was a while ago. I just don't know. Look over the crowded uh, crowd again. The match is about halfway done, judging by the remaining health pools. Let me turn this down just a little bit here. Uh, don't cause a fuss for Olivia. No. Even if this buster loser wants to give Olivia a special treatment for a disability, I'm not going to overcompensate for her sake. She hates that. Match of the game, though. It's a bit disappointing, but what can you do? Just one match. I've had plenty of fun with Olivia today, and we'll have fun afterwards as well. I should just focus on that in the game. On the display, I watch Wani Long do some crazy gravity-defying rising spin kick. Doesn't this imply the nickname Hot Wheels was given out of pity? <sighs> Discarding that thought. No need to make myself mad. Wani Long manages to go from that absurd kick into grabbing Buster's larger character and bodily dragging him to the bottom of the screen. The arcade machine replaced the impact landing thrice, and even in slow mo. Winner! Wani Long! Buster throws up his arms in defeat. Well, you got me. Looks like I underestimated you. He sticks out a hand for Olivia. When she goes to grab it, he shakes it firmly. Thanks. You're pretty good, too. Buster raises his arm like a wrestling champion. The gathering crowd bursts into cheers once more. Damien, too. I consider if he just. forgot? No, he has the right idea. I'm not going to be a stick in the mud about it. Alright, that was awesome! Hey, you know where they sell food, right? We should go get some snacks to celebrate. Well, it was smelling grease. I was just assuming it was... He takes his own order and starts marching off in another direction. Damien, wait for the rest of us! Behind me, Olivia's brow furrows with worry, just for a second. I smile back at her. She shakes her head and smiles back. You did pretty great. Thanks. You hungry? Tammy wants to go get stuff. He means always hungry. But sure, I'm up for a pretzel. Alright, let's go catch up with them. Alright, skippy time. Skippy, skippy time. Skippy time. Lean time. I love lean. The lean man gonna lean. <laughs> Uh, console others, so that way we don't get any confidence points from Inko. Alright, let's take a look at the debug real quick. So, yep, zero, 0 across the board. We're both not confident in the slightest. I think I'm doing perfectly well in that regard. And so is Olivia here. I gesture over to the green dino, who seems to jump in surprise. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Response seems almost instinctual on her part. Must mean she's really taken to my support. Whew, that's a relief. I suppose that's good to hear. Alright. Zoomies. wonder when the next big, like, divert is gonna happen here. Oh god, so cringe. Uh, I guess we, we can take the key here. Alright, let's get this over with. 
gotten this far. Time to end it. I've had about enough of all this stress. By the looks of it, so is Olivia. She's been dealing with this much longer than me. So it's time for me to carry my own weight here. It's the least I can do to make that final step for her. Even if she doesn't trust the Attican, she trusts me. If she doesn't trust the Attican? That doesn't sound right. But it can't be anything else. It's just that. <sighs> Enough nonsense. I take the key and move the sl uh, just slide the key in the panel. Run play, Inko, you fucking dumbass. I say, being the one who's puppeteering Inko right now. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go Kai's. Okay, and then we'll just do this. Uh, ask for help. Can't decide. And we should be at zero zero still. Ben is the right idea. Okay. <laughs> Damn, they got a Yadikin again. This motherfucker just doesn't have a, a good route, does he? Just gets owned on every single one. You know, I'm kind of surprised that um, there isn't like a bigger like path divergence when you don't get any score. Like you still get like a lot of this. Look, you even got gator ass. It was like this in Snoop game. Okay. Hate to wake her up. Is it turn away from her? Something catches my wrist. Okay, yeah, keep moving. <laughs> gator booty, hell yeah. The only, like, little thing we get here. As silence overtakes the room, all eyes turn on me, and I'm considering how to approach the situation. I see Mia in the corner of my eye, along with the subtle fist she's raised in warning. Imagine you being stupid shifts the universe enough that Yadikin doesn't die of cancer. Instead, he dies of cringe. <laughs> Now here is where you're going to fucking despise Inka. Oh, great. Recalling how badly she, uh, she had thrashed that hallway causes a chill to run my, uh, down my spine. Am I going to, like, throw... Am I going to throw Olivia under the bus? Ben let her speak first. He's trying to play it smart, I think. And he's on to something. I could... If I, take for the, if I take the heat for this, maybe Mia will finally leave me and Olivia alone. Actually, yeah. Mia knows the score. If I help her get off the hook, I'd look pretty darn cool. She could even owe me one. I'll remember, you're locked in. Yeah, let's just make sure that we're locked in here. It should say, oh. Oh, no. You solely are responsible for this. There's no going back at set in stone. I could just alt F4. <laughs> Assuming the punishment isn't something drastic. I have no side in the incident, man. I give up. It's exactly as Ben and Mia say. I instigated the whole thing. A hushed gas manages to escape from Mia, but I ignore it and keep talking. You can. Alt F4 the game. Can't alt F4 your feelings. True. Them's gonna stick with me. I've been dealing with a lot lately, and when she was passing by, I remembered when she targeted me in the PE on my first day, and I just saw the opportunity. Well, Inko, I'm very surprised. I'm glad you're willing to be so honest accept responsibility for all this. Chose character. Grinds against my soul to lie and throw myself under the bus. But I nod and smile along. It's for the greater good, after all. Well then, I appreciate this show of character, but we're still going to have to lay down the law here. Ben clears his throat loudly to draw focus back on him. Miss Skeller, if I may, it's clear emotions are still running high. The damage to the hallway will be fixed over the weekend, and nobody was seriously injured, right? People could have gotten hurt... And I get that, but considering the circumstances, Inko is still in mourning like the rest of us. On top of losing a teacher, he's lost a mentor as well. Is that not punishment enough? Do we really need to throw the book at the only human student during a tragedy? During an audit? Scaler scoffs and grimaces. I think it would be in everyone's best interest if everyone he was here, uh, everyone would just cut some slack. Ben, you know that's not how we're supposed to look at this. She complains, but she's clearly somewhat rattled by the concept. Look, here's what I'm seeing here. Mr. Nito had some grudge against Miss Moretti, 
which he acted on with the camera flash. And this had the unintended effect of her getting hurt. So the whole thing effectively started with an accident. Yes, that sounds about right. Scaler turns her gaze to me. I nod in affirmation. Then Scaler looks at me afterward, her eyes narrowing like daggers. Ben discreetly nudges me with his elbow. Huh? Oh, yeah, that sounds like what happened. Right. And why did none of you come forward about this earlier? Inko and me are both friends of mine. They were confiding in me about the situation. They both apologized to each other already. Scaler's glare comes my way once again. You forgive each other. Yadkin taught us a lot about forgiveness, ma'am. That was good. Scaler's glare switches back over to Mia. And you, Ms. Moretti? Mia stares right back, the gears turning in her head. Ben tries to nudge her discreetly again, but she doesn't seem to take the notice. I feel myself starting to sweat. I think Mia would rather take the punishment than admit any sort of fault. Yeah, I'm sorry. A wave of relief washes over Ben and I. Scale looks more frustrated than anything. She leans back on her desk chair and shuffles through some papers. In addition to the report itself, R. Yadikin left behind his account of what happened. In it, he describes Mia's actions as openly hostile and intentional. Could you blame her? She couldn't see anything and she was in a lot of pain. In either case, it seems both parties are in agreement to the situation. I suppose that's why Yadikin didn't mention a motive in his report. Now, I would like to give the benefit of the doubt, especially at a time like this. And given both of your statements, it seems whatever nonsense this was has been resolved. Still though, at the bare minimum, I'll have to give you both a day of Saturday detention to help clean up the mess. Afterwards, we'll have another talk to discuss this further. Now oh, shoot. So, this has been what it would have been otherwise. I'm sure Mia's satisfied. She's slouching in the chair pretty hard at this point, feeling completely unthreatened. Principal Scaler dismisses us. Mia skips out of the office without another word, leaving both Ben and I behind. We quickly follow suit, not wanting to bother Scaler anymore. Once we're out in the hall and the door clicks behind us, Mia props herself against the wall beside Ben. So I'm in the clear now? Almost clear. You still need to come in on Saturday, but after that you'll be good. And after the meeting? Don't worry, I can easily make that not happen. Am I record? As good as scrubbed, but I'm pulling some big favors to make it happen. Me lets out a deep sigh. This is why I love you. Ben's face turns fuchsia in seconds, yet he's wearing the largest of smiles. Thanks. In a blink of an eye, Ben is now one up against the wall, Mia looming above him with her hand right beside his head. Oh, just wait later, Benny boy. Uh, what about me? For once, Mia wears a smile without any threat behind it. Yeah, yeah. Good work out there, monkey boy. I wasn't expecting you to play along so well. Felt like the easiest way to handle things. So you, what, wanted to take the blame then? I mean, it worked out in the end. <laughs> that it did. Playing peak yet again, I see. Except we're on the worst run now. See? But also, that's me extending an olive branch. Both parasaurs stare at me as though I grew a duck bill. To you, Mia. I just want to get along. Come again? Mostly, I'd like you to stop harassing Olivia. I think we can work something out. Well, aren't you special? And I mean that in the best way. Such self-sacrifice for friendship. Ben could learn a thing or two from you. Hmm. Alright, just for you. I'll leave this little Miss Grumpy Guts alone. Ben steps forward toward Mia with concern etched on his face. Mia, you are messing with Olivia? Shut the fuck up, Louie. No, and now I never will, right? Be sure to do ending four for the post, uh, post credits scene for doing well. Endings. Yeah, that's, what that's the only reason we're doing one and two right now. The pink punk turns back to me. Just free coasting at the end of the year, and I'll be out of your hair forever. Sounds like a good deal, Inky boy. I nod in agreement. Yeah, that's all I'm asking for. After Saturday, we won't need to see each other, uh, one another ever again. Mia. Should be an option that says E4 epilogue on the main menu when that's done with this. Must remain at least. Got it. My hand is held out uh, to her to seal the, our deal. See you Saturday, then. 
Instead of shaking it, Mia slaps my palm hard enough to make the voluntary clap reverberate in the hall. Or involuntary clap. Hiding my pain with a smile, Mia reciprocates with a grin of her own and turns away. Mia saunters off, then looks between the two of us. I don't get anything anymore. But I'm glad you're taking efforts to smooth everything over, Inko. Ain't no problem. It's the least I can do. Yeah, and I really appreciate it. You'll be fine with her in detention, right? Sure, totally. I clasp a hand on his shoulder and offer him my fist. He smiles back and reciprocates with a fist bump. Alright, see ya. See ya. <sighs> After school, I took the metro back home to shower and put, some, put on some new clothes. As it turns out, my parents were on a business trip for the weekend. Yep. So this part's the same. Oh, I got a little bit of sneeze. Hold up a sec. And I lost it. Okay, never mind. Ah, oh, there you are. Damien mentioned that you'd be coming over later. Hey, Randy. Say, Inko, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind shoveling some of the snow off the driveway when you can. I really appreciate it, and I'll even pay a couple bucks for it. No need for the payment, sir. It's the least I could do after coming unannounced. Well, thanks a bunch, really. You can't skip, but I know we've seen this before. As Randy leaves, I step back out and collect the withered snow shovel half buried in the snow. There it is now in the layer. Many minutes later, I find myself collapsed on Damien's couch and let my head rest against the comforter. God, my body aches as I finally feel the full toll of my f efforts. Nope, this time you shovel in so we know Olivia visiting. Yeah, I was gonna say. It does seem a little different. Made worse by the heat of the room. I feel the dizziness overtake me. My head spins as the room swirls around me until I see Olivia's bedroom door. I just linger there as I consider getting up to see her, just giving her some time to come out. She has to know I'm here now, right? She probably does. Also, probably doesn't want to do her silly knee walk thing again. I wonder how mad she'd be if I caught it on camera. Olivia? I knock lightly on their door. No answer, but I do hear the TV inside. The door creaks loudly even as I push it open as gently as possible. No, oh, no, not the, not the gator. Not the gator pile. There's a sign when the Inko's not a good man in this. Yeah, just going in on, without being let in. Olivia lays on her bed, flat on her stomach. She's staring blankly at the TV on the floor. Can I come in? Olivia gives a slight grunt of approval. Why don't you watch him? One of her claws lazily gestures to a pile of DVD cases. No, no, I wonder if she'll be mad if I caught her on camera. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on how you take it, right? If he, if he means it more seriously or more as a joke. Because I think he makes like a similar kind of joke on like one of the other runs, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken, but... It's a box set of Ruro, Ru, Ruroni Kenshi. Kenshin. You've been watching this all day? That's a yes, then. You doing okay? Hmm. You said that in E3, too. Don't remember the other others because of the skip feature. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I could have remembered him saying that at some point. So I didn't take that more as, like, malicious. There will be a difference. All right. I'll believe you. My day was kind of rough. Class is different, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I'm glad I get to see you again. Got called into the office, too. Ben and Mia were trying to get our responsibility for that outburst earlier when she tried to kill us. Evidently, that meant trying to throw me under the bus. Is what it is, I guess. Actually worked out my people skills. I need to deal with her and Ben. She won't be bothering us anymore. <laughs> Would not watch the bottom needle live. All right, well, we'll try to get through this. Pretty cool, right? Hmm. Olivia? I'm trying to watch. Oh. Can I stay? Mm. Alright, at least there's this. I'm gonna sit next to her, but Olivia's spread on the bed to the point that there's barely any room left. The little space that was open had already been taken by a small rat curled up against her. Looking around the room, there, there's no chair in sight. After giving myself a mental kick for why there isn't one. I kneel next to the bed, letting my arms rest on its ledge. 
Olivia grunts again, but otherwise focuses on the show playing on her laptop. I look at the screen and need to look away as several men are gunned down bloodily by an old-fashioned hand crank repeating gun. Didn't know Olivia was into this stuff. Made worse by the fact that the voices do well to convey the visceral pain they're experiencing. I push myself back up. Uh, on second thought, I'd probably reek right now, Olivia. I'm all sweaty from snow shoveling and I don't want to put you, put you through that. Another grunt. Though this time fall, there's a tinge of something else in it. I should head home so I can clean up. If you need someone to talk to, you can always text me, okay? Her head kind of bobs, but her eyes remain locked on the screen. With hesitant steps, I back away from Olivia and out the room. Oh, this is gonna fucking blow. <laughs> when I open the front door, I hear someone calling out from the kitchen. Yo, Inky! Leaving so soon? Damien's head hovers just over the refrigerator door. Yeah, I should start heading back. Really? The quick whap of his tail. The fridge is closed and Damien comes to me offering one of his prized soda cans. Olivia wasn't looking so hot when I checked in on her earlier. Aren't you worried about her? I accept the offered beverage with a nod. She's fine. She just wants some time alone. You think so? She's just been watching some old show, not giving anyone else the time of day. You're really gonna go home so soon? There's nothing I could really do, Damien. She's fine. She just needs to recharge and rest. Mmm. Well, all right. Sips his own so his own cola slowly, his eyes scrunching up in thought. Well, still, I'm gonna try and cheer up myself for a while. Damien style. As to prove his point, he crushes the can against his head. Vinny and I can do it. She'll be out and laughing in no time. Alright. She said she'll text me if she needs someone to talk to. Good to know. See you later then? Yeah, I'll be seeing you. I exit through the front and shut the door behind me. A few seconds later, it's locked from within. Next metro should be soon enough. I was instructed to show up at school that Saturday to clean up. And to my surprise, he was already there in the partially repaired hallway, with her arm in a sling. The janitor was there too, talking to the obviously injured girl and giving her a thorough explanation of what we were going to be doing. I cleared my throat loudly, drawing both of their attention. Ah, it took you long enough, Shades. I'm not repeating myself. I heard most of it, sir. Me, are you okay to work like that? Shouldn't you be home if you're hurt? Oh, I should be, yeah, but then Ben or Scaler would get on my case. And I just wouldn't want to shirk my responsibilities, yeah? Her smile is strained as she motions with her recovered arm. Eh, don't worry. Looks like all the serious work has already been done. Save for the set of lockers still on the floor. From the looks of the hallway, most of the serious damage has been dealt with over the month. The janitor rolls his eyes and holds a pair of br uh, push brooms. I take them both. Could you give her a dustpan, sir? I'm sure I can do this part by myself. Ah, thanks, Inko. With an affectionate pat on my back, Mia moves to the wall and leans against it. Is this the Mia route? Oh, God. I guess that's where she wants me to push all the trash to, then. I'm glad she's also thinking ahead. While the janitor goes to fetch a dustpan for her, I get to work. The next hour or so, I spend studiously pushing all the debris on the floor towards Mia. Every time I look up, she offers a smile and a thumbs up, and occasionally hear her cheering me on. This man is clearly not Inko. He would never act like this. this hashtag not my Inko. At least, I think it's cheering. Her voice and tone are hard to read at times. <laughs> this guy's one go. I always figured she was. She just naturally sounded sardonic. My arms are starting to ache once all the trash is ready to be scooped up. With the standing dustpan ready, all the trash is easily dumped into the large trash bin saloon. Oh, I'm sorry. I got like a little bit of a burp or something. Large trash bin saloon to us by the janitor. I just push pile after pile of trash into her pan, and Mia easily lifts and deposits them into the bin. All right, I ain't gonna take ten. When you get back, we'll be bringing these bins to the lockers out back. Wiping the light coating of sweat off my brow, I nod. Me and I take a seat in a nearby classroom while I get some well-deserved rest. We'd be out of here a hell of a lot faster if you just finished cleaning. Sorry, but I'm tired. You've had half a year of gym classes with Solly, and you're still out of shape? <laughs> Unbelievable. It's not my fault he pushes us too hard. I can barely recover between classes. He's the best damn teacher at the school. 
If he can't help you, nobody can. Why do you like him so much? He gives his respect only to people who earn it. People like me. You don't think anybody else at school deserves respect? Nah. Is that a coin? Suddenly I'm feeling very fearful. And maybe even a tad hungry. Everybody's willing to betray each other at a moment's notice. Only reason that doesn't apply to me is because I put the fear of God into people. I'm not about to let my graduation plans be ruined because some cunt thinks they're hot shit. You actually have plans after graduation? None that involve any of you. I'll be long gone by the time this place falls apart without me. What about Ben? Aren't you two... Ding! I simply pull out my phone and check the notifications. What? Wheels chatting you up? No. I got a text from the school. Looks like they released the monthly newsletter. Follow the link to the text message and it takes me to PDF copy of the newsletter. You wanna hear any of this? Sure, read it, whatever. Alrighty then. <clears throat> Good morning, Feather Tales. This week we're having the following announcements. Skip anything related to studying or our lazy ass sports teams. Alright, uh, hmm. Oh? To all your students, you're invited to St. Hamon's High School's 201M 2023 BC Winter Formal. Immerse yourself in the serene beauty of the wintry night sky with music, food, entertainment, and much more. We'll also be hosting a special memorial for one of St. Hamon's finest teachers, who have recently passed Mr. Trent Yedekin. And will take place at the Volcadera Convention Center on Friday, December 15th from 7pm to 10pm. Tickets for the Winter Formal are now on sale online or in the Miss Procklings class in room 211. $15 for one and 30 for couples. Please read the event dress code to know what will and will not be allowed for the formal. Have a great weekend. Go Feather Tales. You didn't have to read that last part out loud, idiot. Sorry. A few more moments of silence pass. You planning on going? Yeah, after your lazy ass is done with the rest of the cleanup. No, I mean going to the Winter Formal. Absolutely! It's one of the few things here worth doing. And I know Ben was looking forward to it, too. Working night and day to get things ready. Oh man, organizing that whole thing and not courting Mia the whole night? I hope he can take it. In any case, my mu muscles feel noticeably less sore than they did before. As I stand up to stretch, Mia makes a show of groaning and exacerbation. Finally! Now go finish so we can go home. Finish? Gotta move the new locker in, dumbass. Shoot, forgot about that part. I spend another half an hour moving the filled trash bins while Mia serves as a kind of moral support. All that's left are the lockers. I kneel down by the freshly unpackaged metal lockers. My hands brace at their base. Urgh! For a moment, they don't budge. Come on, shades. I exert all my strength in my legs. Urgh! Come on! starting to feel them rise. Oh, come on. I'm focused on the task of lifting and notice me leave my peripheral vision. Huh? The weight of the locker seems to vanish as they rise easily. Now that I'm not straining against the heavy weight, I can look to the other side and see Mia easily handling the majority of weight of the lockers. She must have taken some painkillers during our break. She's handling the weight with both her arms. Sweet, we're done. Are you okay, your arm? Go get the janitor shades. Not too long after, a chaperone examines our work and lets us go. Yeah, good job, Inko. You got fucking plated. Her arm was fine the whole time. Me and I are both escorted out of the building by our school security guard. And she wastes no time in rushing towards the school parking lot and peeling off in her ex exceedingly loud hot rod. I'm left alone in the metro station. As always. Simco? No, this is this isn't even Simco. This is dumbass co. I'm exhausted. There's so many hours of heavy lifting, all I want to do now is fall asleep. I originally wanted to go and visit Olivia after detention, but since I was the only one doing any work, it took forever. Stupidco. Correct. And honestly, I'm a mess. Definitely don't want to show up there looking like this. I'm stretching my limbs out to fill the rest of the bench. A familiar shade finds a spot beside me. Good afternoon, Inko. Withholding my groan of pain, I force myself back upright and turn to the older whale. Hey, Mr. Ferris. What's up? I feel I should be asking you that. 
forgive my bluntness, but you look out of sorts. My mouth opens to tell him about detention. But I shut it. The audit. The hall. Oh, uh, you know, just had a busy morning, sir. The whale bellows his own groan. Yes, I suspect we all have. Had a dreadful meeting this morning. Positively dreadful. But what for? As I shut in contemplation. Reopening after a moment. Suppose it's already public knowledge. Many of the schools in the district have some formal gala or other event coming up. Of course, since the students are still under our care, there are strict guidelines for these. Frankly speaking, it was a meeting spent thinking of follies of youth, Mr. Nino. It chuckles at his own joke. Once again, I'm reminded of the formal. I'd love to take Olivia to it, but would that be too much? We aren't exactly dating, after all. Well, maybe we are. I didn't confess. It's not like in the movies. Maybe I need to reread the article on, relation on situationships. Mr. Nito. Sorry, I was lost in thought. Yes, I can see. What's on your mind? An awkwardness settles in my stomach. It'd be weird to just vent my problems to someone I barely know. But on the other hand, this is Liz's uncle. Plus he's a lot older. I'm sure he has some good advice. It's at least worth a shot. I wanted to ask Olivia to the dance, Mr. Ferris. Miss Holford? Well, I think she's a fine lass I go. I know, it just... I don't know if she'd want to go. Left unsaid was the reason for her current mood. But thankfully, Mr. Ferris understood the unspoken half, as he gave a solemn nod. I see. I've been in your shoes before, Inko. Which, by the way, they don't have in my size, regrettably. Over the years, I found that when my wife was feeling down, fresh air helped bring her spirits back. Fresh air? I mean, Olivia... <clears throat> I mean, Olivia has been cooped up in a room for two days. And likely for a lot longer, since she's without a wheelchair. <sighs> I hope it's repaired soon. Yes, but a date of some kind. A chance to really stretch her li... <clears throat> I mean, some time to stop and smell the roses, so to speak. Best idea I've heard so far. Plus, we haven't had a date yet. Could take her out somewhere. If it goes well, I could ask her to the formal right after. Even make it a surprise for her. But, where would I take her? I don't really know Valcadero that well, sir. The older man grins and laughs. And, and, grins and, eh. Damien wasn't kidding about those teeth. How fortuitous of you, then. That I may have the perfect date spot for you. Bringing up a positively tiny suitcase, Mr. Ferris reaches inside and withdraws a slip of paper. Every year, I bring my wife here so that she can enjoy the winter night while staying warm. I'm sure this would be to your liking. I take the sheet and scan it over. It's a flyer for the Volcadera Pier, with an event list right beneath it. A date on a pier? You can see a multitude of things to do there just from the photos printed on the page. Games, food, even some carnival rides. It's perfect. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. The smile widens, but it contained my urge to flinch. Think of it as my thanks for helping me with the fashion advice. Before I can think of more, I notice that my stop is coming up. I stand up and nod gratefully to Mr. Ferris, already reaching for my phone. I figure I'll ask Olivia now, and we can decide on which event to go to once she has her chair again. I spent all of Sunday combing over the paper Mr. Ferris had given me. I wanted a date to go perfectly, which meant outlining an itinerary for the day. When I told Olivia, though, she seemed reluctant to go. She was really down in the dumps. It only makes my conviction to take her all the stronger. I trust Mr. Ferris' advice. He's married, after all. After an entire evening of back-and-forth texting, I was able to convince her to go. She said her new chair was coming Friday night, meaning that Saturday was the perfect day for our date. I spent the entire week looking for romantic things to fill our date night with. Still had to suffer through classes, which felt pointless without Olivia or Yadig in the round. I'd finished mapping out the pier date by Thursday. However, that same day I got an email notification. Apparently one of my favorite influencers online was going to be host a live event in Volcadero Mall this week, after some last minute booking changes. Only problem that it's on Sunday or er, Saturday, the same day as our dates. The more I thought about it, the more I thought Olivia would prefer to go somewhere indoors, especially with the cold. Damn it. Inko. <sighs> Great. 
Plus, you wouldn't have to move around too much. It's the second day, uh, second Saturday of December, and the cold is starting to pick up. A good thing I changed plans because I highly doubt she'd enjoy being forced out into the cold air more than necessary. Gotta go. Got uh, got the work, so I gotta head out. Wish you strength in these bad endings. Be worth it for the ending. For luck. All right. Hope your work goes well, Windblown. I mean, this shit's not gonna go well. <laughs> later the IRL stream would be this afternoon meaning we could even get a good lunch before going at exactly 11 o'clock in the morning I knock on the door to the Payne household Damien opens the door though I can't I can tell he's a little worse for wear as soon as he recognizes me though he perks up Inko what's going on amigo you here to hang N no I'm here to see Olivia for our date didn't she let you guys know I was coming over to pick her up I have a date planned for today. No, she didn't. Olivia's not really mentioning much of anything these days. Hasn't been all week. Oh. Well, stop letting the heat out. Come on in. He ushers me in and shuts the door, rubbing his arms to regain the lost warmth. Olivia's still not feeling better? Damien brings his index finger up to the end of his snout. Remember how cute she was? Cute and talkative in E3 and E4? Oh yeah, no, this is gonna be really fucking depressing, I can already tell. Quiet, she can hear us. Damien looks around the room real quick before turning his attention back to me. No, she's not. I said Vinny and I would try to cheer her up. It didn't work. She would just ignore us, staring at whatever she was watching. For hours. Yeah, she's not even coming out for food. At least leaving some by our door, but I've never seen her this bad. Is it alright if I take her out then? No, please do. Please do. It's probably exactly what she needs right now. Alright. I go to knock on Olivia's door. When there's no response, Damien waves me to go in anyway. As before, Olivia's on her bed in a similar position to when I saw her last. Hey, you still want to go to the event? Mm. Come on, you wanted to go earlier. You need some fresh air. Mm. Mm, okay. She gets up, straightening her shirt out, while I looked away to afford Olivia her dignity. I didn't fail to catch the indented marks from her sheets on her scales. Where are we going again? Valkaldera Mall. Figured we'd watch something together. So, where's your new ride? She gestures across the room. Fire door lying on its side, a large unopened box. When I realize what she means, I look back to her in bewilderment. Really? I told him I'd get around to it sometime. Olivia shrugged, looking nonplussed about it. Mm, she's up. It's something. I sigh and go to open the box. It's closed tight, with tape. You got a knife? Olivia bares her teeth and rolls her tongue over the sharpened over her sharpened incisor. Oh boy. It doesn't take long to assemble Olivia's new chair. It looked pretty identical to the old one in all honesty. I hold the chair steady next to her uh, bed for her. Alright, ready for the maiden voyage? Olivia rolls her eyes at my lame joke, but I still see the tiniest smile she tried to hide. She slides carefully into the seat slowly correcting herself and adjusting her legs to properly rest on the footrests. I release the handlebars and Olivia takes her wheels in hand. The small grin is there again as she handles the wheels slowly, pushing and tugging them. It takes me a moment to realize she's actually testing the chair. To me, it looks like she's silently dancing to a tune only she hears. Finally, with a nod, Olivia looks at me. Alright, I'm ready, Inko. Nothing. Nodding back, I hold the, open the, her bedroom door. I wave to Damon as we leave, though Olivia doesn't seem to even see him. He waves back still, even tossing me a thumbs up for luck. Mr. Ferris was right, as even in the cold air I could see Olivia's spirits slowly return. Can't wait to get to the mall now. I'm actually going on my first date. Volcadero Mall is a pretty large shopping center, nested in between the skyscrapers of the city. Above the first three floors of the department stores and restaurants, you can see about another dozen for office space, all looking down on the traffic below. Working here must be pretty convenient. 
This place had an apartment building built and you never have to leave. Part of that has a certain allure, but thinking it also sends a strange feeling of dread. Man, this is boring. The event is between the food court and the cinema. It's supposed to be a two hour meet and greet where you would hand out some merch and let the audience participate in a live review of a movie. But it's been a while and we still haven't started. The area is crowded with dozens, maybe even a hundred other people waiting for Hank. The other attendees are not exactly the best when it comes to looks, or smells for that matter. Bail. Bail right now, Inko. F uh, fix the date. Do it, you motherfucker. Most are either on their phones or look like they're about to pass out in their chairs. A few of them talking among each other, albeit very obnoxiously loud and spirited. Yeah, let's go with that. There's no fixing it. You've chose this, unfortunately. Olivia and I were barely able to uh, beat the lunch rush. The remains of our Chinese fast food lie in a pile on our table. The event should have started half an hour ago. Where's Hank and File? I just loved his reviews, and he has a seriously good eye for taste and gives excellent commentary. In fact, that's partially why I thought Olivia might want to meet him just as much as I do. If we're lucky we can get some great feedback on our work. If he shows up. So, Olivia? Shifts her gaze to me. Have you been doing all right? Mm. She glances my way and notices my frown, opting a reply with an actual answer. Yeah. At least she spoke up this time. Even on the ride over, you pretty quiet. Quieter than usual, I want to add on. She's mostly back to one-syllable sentences. It's like the beginning of the school year. I'm getting a bit concerned. I want to broach the topic, though. Should I even? I think so. State's meant for her, after all. Just need to get past those walls of hers. I gently grasp the idle hand that rests on her trailer's armrest. I finally get a response from Olivia as her eyes widen and a hue of red graces her cheeks. Olivia? I feel her fingers curl softly around my hand. Yeah, sorry, Inko. I just... I've been thinking about a lot of stuff. I start to feel more confident as she lets down the emotional wall between us. What's on your mind, Livy? She scowls at the nickname. Don't use that, Inko. Uh, uh, sorry. But what's been troubling you? She wanted so badly to be loved. <laughs> My heart. It's here. I can give it. But I've chosen the bad route. <laughs> her hand clenches, and I can feel the tension radiating from her. Biting back my wince of pain, I simply smiled for her. When's the last time you painted? It's been a while. Just haven't felt like it. Even if I did, I wouldn't be able to actually paint anything. You're quitting painting? I didn't say that. I just don't have it in me right now. I might again, sooner or later. You don't have it in you? Hmm. Everything just seems like a pain right now. Doesn't have it in her. Damien mentioned she hadn't even left her room at all this week. Everything? Yeah. Is that what you didn't bother with? My eyes wandered to her wheelchair. The one I had to put together for her. Only means of leaving, and it was left unopened until I arrived. That doesn't really make a difference. It's the first time you've been able to leave the house after a whole week. Isn't that good? She shrugs. It's nice to get some fresh air, I guess. No desire to do anything. I think to ask if that meant this date with me too. I just bite my tongue. The rest of the leftovers are too cold by now. Isn't something supposed to be happening? Uh, yeah, it should be. What the heck is Hank and File? But it'll be worth it, you'll see. Promise. I reach my hand over to her and, her, and the hand she has resting on her arm. Olivia looks down at my fingers and then me. With a sigh, I hear her arms uncross and her fingers intermingle and lock. Fine. Her eyes turn back towards the stage. After a couple seconds, she leans in close to whisper. Um, what are they staring at? I've been trying to ignore it. But since we sat down, we've been getting strange looks from the other people waiting. With a raised eyebrow, Olivia glances around us at all the other people struck waiting for the main event to arrive. We're the youngest two here by far. Everyone else here is around a decade older. Some of the eyes are brimming with anger, though a lot more seem mournful. I guess it's just the audience he has. Eh, don't worry about them. 
Uh huh. The lady rubs her arm a bit nervously. What's so special about the guy that everyone wants to see so bad? He has really insightful reviews. For what? Um, here, I'll yank up his channel for you. I find this <clears throat> page on my phone and show it to Olivia. She scrolls through the first few pages of videos. The Lana's Witch School Season 6 finale is emotionally traumatized and masterpiece of storytelling. All these videos... Does he review anything for adults? Hey, you watch anime all day, you can't judge. I guess. Conversation sort of dies out. Ugh, these guys. As time goes on, I can't really ignore that there's a certain must they seem to universally permeate. To our side, a few of them argue loudly about the pro-segregation undertones of the saber-toothed king through slurred bites of food. Could they at least argue quieter? Or have enough self-awareness to not wear Lana, Lana's witch school school bags in public? Uh, whatever. Who cares about his fans? We're not here to see them. Maybe that's why the guy is so late. After all, if it were me, would I really be this keen on meeting these people? What am I talking about? He's the one who organized it. Of course that's not the case. Besides, he has a duty to his fans. So he probably just caught in traffic. Hope it's not something worse. At least Olivia's back to looking bored and not nervous. At least. Man. This was a mistake, wasn't it? Sudden chatter ripped him from my train of thought. Heads around us turn their attention down the mall corridor. Could it be? I lean forward to get a view. Sure enough, that's him. Iconic suit and all. There he is, yeah! The crowd erupts into cheers and applause at the sudden arrival. It's him, alright. What a huge, long sigh of relief. One that slowly but surely ties into his side of defeat as it becomes more visible, he's swaying side to side with every step. My forehead makes a loud thunk on the table. One of the empty cartons of noodles topples on its side. He's drunk off his ass! Nearly an hour late, and arriving completely inebriated. From my position, I see Olivia's gaze is also fixed in that direction with a single raised brow. How is he supposed to even host the event like this, let alone get Olivia out of the slump? This whole idea was stupid. I'm such an idiot. Whoa, he fell over! I'll go help him! I give up. Even from here, I hear the meaty thwack of a fist greeting someone's face. Oh my god. Let's just go. Wait, wait, I want to see this. Whatever. Many of the spectators are recording the drunkard host as he attempts to wrestle one of his supporters down with him. In seconds, mall security arrives, dispersing the crowd and pulling Hank off of the poor fan he's assaulting. My face falls into my hands, and all I can do is groan. <sighs> Why me? Why all of this? Okay, move it along. Nothing to see here, folks. The damn lies. I see Hank and Faust struggling against a handful of other security officers. <sighs> Once I muster up the energy, I stand from my chair. All the other patrons have started filing out at last. Start pushing Olivia away from the food court, though very slowly as the disaster that we witnessed weighs on me. So, that was our date? Olivia cranes her head back to see my lips flapping uselessly. Can't find any words to really say, so I just give her a glum nod. Her eyes pinch into a glare as she look and she looks back ahead. Foot traffic around us clears the way, giving us a wide berth. Probably from the glare Olivia's sporting now. Each leaden step I take, I try to formulate something to say. I have a backup plan. I knew that would happen. It was totally one of his skits. We're still at the mall. Each one I shoot down before it can come out of my mouth. Until. Olivia. Her head tilts back again, and her glare is now focused solely on me. Look, I'm sorry. I just... I wanted to share something I like with you. Her eyes roll up my words. I want to help you out of this. The mood you've been in. Snort blows through her nostrils and her head starts to move forward again. I I'll make it up to you, though. Her eyes lock onto me again. I mean, we're still here at the mall. What would you like to do? Her frown finally eases. Olivia's lips thinning into a line as she considers the offer. Maybe some shop you like. Or even that airsoft gallery we passed by. Just say the word. Her head returns forward and I feel every ounce of hope be violently ground to dust. No, of course I'd f- Sure. Whatever. My heart is in my throat from her words. 
Olivia looks back. While she is glaring, her silver eyes aren't as heated as before. Olivia. So, uh... Hmm. I consider what Olivia would really like most. Seriously, racking my brain here. There's not going to be any art supply store here. Even if there were, she's not going to get excited over a new brush set, I think. As we pass by the food court again, I catch Olivia's gaze shift slightly to the side. I follow, and... Of course, it's a game store. How can it be so silly to not know? Well, if that's what she wants. Hey, how about here? I'll let you pick out something you want. She nods once. Then, after, we could hit up the other place I saw on the way in. Looked like it sold Japanese import stuff. Another nod. On the spot, I start naming store after store, considering all the interest she had. I didn't remember where exactly all of them were. But I figured if I we just kept moving, I could find something at one of the shops here that'll cheer her up. Alright, it's something. I push Olivia in the game store. When I near the shelves of new releases, she veers right off into the used game section. Of course. We spend maybe 15 minutes in each store as I pour over the shelves, looking for something Olivia might like. Every time I think I ha have a good gift, I present it to, to Olivia, only for her flat and uninterested gaze to shoot it down. Video games, anime merchandise, art supplies, jewelry... Doesn't matter, she never seems to care about anything I offer to buy her. After an hour of rolling the wheelchair-bound girl around the mall, I'm starting to run out of stores to visit. I don't want to reveal how much I'm scrambling here, but it's hard when she's not passionate about anything. Olivia ended up getting some decade-old game for a handheld console for nine or seven ninety-nine. Would have been willing to get her something more pricey, but she seemed pretty keen on getting it. She reads the manual while I push us onwards through the mall. There are some people who do this regularly, mall walking. Maybe we should make it a regular thing. Olivia clicks the game uh, case closed and slides into her jacket pocket. For a while, we just walk a bit and see the sights. State is going all right, right? Despite the rocky start. I'm making it work. If Olivia is still glum as when she got here, she'll appreciate it. I hope. An idea crosses my mind. And this ought to brighten her mood for sure. Hey, Olivia. Mm. I've been meaning to ask you something. Everyone's been talking about school. I'm sure you're excited too. Mm. Do you want to go to the winter formal together? She turns her head back forward, letting her shoulders droop back down. Oh. Yeah? I'm not really interested. Not interested. Mm hmm. Because she shrugs. Just don't wanna. But you told Ben you'd give a speech for Attican. I've told Ben a lot of things. Does it really make a difference? It's gone. The only speech is just for everyone still to hear. And I don't care about them. Right. Form is one of the biggest events of the semester for couples to spend time with one another. And she's not interested in going. All the time I thought about what suit to wear, or what dress Olivia would look good in, or having fun and dancing together. And she's not interested. It's not supposed to be like this. We're a couple, right? Shouldn't she be putting in at least a minimal amount of effort? I've been trying all day to just get a smile out of her, to get her out of this mood. I've been stonewalled because of this pity party rut she's got herself into. Ooh. Bad way to think, Inko. Very selfish. <clears throat> and I can tell she's even starting to drag me down, too. Oh, hey, look at that. Inko's a sack of shit. <laughs> There's a pain in my chest. We're supposed to be happy. Well, I won't stand for it. I need to get myself out, and I need to get her out. Olivia. Hmm. I spin her chair around, kneeling down to her level while I carefully consider my words. I just want to watch the dance scene again. We will. Don't worry, we will. Few come to mind. Never anticipated being in this situation. But I do remember some words that stuck with me for a while. I count I follow. Frequently post lines and eagles with powerful messages. Ah, oh, fuck. This is going to be cringe as shit, isn't it? It's not over when you lose. It's over when you quit. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. Are you quoting something? I ignore her. One more for good measure. Believe in yourself. You're stronger than you think. Olivia... This is too far, Olivia. Huh? Come on, you don't want to paint anymore, you're not giving your family the time of day, and you don't want to go to the formal? What do you want to do? Am I in bed and mumble all day? I want to spend time with you, and I want you to be passionate about the things you enjoy. I hate seeing you like this. 
I don't want us to be bitter or sad when we're together. I know things are hard, but I'm here to help you. You can't just keep feeling sorry for yourself. Think of what Mr. Yadikin would say if he saw you like this. The name is bitter on my tongue. But if need be, we need you to be happy. To live on and smile. Her eyes widen in shock before falling in shame. For a moment she tenses. Her lips move, but no words come out. Seeing some actual emotion from her, I press on with my heated words. Ah, uh, this does not feel good. He'd tell you to stop stewing in your misery, wouldn't he? Her hands grip her new armrest tightly. Her retractable nails digging deep into the new leather. Pleather. My voice raises as I challenge her. Wouldn't he? Yes. She howls at me with her answer. Her teeth are bared and her claws are at the ready. But I don't back down. Then quit throwing yourself a pity party. You can work past this, Olivia. I know you can. You're better than this. I will. It's a roar that draws all eyes on us. Uh, literally. We both scan the area. Still in the mall with dozens of people now staring at us. All right, folks. Level A has my protection from this point onward. <laughs> Everybody, don your PPE. Things are about to get a little crazy. A little toxic. You don't want to get poisoned. Olivia's face is as red as mine. Either out of anger or embarrassment. I don't know which. But she coughs into her fist and clears her throat. S sorry Yeah, I will. Embarrassment it is, then. Thank you, Olivia. I know it may seem difficult, but I believe in you. You need to pull yourself up. You need to give that speech. We need to go to the formal. Right, Olivia? We we need to do it. It's it's us. We have to do this. This isn't for you, this is for me. <laughs> this is to get our happy ending. Yep. We take the abuse because there's the promise of something better. <laughs> but you just take your ass to the curb now. Yeah, this is not a this is not a good inko. Olivia deflates with a low sigh. Do you still not want to go? I'll go with you. Watches a hint of red crosses Olivia's cheeks again, and a smile begins to tug at my face. I manage to snap her out of her depressive mood, and we're going to the formal together. It's really the first big step. Hang on, I want to do something. I reach into my bag, taking out my DSLR and scooting next to Olivia. I point the lens towards us, making sure we're both in frame. Say cheese. Alright, let's see how it... Oh, come on, Olivia. Cheeky. Hey, come on. You gotta smile. I wait for a crude grin to form across her face before I snap the photo and immortalize the memory. Oops, must have accidentally turned the flash on. Sorry, Olivia. Ugh. That felt icky. The ride home was a bit quieter. Olivia would throw a look my way at times. The constant look made me curious, but I didn't press her about it. <laughs> icky? Oh, man. I'm gonna feel covered in grease later, I'm sure. Like, I need to take a goddamn shower. Olivia had said she was tired from all the excitement of the day, which I guess makes sense. Though there was a terseness in her voice. And eh, she's probably just excited to get home and play her new game. When I roll her back into the panes, she starts towards her room the second we step through the door. Damon excitedly looks over from the couch. Yo, welcome back! How'd it go? It went well. You're gonna feel like you swam through 10 miles of putrid fertilizer in the scorching sun when it's said and done. Very colorful. We had a lot of fun, didn't we, Olivia? I'm gonna take a nap. Alright, see ya. Oh, wait. I jog over to her side quickly. What? Uncle, oh, please, I'm f She tenses for a moment as I wrap my arms around her shoulders from her side. Attention lasts for all a moment, only as long as the embrace itself. Sorry, just, uh... Olivia's sigh of relief fills me with worry. I'm still new to all this, so... Her head sways side to side in the negative. No, I know, Inko. Bye. Ooh. Right as Olivia reaches her door, Vinny excitedly steps out. Oh, hey, Liv! Welcome back home! What were you doing in my room? Cleaning up! Whatever. Go away. But aren't you feeling better? Just... I wanna know! No, I... 
Do you want to play it? Fuck off. Yo, Inko, I thought you said things went well. What the fuck was that? Olivia? If anyone looks to his elder, like, he can make any sense of what just happened. Damien doesn't have an answer. Only the same stare is given to return his consolation. Nobody really knows how to react. Inko? Uh, I'm trying. I really am trying. Please, just... Forgive her, please. Just this once. Damien lets out a sigh. He gives me a nod in reply. Hey, Vinny. Uh, get your jacket. Why don't we take a trip to the gas station, huh? I'll get you a pretzel. Poor kid just nods and follows along. It's probably my cue to leave. Ooh. Give Damien a wave and head out the house first door clicking behind me man we'll get there we'll get there she'll be smiling again in no time it's december winter in volcadera bluffs is officially here okay so yeah we're talking about the formal she hasn't even been going to school all week i still visit after class i've been helping her come up with ideas for a speech tonight She's still going to the winter formal with me for Yadikin's vigil, despite her absences. Ben's been pretty concerned, though. He wants to know beforehand what Olivia's speech will be. Like, you can rush art. She'll have something in time. A check of the time says I don't have any time to try again. Tossing on the piece de resistance. Oh boy. It was worth it to see Vinny smile like that. But man, at this rate, I'm going to get jacked doing these chores for them. After a quick knock at the front door, I wait patiently for an answer. Where's Vinny when I need him? They use him bed for the night. Oh, I thought he was going to take that karate sleepover. Not with that cold, he isn't. Dang. I told him that would happen if he kept staying up so late. Staying up late? Last time I saw him was... Come on, that thought is just ridiculous. But could the kid have been affected by what happened? Oh, I don't know, Inko. Do you think? Do you think that little Vinny could have been affected by his sister figure telling him to fuck off? Hmm. Hmm. Let's think here, Inko. As the silence in the room drags on, I decide to speak up. So, uh, is Olivia getting ready? Um, I think so. I helped pick out a very nice dress for her, just you wait. She's probably taking a while to get it on. You know, how independent she is. <laughs> yeah, I do. Either way, I send Olivia a quick text that I'm here. <coughs> what was that? Olivia co comes out looking nonplussed by the viol violent noise. The brain cell was left in the other end and you can't expect much from him. Tipped over my lamp. Sorry. Dress is more restrictive than what I'm used to. That's restrictive? Dress looks simple, though it's quite vibrant in color. Akin to one of Olivia's past paintings. Oh no! Did it shatter? Is everything okay? It's fine. I'll fix it later. Olivia rolls around the couch and lifts herself from her chair to the spot next to me. Hey, Olivia. You look great. I wrap, around my, I wrap my arm around her shoulder and draw her into a hug. She kind of reciprocates it, at least letting herself be pulled in close before shifting back. Oh! <laughs> Bitch, have you worn a dress and stayed sitting? It fucking sucks. I'll have to try it at some point. So, when are we going? Any minute now, just wait. My arm falls away from her. I was kind of hoping I could hold her like Damien is holding Liz. Oh well. I can still do something else, for everyone here too. I draw my camera free from its new protective carrying bag. Ooh, good thinking, Inko. With a smile, I move to the middle of the room. First, I focus on Olivia. Inko, I... 
Come on, Olivia, you look so good in that dress. Her frown vanishes for a moment. With her hands... With her hands, she shifts her shins to cross them, and then lays his back against the armrest of the couch. Good. Beautiful. I turn the display to Olivia to show her, and she nods back in satisfaction. Her shot's done, and I switch to Damien and Liz. Liz has an embarrassed smile. Damien readjusts his hands from around her shoulders to behind her back. Her blush has finally reached her shoulders, and I can't stop... I can't help but think it's because of the new placement of Damien's hand low on her side. Man, what a way to open the set. Taking my spot back on the couch, I allow my DSLR to hang freely around my neck. I want it ready for any impromptu shot tonight. So, what's everyone's big plan for tonight? We're all talking at once, once more, but it feels subdued. The first is the buffet, obviously. I heard that they got one of those fancy fry cook guys that do all the fancy food flipping things. They didn't, Damien. They didn't? Then why did I hear about it? Because I asked you if you wanted to go to one of those restaurants. Oh. Some quality food sounds like a good way to start. Right, Olivia? Did she hear me? Olivia? Her silver eyes bore into Liz, but she isn't paying attention to that. After that, though, we're gonna dance. For the whole night. Yeah, I've been wanting to show Damien how to properly dance. I know how to dance. That isn't dancing, that's barely moving. The two laugh silently while they hold each other. Lucky you, Liz. There's that silence again. I nudge Olivia a bit with my elbow to signal she should cool it. She doesn't respond. Sophia rubs her knees, nervously humming to herself. Ah, look at y'all. I'm proud. Randy puts an arm around Miss Payne's shoulder. I remember when I took your mother out to the homecoming dance. My school didn't have anything like this formal, but it's pretty similar, I think. Oh yes, it's similar to the homecoming event, but we run out of a convention center and get to use the remaining funds we have for the semester. How fancy. Yeah, I've never heard of something like that before either. It's called watching money burn. Hey, <laughs> they're needlessly tense, aren't they? Relax a little. Mom, it'll be a fun night. For you. Liz clears her throat. Well, I plan on having fun tonight, Damien. Oh, boy. This is going to be way worse than ending two. <laughs> this is like nuclear levels of bad, bro. Oh, shit. Christ, you're laying it on thick. I, excuse me? Oh, God. The fake happy attitude trying to get his attention is annoying. Stop it. I just wanted to have a good night with Damien. If it matters so much, why don't you get a room already? In fact, get two so you can... S oh. Wow. Hmm. Okay. She never had a chance to give her a bitterness. Those walls she built didn't come down. They got reinforced. Yeah. Man. This is bad. In fact, get two so you can suck them off from the other from one over if you're so fucking thirsty. Olivia! Oh my god, holy shit! What is wrong with you? I stare at Olivia, unable to form any sentences. The sudden outburst caught me off guard. Liz pats the top of Damien's head. He takes a deep breath. Damien, it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not. Throws his head back and covers his eyes with his palms. I give up. I give up. You win. I'm fucking sick of it. For years I've had to put up with this. And this is my reward? You let 
me finish. I'm done. You're free to ruin your own life. But I'm not going to stand by any longer while you bring the rest of us down. Let us be happy. And throw your damn pity party somewhere else. Oh, damn, Damien blew up. I mean, warranted. He huffs roughly from his venting. The two are glaring daggers at one another now as Damien towers over her. Liz tugs at his sleeve, trying to draw him away from Olivia. I do the same with Olivia's arm. Randy has stepped forward too, following after Sophia. When Damien notices, he takes a step back. Alright, everyone needs to take a deep breath right now. Olivia, you don't talk to your friends or I guess that way. Damien, that goes for you too. If either of you continue, I can send everyone home right this instant. Are we clear? Once he assures everyone he understands the situation, he backs off as well. Damien takes a deep breath, carefully considering his words. Look, I have a date night to enjoy with my own girlfriend. It's senior year. Clearly things aren't going to change. Clearly you're not going to change. Randy's pinching his nose in frustration. Olivia looks ready to jump out of her seat next to me. Her claws are ready and Damien's frills are on full display. I feel like if I jumped, I'd actually get hurt. Never ask for your help, asshole. Oh, wow, you don't get it, do you? Olivia, the rest of us are talking about just kicking you out once we graduate. Is that what you want? Damien! He winces, realizing he just said something he really shouldn't have. Ah, shit. Wait! Guys, stop fighting! That macaroni art. Oh my god, Vinny. Vinny. <laughs> Vinny rushes out in the living space, carefully holding some poster paper. Vinny, dear, you should be in bed. Just a second, Mom. It's important. I think I have to dial back the fucking toad voice for this man. Vinny trudges up to Olivia, desperation in his eyes. Um, Olivia. I'm really, really sorry. I don't know why you got mad at me, but I want to make up it. Make it up. Look! He flips the poster page he was holding around. I made myself. Or made it myself. Because you're so good at already practice every night until I got this. So that's why you got a cold. Do you like it? Olivia stares at the macaroni display. Can't tell if she wants to smile or frown. You can have it here. So, is it okay? Did I do right? I can get that, uh, constructive criticism. <laughs> Child, unless you saw what hung in that macaroni, I feel like nothing. <sighs> I'm just hoping that somewhere deep down, like, Olivia can at least not tear into Vinny right now. Just give the boy, like, one thing before, like, everything else goes wrong. Please. Just barely hear Olivia mumble under her breath. Ah, <sighs> she can't. That's not hard. Thank God I'm the only one that heard that. Jake, I gently shake Olivia's shoulder to get her attention. She stares at me long and hard. We're gonna have to talk about this once we get out of here. Ultimately, I stare her down. She sighs and speaks. Yes, it's okay. They are. I don't know why you're so mad at me, but I won't do it again. I love you, big sis. Then he extends his arms for a hug. When she shirks back from... I... No. Are you still mad at me? It's hard to be called big sis when she was just told. They were thinking about kicking her out just a few moments ago. Things are calmer now, but... That can't be unsaid. Damien avoids my glare. He knows what he did, and how it made things worse. Even so, th things can be fixed. Go on. Around the room, everyone else's eyes are on Olivia, and whether she accepts or not. <sighs> Fine. Olivia leans forward and lightly hugs Vinny. Vinny's expression changes between a few before settling on happy. Simultaneously thrilled, exhausted, and at peace. When she stops hugging, she keeps her hands on his shoulders. Hey. I love you too. Oh. 
Oh man. Oh man, this is rough. This makes fucking E2 look like a cakewalk, man. <laughs> oh, I'll lower your dress, Olivia. Sophia jumps up to get some towels from the kitchen. Randy goes right to Olivia. Are you alright? Is Annie on you? Is everything alright? You said his spit wasn't potent until... Not now, Inko! Thank God you're alright. Sophia arrives with some towels. She starts rubbing Olivia with them before she takes them and starts wiping herself. But it's too late. The vibrant, garish, acidic music, acidic mu mucus has left its mark. Vinny is frozen in fear, covering his mouth. A lion of acid hangs from his nose. Outside, a horn blares, announcing the limo I had ordered has arrived. It's our ticket to leave this shit show. Olivia, we should go. Are, are you okay? Vinny, what did I tell you? Stay calm. She's alright. Listen, you should go to bed, alright? Okay. Just... He picks up the macaroni poster, hiding it behind, hiding behind it and slowly inching towards Olivia. He inches closer, step by step, slowly reaching out to give it to Olivia. When she notices, she stops scrubbing to violently jab her head in his direction. That music's not good either now, is it? Are you serious? Just go the fuck away already! My god, you're disgusting! I'm sorry! I'm sorry, I was just so excited and I had to work hard on it. I'm sorry, I got this. Please take it. Olivia slashes forward, ripping the page to shreds. Loose pasta bits clatter across the floor. Vinny stands holding the small edges he's left with, frozen in place. Go the fuck away, you annoying little shit. Olivia Halford! It's too late. He's gone. I hear his breath catch and he sprints to his room. He doesn't cry and doesn't wake up. How did this happen? Dear. I'm on it. Sophia falls Vinny to the depths of the house. Olivia. Does this mean she's not allowed to go to the formal with me? What? Does it? Randy's coloration is turning a deep shade of crimson. His hands curling into fists. No. You should be out of the house for a few hours. Randy turns away from Olivia. Just go already. I don't care. Olivia moves herself in, uh, to her wheelchair and right out the front door without looking back for even a second. The door's left ajar behind her without a care for the rest of us still inside. Um, a ride is here. Are you guys ready to... Uh, you know what? I think Liz and I can just have her date night elsewhere. Is that alright with you? Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just... Tense. T tense. The Damien nods. You two should go. Now. Are you sure? Yes, he's sure. Have a fun fucking night. Alright. Bye, Randy. He's on the floor now, picking up the torn remains of po uh, poster and pasta. Oof. I'll have her back before midnight. Please do. Scratch the back of my head. I wonder if there's anything else I can do in this situation. For what it's worth, uh, Olivia's been having a really bad couple of months and just stressing her out. And Vinny really should have stayed in his room if he was sick, you know? So, sorry if you're letting all the cold in. Oh, sorry. As the door closes, I hear Randy mutter to himself, Damn it, Olivia. Damn kid. Oh god, just be quiet, Inko. Yeah, I can I can handle Inko uh, throwing everything away and being an asshole. It hurts to see the gator fall this low. It's cold out. Biting wind blows through the neighborhood. Heading me by the curb, the limo waits with an open door inviting me in. The driver's by the trunk of the limousine, probably putting Olivia's chair away. Oh, can you? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to like, I'm, I'm like looking for the exit doors now. Like how, how's my out here? 
And we're all gonna enjoy a luxurious ride to the formal together. Well, more room for us. Besides, not all is lost. Livy and I will have a great night together. Despite the rocky start, I know it. Oh, you were such a dumbass. This is over. I climb into the heated limo, taking the time to fully appreciate the high quality interior. Looks just like the pictures. Very nice. Just gotta remember it's all for the happy ending. Yep. Plush velvet seats and a mini fridge filled with high quality sodas. Right at the foremost, sh some would kill for. Olivia sits close to the front. I sit beside her and the door sh uh, behind me shuts. I lean forward, opening the mini fridge and revealing the treasure trove held within. Olivia doesn't seem that impressed. She's back to just staring ahead. Like the last 10 minutes didn't happen. Hey. You alright? No. Why would I be? She doesn't elaborate further. She moves one of her hands, revealing one of the dried acid stains on the dress. It's not pretty. Pick out one of the cream sodas and crack the cap off. Looking at the fizzy liquid within the bottle, I consider what to really do. While well, the start of tonight had been... bumpy. You could still finish on a high note. Bring the bottle to my lips. I'm sure some sugar would help get the brain running better. As we round a corner, she takes it from me. Olivia must have thought similarly she chugs the creamy drink down in a single long gulp. She vets the bottle drop to the floor and then turns to look me in the eye. I want to go home, but... Her voice peters out and she stifles a sob. Once more the stain is on display. A thought comes to mind. Withdrawing my phone, I do a quick check of my saved up allowance. I'm sure it's enough, so... Don't worry, Olivia. Her head tilts in confusion, but I smile. Consider it an early Christmas present, okay? What? Tonight has to be special. Not just for me, but for Olivia as well. So some extra money thrown around is nothing if it'll help her. She'll probably want to turn it down, but the alternative is going to be that stain on her. With as much care as possible, I move towards the front of the limousine until I can kneel just behind the driver's window. Yeah, I don't... In this one, Inko really seems to be using the whole money boy thing. Like, thinking throwing money at the problem is going to help it. I give the glass a gentle tap, and the chauffeur opens the window. Yes, we'll be arriving at the convention center in 24 minutes. He goes an awful man, anyone. I'd actually like to request a short detour. In the rearview mirror, I see him quirk his eyebrow. You'll be charged extra for gas and time, sir. I, I'm sure I have enough. That's fine. Could you take us to the Penthesileas? It shouldn't be too out of the way. Very well. The window closes and I slowly move back to Olivia. My foot catches on her discarded bottle and I stumble over her, my hands bracing around her head. Honestly, it could have been a smoother move like Damien's, so I ran with it. Inko, what did you do? Just a little change in plans. You don't mind, right? No. I just want to get through the night. The rest of the ride was spent in relative silence. We go through a few more sodas and watch as the passing trees outside give way to the highways and buildings of the city. All lit up in time for Christmas. At night, the skyline is dazzling. Our ride slows down as we move from the highway to the streets. The first stop of the night is just ahead. I turn to Olivia and see her eyes shut and her breathing even. Hey. Placing a hand on her shoulder, I give Olivia a gentle shake. Hey, wake up. We're here. Mm. Oh. Where is here? One of my favorite department stores. This is where I get all my jeans. We can get you a nice new dress in no time here. Okay. I'm doing way better than that one, okay? Sophia made this for me. <laughs> Inko is special. Uh, sorry. Y you know what I mean. <laughs> even, even the game had to come out and be like, Inko, man, what are you doing? <laughs> By the curb, the driver has already set up Olivia's chair. Alright, you ready? Olivia doesn't respond, but she takes my hand when offered. The outside of Pencilia's is a gauche, silver-plated building stretching tall into the sky as an impressive monument to commercialism. I'm surprised she hasn't gone off on Inko yet, you know? But the inside is even more stunning as always. Just like in the last buildings, I've been last buildings I've been to, 
It's a white and orange department with sharply dressed managers keeping a watchful eye on the customers. Not for shoplifters, but for an opportunity to jump in and help a shopper find out, uh, find what he or she is looking for. She doesn't have the will or energy anymore. I guess until Inko like fucking blows up on her, she just isn't gonna care. I have to sleep. I'll catch up on the pod for E1 in the epilogue. Good luck going through it. All right, Jen, rest well. Hopefully, it won't be too much longer here. Should be getting towards the end of it. I don't think we're going to have much of an after action after the formal this time. <laughs> I feel like we're probably going to be going our own way. This one has a bar in the middle of the display floor, and on the upper level sections are cordoned off for various business parties and wedding receptions. What do you think, Olivia? Think we'll find something perfect for you? I don't know. One of the managers glances at us. He winces the split second he catches the glimpse of the acid stain, completely understanding her predicament and leading a polite hand to where we need to be. The women's clothing section is so large it stretches from the back of the store all the way to the front of the first floor. The other half being makeup, perfumes, bags. The men's fashion is on the second floor and in the basement level, where they also sell furniture sets. See anything you like? I don't know. Her gaze roves over numerous racks of dresses. Think of it like an extension of your art, Olivia. Only you're the canvas. Olivia rubs the last sleep out of her eyes, breathing in deep. <sighs> All right, never gotten a fancy dress from a store before. She carefully rolls herself through the aisles. <laughs> like the uh, dino <laughs> models here. Occasionally she'd get up on her knees to better inspect a particular dress. I follow close behind, giving bits of advice. After all, I know fa fashion far better than her. Eventually, Olivia stops. She picks one of the dress from a rack, staring long and hard at it. A lavender ball gown, from what I can tell. Simple, conservative. Um, this one's kind of pretty. Plain. She looks up at me expectantly, holding the dress over. Oh god, Inko's gonna be a dickhead. Really? There's a cocktail dress right there. You know, the kind that's perfect for a full night of fun? Why don't she see it? Isn't she an artist? Jeez, I didn't know that all that time alone had made her skills get this rusty. I know you want to have a good night tonight like I do. Don't worry, Olivia. I'm here to pick up the slack. Oh, God. Uh, it looks okay. But are you really sure? I think so. She takes a closer look. Ugh. That would be her seeing the price tag. Even a hoodie here can run you nearly a grand. Most expensive thing I wear is actually my socks. Hey, don't worry about the price. If it makes you feel better, I can find you something a bit cheaper. Alright. Okay, Inko, now's your time to shine. Now's your, now's your time to manipulate. I'll be right back. Just one moment. I stride with great purpose through the department. Scanning everything, f uh, for, uh, scanning everything for what would look great on Olivia. Occasionally picking one up. Seriously, my element. In moments, I return to Olivia with a careful stack of dresses. Whoa. It's gotta be one of these. I just know it. They all look pretty good. Which one? There's some changing rooms over there. Come on. It'll be like you're giving me a little fashion show. Do I have to? I nod. She groans. Alright. Wheeling her there, the sales associate pointed us at the largest of the rooms at the end of the hall. Now all that's left is to decide on which dress. She tries each dress on and then rolls out for me to see. They all look pretty darn good. I snap a picture of more than a few, making sure to get all the uh, get that cute smile of hers in each one. But none of them are really stopping me in my tracks. Inko, this is the last one. Olivia's shaky tone must be a good sign. I said the best one as the last of the pile, Olivia. Good night, everybody. Good night, Jeremy. Sleep well. She still hasn't come out, though. I don't, uh... Could you come and check, then? I shrug and pull the curtain aside. Ooh, yes. She does not like that, dude. Come on. Satin finish. Perfect fit. Really brings out all of Olivia's best features. She's still wearing the little... <laughs> Olivia, you look amazing. I think that's the one. You sure? This is a bit... Revealing. Have confidence, Olivia. Ugh, this is... Olivia blew up, but we're really just seeing the sleaze... Sleazy side of fucking Inko here, and it's... Ugh, they're both... 
equally not comfy. Her head turns away, but that small, precious, and genuine smile of hers finally returns after being missing for so long. I was worried I'd never see it again. But just as it appears, the smile falls away as something gets caught in her gaze. Um, this is more expensive than the one I wanted. Oh. Hey, don't worry about the price. I'm paying for it. Yeah, I think I like the uh, white one more. Olivia doesn't respond. She just starts rolling to the checkout. Miss! We turn. It's one of the managers, carefully holding out the acid-stained dress on one arm. Well, what about your old dress, miss? Throw it out. I don't care. He glances at me. I nod. All right. Politely bows and heads off to dispose of the room claw. Her E4 dress is perfect. Even her E3 one was better. Yeah. Yeah. Her gray eyes linger on the ruined dress until it vanishes around the corner. I hope this is worth it. I'm gonna be pretty late. Yeah, we're taking a whole new meaning to fashionably late, aren't we? No, we aren't that late. It's only been... That was an hour? Oops. Guess we got a little carried away, huh? Yeah. I hurriedly pushed Olivia to the register. Thankful that the cashier saw our... Our harried... I think it's supposed to be hurried expression. And rang us up quickly. The limo's waiting outside for us, and in no time at all, we're speeding off to our true destination. Along the way, I finally have a moment to think. Finally, we're on our way to the big date night. And once we're there, we'll have plenty of time to eat, dance, and... He had a speech. Oh crap, I nearly forgot with all the excitement. Hey, Olivia. Mm. What do you have ready for the speech you're going to give in, uh, to honor Yadigan? Oh. I didn't do it. Didn't do what? Anything. I don't have a speech. The admittance sense a chill through me. You don't? No. Nope. But you said you would. I messaged you like three times reminding you. I know. And I didn't do it, okay? Oh, man. I don't think Yadikin would care much either. I feel something heat up inside me. Can't you at least stick to her commitments? Okay. Okay, okay. Yadikin was our teacher, but he was really important to you. Bit of an understatement. You can definitely do this from the heart. Yeah. Just do this, Olivia. For Yadikin and for me. Whatever. Thank you. I know it'll be great. People will love you for this. The rest of the ride will leave Olivia to think about her speech. You know what? Ben can probably help her here as well. Knowing him. Alright, we got a plan. This is going to be great. Oh, this is going to be so fucking terrible. <laughs> the shining moment finally comes as our limousine pulls into the open carport in front of the venue. We wait in deafening silence for another minute or so before the passenger door opens wide. Taking initiative, I step out into the open as the driver sets up the wheelchair with a flourish. The original plan was to have the ride be a set piece, and we'd wow the crowds waiting to get in with our grand arrival. Given how late we are though, everyone's already inside. I ease Olivia into her chair gently. Have a good day. Good evening, sir, madame. Before the driver turns away, I shake my head palming him the necessary tip. The sound of the car door shuts behind me, and I push Olivia onwards to the convention center. Before I take Olivia's chair, I notice her pulling at her dress's skirt. Uh, what's wrong? Her face is red, and she's shaking. It's, uh, drafty, that's all. Drafty? I fist her by the leg slit, and now I see that she's holding the hem together. Oh. But don't worry, once we're inside, it'll be just fine. I start to push Olivia to the sign-in table waving to the person manning it. It's Ben, who finally sees us approaching. Well, it looks like you two made, uh, made it in just before close. Whoa! Olivia, your dress! Looks good, right? Ben looks between Olivia and I before nodding and smiling a shaky smile. Yeah, it's fantastic, Olivia. You look great when you speak tonight. Oh, about that. Uh, I was planning to bring this up. Hmm? Uh, Olivia actually didn't uh, prepare as well as she sh could have. You know, from where I'm standing, I can really I can't really see Olivia's expression. Ben looks worried as he looks at her. And not to worry, here. He pulls a sheet of paper from his clipboard and hands it to Olivia. Her fingers quake as she holds it. From here, I can see it. Half the page is rough notes and the other half is completely pre-written statement. 
Contingencies for contingencies. Oh, this helps so much. I had a feeling something like this would happen. And this should help, Olivia. Her head bobs, but she remains silent. Hey, Ben, about candid photos. This time I'm cut off by Ben. It's fine, Inko. And between you and me, the best place for shots is from the second floor. Thanks. Olivia and I are finally signed in, and Ben begins to help the last of the other late attendees. We move past the check-in, venturing deep into the halls of the venue. Ahead of us, an open set of double doors leads to the main hall. Near the side we enter lies several rows of, unoccup er, of occupied messy tables. The other half is re reserved for the dance floor. On the far side, a large stage for live performances. The dance floor is alive as pop music has started playing from the wall-mounted speakers around the area. Now that we're here, I don't think they'd take the winter part so literally. Drapes of white and light blue hang along the walls. All the table counterpieces look like crystalline snowflakes. Large chandelier has the icicles and the moon in the sky. We've read all of this before, so I'm just trying to get through it. Which comes to mind. Yep, true minlet dance. <clears throat> I wonder if I can make that happen. It would be nice. This isn't the only room, of course. Off to the sides are halls. Olivia's looking at the other exits, too. Well, we made it. Big fan of the music. I was expecting some kind of mood-killing Christmas music. What about you, Olivia? Hmm. Yeah. Maybe we should hit the dance floor. Or wait. I want to get a few photos before anything. This will be a night to remember for sure. Inko. Huh. The memorial. Oh, you want to go there first? Olivia nods her head gently and starts to push herself to one of the side doors. I let go of the camera around, hanging around my neck, walking with Olivia while we start to search for the memorial. Notice how she hasn't like taken really my hand at any point with her tail like she used to. Oh, Velvet, thank you for the follow. Big appreciations. The memorial room isn't hard to find. There have been zero hugs. Yep, this truly is the worst timeline. Zero kisses. Zero handholds, even. You know, not even with the tail. Just, like, the amount of times that we would hold hands. I think there might have been, like, one. It's a smaller room. Well lit and with little furniture. I want to send it. I want to send the girl to the, uh, that get her the therapy. <sighs> I wanted to fix her, but I needed to fix myself. On the far end, a framed picture of Yadikin and some of his old pictures from his classroom. Some from him, some from his other students. There's a few other students here paying their respects. Olivia taps my wrist with her tail, and I let go. I walk alongside her as we approach the portrait. I wonder where this is taken. It can't have been that long ago. He looks just like he did earlier this year. Been standing here for the last ten minutes. It's good the morning teacher is great as I had again, but... Olivia is just staring blankly at the memorial with a broken expression. In fact, it's nearly similar to when Ben and I found her after the school had told everybody. How long has it been since then? I noticed Olivia's hand resting idly atop the wheelchair's armrest. I placed my hand over hers. Are you feeling okay? She shakes her head in response. Can't stand around here all night, Olivia. Don't you want to go eat? She lowers her head. Just a bit longer. I watch Olivia purse her lips fiercely, fighting the urge to cry. After another minute, though, she seems to gradually return to normal. Okay, let's go. I grip her wheelchair and walk the both of us away from the memorial room. <laughs> Inko stayed along longer that time, but he definitely did not have good thoughts. After leaving the room, we wander around in search of the buffet. Several students with plastic plates roam around and point us in conflicting directions towards the supposed eatery. When we somehow end up back in the memorial room, Olivia resorts to going by a sense of smell. Sniffing her way down the long halls and past any distraction, we finally arrive at our well-lit destination. The sight is enough to make Olivia's jaw drop a bit. The huge buffet tables of meat, veggies, sides, everything that the senior class could ever want out of a meal. And since we're here after the rush, there's basically no lines. Of course, Olivia rushes right for the carnivore line. I may as well join her. As she peers at the piles of cooked meat, I consider reminding her not to drool all over it. Hey, don't drool on it. Ah, why, why? Don't mark the food as yours. That's how you sound. Very funny. I look back to catch the time and see something. Stanion. He stands in the doorway, leering in. 
<sighs> so much for going somewhere else for the night. Can't tell his expression from here, but when he sees me looking his way, he stares right back at me. We maintain eye contact for several seconds. And just as quick as he arrived, he's gone. And yeah, whatever. I have a dinner to enjoy with my girlfriend. I end up getting a well-garnished baked whitefish while Olivia, against my recommendation, stacks her plate with barbecue and sweets. Back in the main hall, we sit and eat next to each other at one of the tables near the back. Olivia's really going to town on that stack of ribs. How long has it been since she's really eaten something? I wait patiently while she continues her shameless display, only occasionally handed a few fresh napkins. I use the time to look around the main hall, and it doesn't take me long to notice a photography setup on the far side of the room. It looks like some me uh, staff member is taking pictures of couples and bachelors alike. Hey, Olivia, we should get her picture taken after you're done. She doesn't reply, instead focusing entirely on her meal. Now that I think about it, though, I have my own camera. We could just take our own pictures together, and I'm sure I know more about good shots than whatever 20-something college dropout is currently running the show over there. Screw it. Let's give it a try right now. I pick up the DSLR foam around my neck, fiddling it uh, with the f-stop to adjust for the unorthodox lighting. I raise the camera to Olivia as she finished gnawing on a rib. I snap the photo before she even realizes what's happening, and I look down at the display to witness my handiwork. Subject isn't perfect, but I think it's a f Seriously? Can it wait? But I'm just messing around. Can you let me do anything in peace? Relax, nobody's gonna see it. She grumbles adorably as she chucks the... Ugh. Chucks the plate into a nearby trash can. I look down at my plate. I'm pretty full, but it's only about half empty. She sits in silence for a few more moments, having also seen my plate. Hey, you gonna finish? As Olivia's voice trails off, I watch a tense expression cross her face as she lowers her head. Uh, hey, what's wrong? Sharp whistle cuts my date off before she could answer. Oh boy. Oh boy, this is just a cacophony of shit, isn't it? Boy. Turning around, I see it's Mia. In a dress. It's surreal to see her dressed up, but it's a pretty big event. I wave to her as she struts casually up to us. It's simple cordiality, and, I, and hopefully Mia returns it tonight. Well, 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 if it ain't my favorite pair of geeks. What in the hell are you up to? We're getting ready to take pictures? Why? Olivia rubs her wrists, staring holes through Mia. Oh, nothing. I'm just famished and figure my new best friend be willing to share a bite, yeah? Oh, sure, here you go. There's been a startling amount of moments where I just need to take a second and breathe. Worse before it gets better. Worse before it gets better. It's the mantra for this. Oh, how nice. How are you holding up this lovely winter night? Olivia's head jerks my way and leans close. What is she doing here? No, no, don't worry. We're cool. You're a friend? Since when? Didn't I tell you? We worked everything out. I didn't think you were serious. What's wrong with you? Stop being diplomatic, Olivia. I'm just making friends. She stares at me in bewilderment, still, still gently rubbing her wrist. I place a hand over it, massaging it as well. Don't worry, she's actually not that bad when you get to know her. She looks at me, afraid. I offer my best reassuring smile. Hey, you two can be great friends. I'd love to help you bury the hatchet here. Mia's eyes linger on Olivia as she continues to avoid her gaze. Eventually, she smirks and gives up, forking some fish into her mouth. You said pictures, right, Inko? Well, you got Olivia all gussied up for tonight. No weird she'd wear something like that on her own. I did. I picked out the dress, the best dress I could find. Looks great, right? Yeah, it really shows her off. Got a good eye for style. Hey, thanks. You don't look that bad either. Aw, oh, you're just being nice. How about you, Olivia? Like my get-up? We both turn to Olivia, who now stares down at the table with narrowed eyes. 
Come on, Olivia. She looks nice, right? I catch the faint glimpse of a scowl before deciding that prodding her might not be a good idea. Earthy Gator, you there? Olivia's scowl only worsens at me as words. Before anything bad can happen, I interject. Just leave her be for now. She's uh, thinking about the eulogy. Right. Well, shucks. I'm pretty good at being sappy and stuff. You are? Top of drama class, four years running, baby. Maybe I should give a speech for the poor old teach. I'm joking, I'm joking. I move to sit next to Olivia, resting a hand on her arm. She instinctively jerks away in response, but not enough to shake my gentle grip. It must be real gentle. It's alright. The speech will be fine. As long as you speak from the heart, right? Mia avert, averts her... Bleh. Mia averts her gaze as I gently comfort Olivia. From the heart. Yeah, sounds... Her head whips around, surprise written plainly on her face. Wait, you're doing an improv? In a manner of speaking, yes. But we got some help from Ben. Me with the dance scene all loop on the other monitor to counter this pain. It's right here. We can go do it later. I, I have I have to do it later. Because, like, this is painful. Mm. How's about I give her some speaking tips? You would do that? Not pro bono. Info ain't free, you know. Uh, right. Right, uh... Tonight is getting a bit expensive. That dress alone, while worth it, was cutting it close. Not to mention the additional cost to go to the Penthesilis. What do you want? Um, how about... I got this makeup assignment during winter break. I'll think Raptor Jesus. We're just gonna do that cool thing called not doing it, but... Hey, it's a great way for us to help each other, you know? Picking up right where we left off. Fair for a favor, perfect. Oi. Hey, I won't be good friends after this. The rest of the year just looks better and better. Yeah, it's a friendly gesture. No, no way. Olivia, come on. We know all the help we can get here. Plus, it's a great way to get you back into art. Like, a commission, right? And she's offering. Everyone wins here. It's best for everyone if we all forgive each other, isn't it? We just need to open up. Open up, Olivia. Come on, don't embarrass me. just punch after fucking punch, man. Oh my god. She hangs her head low. Crossing this bridge must be hard for her. Whatever. I take both her hands. Thank you, Olivia. Okay, I'll make it quick. Wait, hang on. This would be a great time to... I just want to get a picture of the occasion. What a great idea. Alright, let's save this moment forever. To friendship. Come on, Olivia, smile. Alright, quick lesson on how to make good shit up on the spot. You mean to captivate the audience, right? Right, that. We need the speech to be genuine. And it will be, assuming she can learn. Mia slides her chair next to Olivia, leaning in close for the lesson. She speaks low enough that I can't hear her over the dance music. Well, it's not advice for me anyway. On occasion, Olivia looks to me nervously. I give a thumbs up, always there to reassure her. I'm getting pretty good at the supporting business. She's not looking so hot. Must be the anxiety and pressure starting to get to her. Even in the pictures, I see her getting a bit nervous. I'm sure I'm taking a lot of pictures today. <laughs> Can you blame me? Maybe I could even make a photo series with these. My mind wanders to the dance music. The tempo has changed. Slowed. Eyes wandering to the dance floor, I see everyone has fallen into the slower rhythm. All of the dancers are having a great time. I even make out Liz and Damien in the crowd. Man, to be a dancing couple like them. I'm sure we could work something out. It's just a thing to get Olivia to loosen up. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Dance the night away with Olivia. Mia pulls away from Olivia and gives me a thumbs up. Hey, you good? Sure. Great. Thanks again, Mia. Don't forget my assignment, Inky. Uh, yeah. You can go now. Please. Hey, Olivia. How would you like to go dancing? Olivia brightens at the idea, but I'm not sure if it's really... It's to really go dancing or just to get away from Mia. Um, yeah, I would. Mia? <clears throat> Mia, I've been looking everywhere for you. Ben casually approaches our table and quickly takes notice of Olivia and I. Inko and Olivia, too? I'm glad to see you three are on speaking terms. 
Yeah, it's great how friendship blooms in unlikely places, isn't it? Well, I'm really impressed, Inko. You're doing great, man. Dude, if Ben's reassuring us, it really is over. <laughs> if he's saying we're doing good, it's it's donezo. Ben's gaze falls on Olivia, who bears an even deeper scowl now and has her face buried in her hands. Oh, uh, is she alright? She's not feeling very well right now. Right. Mmm. I just got this weird wave of deja vu. Huh. We're about to hit the dance floor together. Well, hold on. I actually need her to prepare the eul for the eulogy. What, right now? Well, yeah. I don't want anything bad to happen. Especially since this is a big event and all. Come on, Ben. We were just about to dance. Plus, I still have a few more photos I want to... That sounds like a good idea. I'll go. Wow. You can tell she fucking hates us right now if she's willing to go with Ben. I turn towards Olivia in shock, who seems to have miraculously recovered from her bitter mood and now glances at the both of us with a fierce gaze and a shaky smile. Yeah, let's go, Ben. I want to prepare some more. What? Well, why now? We still have to... No, no. Right now. I just... I want to go. Do you know what this ending is called? No. <laughs> I'm sure I'll... I, I'm sure it'll come to me. We can... <laughs> we can do all that stuff after the speech, can't we? Right now, I want to go work on the speech in private. I look at Ben with pleading eyes, but he shoots me down with a responsible stare. It's for the best right now, Inko. Free Attican, remember? Damn it. Why can't I just have a normal date night? Y yeah, okay. You can go, Olivia. Thanks. Without much hesitation, Olivia shakily rolls her way towards Ben, who begins to lead her through the crowd to the far side of the hall where the stage lies. Wow, looks like you're shit out of luck. No, it's fine. The eulogy is more important. Whatever you say. Though the air is filled with music, the heavy silence weighs between the surly girl and myself. Mia's elbow rests on the table as she stares off into the dancing crowd. Yay! She has a curious look on her face. A mix of contemplation and worry. Something I'd never really expect from her. Yeah? You actually know how to dance? What? A bit, yes. Why? Because I'm bored. And it's your only shot left tonight. Wait, she can't be- Are you asking me to dance with you? A grin spreads across her lips. One that unnerves me. No. Oh. You are asking me to dance. But the offer's gonna, uh, going fast. I might change my mind soon. Going once, going twice. Okay, all right. The red-scaled girl stands and starts for the dance floor. When I don't follow after, something sharp hooks the front of my dress shirt. It's the largest spine of her tail. And up close, I can see that it's been filed down to a dangerous point. Mia looks back over her shoulder. Come on now, Inky. At her chortle, the tail drags me up. I follow after, if only so that she doesn't damage my expensive shirt anymore. Mia's presence alone is enough to clear a spot for us on the dance floor. Turning to me, her hands land on and grip onto my shoulders. I place my own hands at her waist, respectfully just above the hips. It's surprising how easily Mia falls into the steps of a slow dance. I hadn't expected her to know how. Still, Mia's smile keeps me tense, so I keep to more simple steps. I think she notices my stiffness, though as the corner of her lips turned downward. Mia, what did you tell Olivia? My words work as a distraction, and Mia's mouth purses in thought. Oh, you know. Woman talk. Dino woman talk. Oh. I give Mia a twirl, and thankfully she tucks her tail so she doesn't stab me with one of her spines. Her hands land on my shoulders again, and she glares at the unexpected move. But her dance continues. Don't think you'll pull that kind of move with Olive Girl, Inko. Har. Her grin is back. Don't know what you even see in her. I thought you two would bury the hatchet, Mia. She shrugs and puts me into a twirl. Maintaining my balance, my hands instinctively take her hips this time. Her grin grows wider. Just saying. It's a miracle you've gotten this far. But you have, and I'm impressed. What's that supposed to mean? It means that fling of yours is less stable than one of those morons in Drama Club one day sober. 
Everyone can see it plain as day. You don't think we're a good couple? <laughs> like hell I do. That bitch is delusional. Has no idea how the world works. She's picked her fantasy and she's mad about reality every time it rears its ugly head. Wouldn't surprise me one bit if she if you told me she would <clears throat> if she hasn't drawn a thing since old Teach kicked the bucket. Go on, has she? See? It's a tantrum. She's a toddler lashing out and screaming for attention that she says she doesn't want. It's boring. I may be that bitch, but she's just a bitch. And it's only a matter of time before she throws you out too. You following? I don't think you're right. Olivia's doing fine. We're having a great date night. Just because it could be better doesn't negate that. I pretend the chord she struck at a, uh, a whole tune with doesn't exist. You don't got to, but don't say I didn't warn you. I guess it would suck for both of you if I, of all people, get how she ticks. So pay no mind on little old me. Then I won't. She's just trying to get to me. We'll make it work. I know Olivia far better than her. When the song ends, Mia lets go of my arm and adjusts my dress. Or adjusts her dress, not my dress. Well damn, it looks like you can dance after all, human boy. Impressive. Thanks. And I'd better get going. She turns and struts off before I can respond. Sure. See ya. Ugh, what does she know? Whatever, I'm out of here. Looking at the clock, the eulogy's in another 15 minutes. Guess I'll look around to find a good vantage point. Someone to really capture the speech. Maybe I could even record it? Nah, I don't even own a microphone attachment for it. Alright, I'm gonna take just a quick break because I have to use the bathroom. So, get ready. Should be pretty quick. And then we're rolling into probably the worst scenes. I'm gonna take a wild guess. Back on the saddle. You're not gonna forget this one. You want to though. <laughs> yeah, for what's coming next, I think I'll probably need to make sure that uh, I'm not having tummy issues. So, now that that's settled though, back to it. Ugh. Pop all my bones. <clears throat> There's some stairs I wanted to check out. They've got to be for those balconies that go to the around the dance hall. They're a bit of a distance away, down the hall from the exit. There's even an elevator here. Climbing them, I find my guess was completely right. The view from up here is pretty great. I can see the whole room at once. The mass of dancing couples on one end and the dining tables near the other. The music is petering off now. Setting my camera case on the floor, I start setting up for the perfect shot. Monopod extended, 200mm lens attached, ISO and f-stop set to 
uh, account for the dimmer lighting and focused. I'm all set. Just in time as Ben takes the stage to start setting up. Nico? I was so busy getting my camera ready, I hadn't heard him approach. I can't really turn to look at him since I still need to keep my camera positioned. Saw you from below. Damien? Inko, look. Can't have to keep this stable. Inko! The sigh, I turned my head to look his way. As long as I don't have to move a muscle, it should be fine. What is it, Damien? About earlier. Uh, at my place. That whole mess. It's about Olivia. Oh, of course it is. Haven't you said enough about her, Damien? He growls at my words. Inko, Olivia isn't well. Not him, too. I'm worried about her. She hasn't been herself for so long now. And I've tried to help her. But she's shutting everyone out again. And this time I don't think she'll even try to listen to anyone. Anyone except you. I've been worried. I want to know what you think of all this. Can anything even be done? It's like she was... Back before the start of the school year. Worse even. She's not even painting. It's a complete relapse and then some. How do you even come back from that? I've been trying for years and it hasn't worked. Clearly. I'm not a problem that can be solved. It's not a problem that can be solved from the outside. I, I get that now. What solution even is there? It's not a lack of support. She's just determined to drag herself down. If she just pulled herself up and stopped lashing out, that's one thing, but that's not happening. So that really does just leave you. I want to pinch my brow, but that would mean letting my DSLR fall. Opting for the next best thing, I roll my eyes. You think I haven't been trying? For fuck's sake, this whole night I've done everything in my power to make it an unforgettable formal for... Fuck the formal, Inko! Olivia needs some actual help. I know. I know. And I've been trying all night. Looking back down to the stage, Ben is starting his own speech. Once Olivia gets some closure, I'm sure I'll be able to talk with her fully. She just needs to say her goodbyes properly, Damien. There's a rise of snort behind me. I don't bother turning back to Damien. Sure you know. I'll see you guys at home. I scoff. <laughs> yeah, night, right, Damien. Behind me, the double door slams shut. Thanks for the vote of confidence, prick. Ben has started speaking. The crowd gives some polite applause. The next person on stage is Lunara, the striped raptor from the Culture Club. She's passionate, but I can tell the crowd is starting to wince at how optimistic she is considering the subject matter. Finally, Olivia. She's gonna, like, break on stage or something. I do not trust the fucking advice Mia gave her. She rolls on stage slowly, looking back nervously as a pale blue hand shoes her forward. You can do it, Olivia. She takes the microphone from its stand, bringing it closer to her and clutching it with both hands. She's trying to cover up more of herself. Sound of crumpled paper blares messily through the speakers as she handles the mic. Was that to be Ben's notes for her? And then... Silence. Is the mic busted? Wait, no, there wouldn't have been any feedback or anything. No, she's just not saying anything. She's looking over the crowd at all the faces she can't make out through the spotlight. Maybe she's looking for me. Finally, her frozen demeanor shattered, but it's overtaken by a new emotion. Fear. Olivia clears her throat. Hello, everyone. I'm here to talk about... Yadikin. She coughs. Sorry. I joked a lot of, uh, about tearing up earlier, but this really does hurt. You know, it's a visual novel. Fucking fucking one with that. Holy shit, man. Yeah, no, this is... This is rough. This is... It's not easy to go through, that's for sure. Mr. Yadigan taught us out of school for 12 years. He was a beloved teacher to all, student and co-worker alike. The note falls from Olivia's trembling hand. The air conditioning sweeps it a few feet away. Olivia stares at it for a second and continues. Oh boy. Mr. Adkins saw the great in everyone. He really did. He saw the best in me. And even I didn't. She's speaking from the heart now. Thank you, Mia. We, we know speaking from the heart didn't go well last time. 
He was the kind of person to make the most of any situation. Even when he was in his last days, his top priority was a student still. Selfless, even when he only stood to lose. He really did have it all together. He really made it his goal to help everyone. He's gone now. That's that. She sniffles, really fighting back a sob. Oh man, this is great stuff, Mia. God, Inko. God! But his teachings can live on. If only I could have gotten them before it was too late. I'm a failure. That's okay. Even though I've been convinced to come up here half naked, to give a talk I'm not comfortable with, it's okay. Even though I've lost my passion for art, and I'm losing my home, my family, and that's okay, because Mr. Yadikin taught me. Powerful sob racks her body, amplified by the microphone in her hands. Mike drops as she hides her face in her hands, a loud thump of it doing nothing to hide their vocal wails. The lighting, the bitter emotion. Ugh, this is fucking filthy. The way she's framed by the stage and the audience, it's a modern renaissance painting. God damn it. Yeah, that's probably like the worst moment there. My camera shutter fires off constantly as it captures every millisecond of Olivia's performance. Already names for the series flash through my head just as fast as my camera. I could probably even publish these to a gallery. Drawing my eye from the viewfinder, I take in the whole scene to fully appreciate Olivia's act below. The room is silent now. Even Olivia. Man. 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 Yeah, she trusted us. She really shouldn't have. Her head is tilted back, and her eyes are locked on me. That look from her is... tears at my heart brutally. This isn't an act? I thought Mia's advice was... Even from here, I can see the emotions that are displayed on her face. Anger. Sorrow. Betrayal. And yet... My fingers press down one final time. Olivia's pain, forever immortalized within my camera. The final click of my DSLR seemed to echo throughout the hall. The moment is still, until it wasn't. A loud clattering echoes through the room. The mic lays abandoned on the floor as Olivia rushes off stage and out to the f out the far exit into the halls. This isn't good. She's taking this the wrong way. She can't be alone right now. I, I need to help her. I turn and. Damien's coming to fuck us up, and we deserve every bit. Hands violently pull me by the shoulder, tossing me back and onto the ground. For a split second, I, for the split, for a split second that I could still see her, Olivia turned on stage and fled. I instinctively check my camera to make sure it's safe. The same hands that had thrown me to uh, grab my jacket's lapels, hoisting me off the floor and forcing me to face with. What the fuck was that, Inko? Let go of me! I need to find Olivia. That's not happening. How about I kick your ass instead? He throws me back, positioning himself firmly against both exits. Damien, you can't do that. Shut the fuck up. Give me one reason not to shove that camera down your throat. What the fuck was that picture? His, frill, his frills are completely flared open. An acrid spittle flies out with each of his shouts. You wouldn't get it. No. No, I get it perfectly. You think you're an artist? How could you do this to her, man? You brought her out of her shell, only to shove her back in. Damien, calm down. You're letting her bring us down. No. She's not the one bringing you down. Let's it sit for a minute. 
Let me go to Olivia. No. Not a chance in hell. You and her? Over. I lean over, looking for any way to get past him. Hey! Don't make me kick your ass more than I'm already going to. There won't be any of that. Good thing I have sunglasses. I bring the camera as close to Damien as I can before setting the flash off in his face. Shit! I start barreling down the balcony past him, finally making it by. An iron grip yanks me back by the neck. He's grabbed my camera strap and rips it off with another tug. Fuck this camera! Don't- It's too late. The camera plastic is hissing in protest as it's dissolved by acid. Damn it! All that work gone. Olivia's smiles were all in there. I couldn't save them. And fuck you! He spikes it down over the balcony onto the floor 30 feet below. I hear it smash into pieces and the battery explode. And I'm left, leaning over the balcony, reaching for it. God! I swing back towards Damien, going for a sucker punch. It's effortlessly countered, and a fist goes straight into my eye. Shit! A cascade of stars invades my vision, and I'm left leaning against the balcony. Good fuck you, Inko. Absolutely. Holy shit, this hurts. I'm probably bleeding. His hands are rough. Then he raises his arm for another swing. Oh, fuck. But the second hit never lands. No, Ferris! Let him beat me! He's caught Damien's entire arm in one hand. There'll be no more of this. Damien snarls at the whale. Ferris' response is the simple squeeze of his hand that pops Damien's elbow. Yeah. I'm disappointed in both of you. On the floor below, the lights are flipping on. The event is over. Ben glares up to us from the mic, having given a last-minute send-off he wasn't expecting to do. Just stay put until everyone's gone. Then we'll talk. As much as I'd love to, my mind is so, uh, set on only one thing right now, above all else. Olivia. And you just... And you just opened that way. My stomach is already fucking twisting. Hey! I sprint past, finally free of both of those idiots. Olivia, please be okay, I'm coming. It's like... I'm coming to her rescue. Yeah. I'm coming to your rescue. Bros? Bros, is that a fucking staircase? <sighs> what am I doing? Wrong. Oh, why do we have to why do we have to have these beautiful shots here? It's such a terrible ending. Like this is great. Jesus Christ. Olivia! You're okay, thank God I found you. Inko, I want to be alone. Go away. What are you doing up here? Go away. What's wrong? Are you blind? What isn't wrong? You heard me before. I'm losing everything. You fell the Attican. I let out a deep sigh. The attic in this, the attic in that, all the time. I'm sick of hearing it at this point. He's gone. Why does this need to affect our date night? God, I want to throw up. Only now it occurs to me how close she is to the edge, and my gut churns. Why is she up here? I'm scared. Why are you up here, Olivia? Were you here to... Oh my god. I was not! You were! Olivia, you're in a dangerous position. Please leave me alone. You can't be alone right now. You need someone. You need me. Leave! She sobs that last one out. She's back facing the other way, staring out up out at the night sky. I give her a moment to let it all out. I place a hand on her shoulder to let her gently know I'm here for her. She tries shrugging, shrugging it off. I saw you. That picture. It's just too much. Made me realize things. It's about you. Olivia, please understand. It was beautiful. 
You were beautiful. What's wrong with you? She doesn't respond further. She doesn't get it. She will, one day. She's an artist, after all. It's part of why I love her. I should tell her that. It's okay, Olivia. I still love you. Even despite it all. She stopped and slowly turns her head. Who are you? No, not from her. Olivia, look at yourself. Look at how you've been treating everyone. Look at my face. Damien did this. He did? Yes. And guess what? He broke my camera too. Because you went and riled him up. Now I'm getting hurt because of your stupid thoughtless decisions. Kill this fucking man? Absolutely. Look, I don't want to deal with this right now. My camera's busted. But I still have my phone. I open the gallery and swipe through the dozens of pictures we've taken together, shoving the screen in her face. Look! Look how happy you are! In every one of these! I think I was smiling because you wanted me to. How do you not get that? No, don't lie to me. Inko, I did that because you told me. Don't you want to have a good night? Inko, I've been- I've just been doing what you want! You had me go on the fucking stage with my tits out and left to God knows where just taking fucking pictures! I hate it! You're throwing a tantrum! Just like that? Clarity. He was right about you. Like a single drop of water disturbing a whole ocean. Olivia's eyes widen and sink into her head. She opens her mouth to nag more. No, I'm starting to realize something. He was right. Shit, Damien was right about you too. And Liz fucking Ben? Each name called out takes something from Olivia. Each piece of the puzzle falls right cleanly into place. How could I have been so blind? She knows I have her dead to rights, just as everyone else does. Something in her chair compartment moves. She shields it with one hand. I barely see it, but it's there. For fuck's sake. You brought your rat with you? On a date? Are you even trying? I gesture wildly to the little thing, and then to Olivia. It's not everyone else that's the problem. You're even dragging me down. Like, is it too fucking much to ask for a normal date night for once? At least pretend we're a normal couple. Never gonna actually happen, clearly, but fuck, could you put in the effort? She's staring lasers right through me. Too bad, it's not working today. So no, it's not everyone else. You need to change Olivia, tonight. You may think you're failing Edikin, but you know what? You're right. And you know what? You're right. But I'm not. I'm here for you. It's what he would have wanted, and you know it. I'm doing him proud, and rejecting me fails him all over again. Just let me help you. Her expression softens. Oh. I'm doing it. She's realizing everything. Uh-oh. That, that change in the music. I hate you. Her words bore through me, striking me precisely at my core. Air escapes me, as though Olivia's words were a noose tightening around my throat. No, she's realized she's just pulling my leg, very tastelessly. In a moment, she'll crack a smile and laugh, and we'll laugh it off together before going home. In just a moment. But it never happens. We just stare at each other for maybe a full minute. Maybe two. That face. Completely void of feeling. It sears into my mind. Every second it faces me. Always with that blank expression. I got one last shot. I, I can fix everything. <laughs> I can make it work. She's just troubled. Everything tonight is cold. Scary. The threat of losing everything. I don't blame her for lashing out. For saying things she doesn't mean. Hey, hug it out. Disgust. Olivia gives up and starts rolling to the elevator near us. I won't let her give up. I step in front of her with my arms spread. Message is clear. Hug me, Gator Girl, and we'll walk, work this all out. 
Message goes ignored as she tries to maneuver around me. I step in her way and lean closer, my hands finally landing on her. It wasn't my fault. Don't expect any more thoughts, any more explanations or eloquent descriptions. That was my only one that night. Sometime later they returned to me. I don't know how long some time is, only that it's later. Not in the convention center anymore. I haven't been in ages. Hospital room. Right. I sh should feel tired right now, but I don't. How long has it been? I can't tell, but the sun shines through a window on the far side of the room. Trying to check my phone, I see it's still di out of battery. Just like the past 10 or so times I've checked. My thoughts are muddy, haunting. <laughs> I don't know if it's the lack of sleep or what I saw. There's a hum in the air now, though. The electric size of the nearby equipment. I don't know any medical mumbo jumbo. I won't pretend to. It's bad. All right. The pains were here too. They came running when they heard the news. I don't remember how many of them there were, how long they stayed. But they're not here now. I wonder where they went. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't really care. I'm left alone with her. Again. Her chest rises and falls slowly. The only sign of life to hear. Resting gently on it, the only real survivor. When the nurses left, I had set him gently on her bed. I don't know why. He sniffed around a bit and crawled up gently onto her chest. And there he remained for hours. The small animal lets out a tired yawn at my presence and blinks its beady eyes awake. He sniffs at the air again and goes to nudge her hand for pets. Wasted effort, in spite of Gut's determination. A little squeak begging for attention. My arm is leaden as I reach out for him. I could at least provide some comfort. The vermin! Wait, it's just her pet rat. Excuse me, are you a relative? No, I'm her boyfriend and I bought her pet rat. He's already running down the hall. Vermin! In room 302! A few more nurses gather around the door, attracted all the commotion. Does this guy just have a phobia? Where's the janitor? Get him down here now! It's just her pet rat. The entire floor is in an uproar. No, ma'am, our facility hasn't had a row problem in over three decades. Hey, hey, let me through. You guys are going too fast. Everyone's being such a pain. Shortly after, an elderly man with gloves brushes past. He grunts when he sees Guts and yanks him up by the tail. Hey, you can't take him. That's... Ow, get it out! Throw it out back! On the way out, the janitor brushes past me. He sees me, shoulders sagging, staring blankly at him, while the poor thing grabs at the air in his grasp. Hey, don't. 
Look, I don't make the rules. I'm just a volunteer. <sighs> okay. Do what you gotta do. He didn't hear my approval. He's already gone. I can hear shouts in the hall. All at her about Gus. Guts. Turning back to Olivia, I... Fully awake now, my mind is once more flooded with thoughts. <laughs> Memories. Something cruel within me forces me back to the stairwell. Facing Miss Scaler and Mr. Ferris. And the growing crowd drawn to Olivia. All so vividly. It all plays out on repeat endlessly. Each repeat, a lingering pain reverberates within my chest. Over and over and over. <laughs> and the cruelest part? This pain pales in comparison to the pain others must be feeling. <laughs> my mind is pulled back by something. Sounds. Voices. Activity. There's people approaching. <laughs> They're right at the doorway. My stiff body turns. Just enough to see... It's the pains. The whole family. One by one they enter the room. Randy pulls up a seat for his wife. Lotus one steps forward. He leaves something on the table. It's another macaroni picture. He tries making it lean against the vase, but the weight keeps making it slide down. Gives it up after a few tries, leaving it at that. Damien watches the brief attempt, then his attorn attention turns to her. He rubs the back of his neck nervously with one hand. I shouldn't have kept you. If only we were just a little sooner. Don't blame yourself. Wasn't your fault. He nods, still not looking at me. Don't be blaming yourself either, okay? Thanks. Hmm. Damien takes a seat. There's not really anything left to say. The room is full, but the only sounds come from the medical equipment and movement outside. Footsteps. Damien's folks turn their head to the door. I follow suit. A tall man stands, filling the frame of the door, the sorrow etched on his face. He steps forward, past us, looking down at his daughter. What's become of her? Sophia reaches up to Randy's hand, and he pulls her up. They silently retreat out of the room, waving Vinny over as well. Suddenly, I feel out of place. I follow behind the rest. There's some chairs outside. I sit in one, slumping over far. The pains are talking to a doctor nearby. I don't hear much of it. The word vertebrae is used. I try to listen more, but the world feels like it's melting away from me. My body slackens more and more by the passing second. All the hours I had stayed up in that room are starting to crash into me. <sighs> Falling asleep. Light fades from my eyes with that final thought, swallowed wholly by darkness. And then... Nothingness. Sir? Sir? Thoughts coalesce. Hallway. Nurse. Hospital. Eyeing the clock nearby, I see it's already past noon. Sir, we can't have you loitering here. But I was visiting. The door is closed. The nurse follows my gaze to it. Damien, Vinnie, Sophia Brandy. Her father. Everyone is gone. Are you family? No, but... The nurse scoffs. Okay. 
I'll just wait until someone gets back to see Olivia again. Where did they all go? I stare at blankly at the closed door. The nurse finishes his business and exits the room again. He looks shocked to see me. Sir, we have a waiting room for a reason. Oh. I can wait for Olivia there, sure. Besides, I'm starving. I haven't eaten anything since that dinner. My body is numb. It's a struggle to even stand. But I get up. I take one last look toward the, her room. Why? I start walking to the waiting room. Each step, question reverberates within my murky mind. Why? Why did this happen? Did I cause this? Is it my fault? So many questions. So many steps. Until I finally step outside. And the final question brings clarity to me. What did I expect? I'm on, my mind follows the tangent. What did I expect? I expected... A relationship? A normal relationship? And I tried hard to get it. I put in the effort. But the situation wasn't normal. Olivia wasn't normal. All that effort for a normal relationship <laughs> wouldn't have worked out at all. And it didn't. If anything, it got worse for everybody. Is it all just wishful thinking? Is it even worth it? <sighs> it wasn't supposed to be like this. Stop and think long and hard about the phrase. It's true. It wasn't. It wasn't supposed to be like this. And it's not worth it. I look back down the hallway to the door to Olivia's room. I I'm sorry, Olivia. I'll visit. We can spend time together again. <laughs> if the staff will let me. If the pains will let me when I can. I'll miss you, Olivia. I head for the metro station nearby when I see him. He's focused entirely on the window of Olivia's room. Guts. Kneeling down, I offer the rat my hand. Come on, Guts. He doesn't budge. The small animal doesn't take notice of me at all. I sigh. Alright, Guts. Goodbye. I think about looking back at the building one last time. No. I shouldn't. <laughs> Wouldn't be good for me. For my mental health. So I continue. I force my legs forward until I know the building is out of your eye shot. It's hard, but it's better this way. Ending one of four. Killer. That was not great. <sighs> she trusted us. Yeah. Ooh. You don't get any nice ending music here. You don't get any nice images. You just get the haunting sound of the wind. And what you've done. Yeah, see, I, uh, I had an easier time holding it together during that ending because, uh, shit. Any sadness or anything that would have gotten me, like, just replaced with an overwhelming rage towards Inko. <laughs> Can't watch that epilogue. Gotta get this shit my, uh, done for myself. Hey, man. 
I understand. I had to, I, I told myself I had to do these endings to get that epilogue, so I'm on the same boat, that's for sure. I'm gonna go work on trudging through this, I guess, fuck, man. Uh, just, uh, do, <laughs> why? Why must this always be tagged? God damn it. Really makes you appreciate just how loving Nico, Olivia and Nico are towards each other in three and four. Yeah. Shows you that, uh, you know, you do things different. It can have a profound effect on how things turn out, right? I got three first, then four. Yeah, that's what I had done for it as well. There we go. E4 epilogue at the top left. Oh boy. <clears throat> well, before we jump right into that, kind of want to formulate my thoughts on at least e1 there i mean we talked a little bit about e2 when we were doing the intermission and whatnot but yeah no it's rough seeing inko just blatantly ignore everything in pursuit of just his own interests um just puppeting olivia around inko and e1 is just cruel yeah and part of me like at the like well not part of me i i don't think it, he even really recognizes that at the end he still sees this as, well, this wasn't healthy for me. She wasn't healthy for me, not he made mistakes. I mean, he has like some introspection, I guess, but it's it's more of like a narcissistic in introspection, really. He treats her like everyone else treated her, then acted like he did it all for her benefit, and then fucking killed her. Yeah. But I mean, I don't even think he... I mean, he says he did it for her benefit, but you know, I think he kind of... Maybe he doesn't, but deep down, like, it, it all is just for him. And I think that that kind of sucks, too, that um, that's the only time he gets to use his artistic skills, right? I, I kind of mentioned it previously, how I wished there was more of Inko and his photography in the game. Um, and, I mean, obviously, we got a lot of that here at the end, but... Um, I don't know. It, it's kind of weird that, I suppose, Olivia's art... Um, the, the endings where things are better for her is she has a healthier view with her art, right? Um, and in this ending, the worst one, she's just given up on art, essentially, and lost her way. But for Inko, it's not... The more he leans into his art, the worse he becomes. Which, I, I think it's odd to have that uh, difference. It doesn't matter if she's alive or dead at the end of the day one, her life is over. Oh, absolutely. She, she's done for. She she can't recover from that. I mean, Damien basically lays that out when right before he rocks our shit. He should have beat the fuck out of us more. For a sake, I hope she passes in her sleep and one deserves peace. Can't disagree. And the, well, I would like her to like make a recovery and then maybe turn it around. Maybe that's like a oh shit moment if she were to survive. But who knows. In the good endings, he takes meaningful pictures, the photo of them all together, for example. In the bad endings, he becomes obsessive with it. Right. Doc mentioned her vertebrae, her spine is fucked. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't see it going any better, because even if she wakes up, like, she's even more disabled now. And given that she already did not have a healthy relationship with that prior, it's only gonna get worse. So... I guess the only thing with um, Nico getting obsessive with his photography, like, yeah, that makes sense to be, like, a, a big negative trait in him in the, the bad ending. It, it just feels like there was hardly any photos taken in uh, the other endings, if that makes sense. Like, there is the group photo, but that's, like, right at the end of the game. Um, I don't know. I, I suppose I just would have liked to have seen that part of Nico handled in a healthy way uh, a bit more, rather than just, like, right at the end as, like, a memorabilia type thing with it only being used once especially when like that's his passion and what he's hoping to strive for i suppose i generally hope she just passed on her seat after e1 she really needs that peace she was so done with her life yeah i mean at the top of those stairs there's really nothing saying she wasn't 
thinking about it, right? I mean, she says she wasn't, but... Also, at the same time, like... I mean, you just... Essentially... Had your breakdown. Realized everything's fucked. There's really nothing else happening. So... It's not a great time. It's not a great time. I think the only moment that I got close to maybe getting a little emotional is when her dad came in. Like, that fucking blows. No matter if she wasn't, she had no future memories. Yeah. Well, at the very least, via endings 1 and 2, I was able to get through with no no crying. <laughs> it's fucked up that it's the only ending he comes in. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like Inko's parents, right? Uh, we don't see them at all. I, I think you get like a like one scene with his dad drinking in ending three. I want to say when he comes back one night and that's it, or when he's leaving one night. I I can't remember. Um, but that's it. So be back by midnight. Yeah, that was it. You get a line from your dad in E three and E two. Same line, right? Right. Well, yeah, no, I, I think, I think ending three probably got me the hardest. That one really wrenched me. Ending four also was tugging at the heartstrings, but I think that might have been some like residual emotion from ending three as well when I did that. I enjoyed that plug. I'm going to go finish this shit show. All right, Sorums, give you a salute. Wish you the best of luck. Well, before we do the E4 epilogue, let's uh let's uh let's cheer ourselves up just a little bit here. Shall we? Always makes me cry, but in a good way. Yeah, I could see why. Need me someone who looks at me like that. Remember, everybody, these are our two dorks. This is our canon. All right. Well, with the palate cleansed, I think it's time we roll into the four epilogue. I think we earned it. We, we've had highs. We've had the lows. And now, the reward for our actions. July 6, 201M, 2027 BC. So this is about, what, like uh, three to four years after? Hmm. 
Oh, damn. Interesting getup we got here. <laughs> Wait, did we actually do it? Did we get the fucking, sh <laughs> the fucking gator tooth necklace? Did we will it into existence? Holy shit. Also, looking good with like the fucking stubble there. I think you're killing it, Inko. Quick, quick little applause for that. <clears throat> Here we go. Bro, you know that thing was in his arm at some point. Probably. Nah, more like in his neck. That you know, it's, it's one of those. <clears throat> As we step out of the theater hall together, the harsh glare from the afternoon sun is only st uh, stimmied by my prescription glasses. The rest of our group aren't so lucky as I listen to their hisses of pain. We stop beside, just beside the box office poster of the latest work for, uh, from the production company Olivia and I got to work for. Stymied, weird word. Yeah, when I see a word, I just fucking go for it. And if I'm wrong, oopsies. What do you two think? Olivia and I turn to look at our guests, excited to hear their thoughts. This was the glowing start of our careers, after all. And while we're only interns now, the studio had promised us at least part-time positions for the quality of our work. My girlfriend's hand-painted poster was definitely drawing eyes. As for me, I was in charge of finding the locales for various scenes. This meant I was out in the field, taking scenic photos to show directors exactly how certain shots would be framed. That, and I had just started training for actual camera work, too. I swear it looks like Olivia lost some weight. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I mean, if we, I mean, we can, like, take a look later, but uh, it might also be, like, the baggier clothing from before. Well, I thought it, <clears throat> I thought it was good. Man, that script kind of sucked, huh? Didn't you just ask for their opinions? And the score. And the acting. Basically everything that wasn't advertised in cinematography. Aren't you humble? The movie was fine. Get better standards. I don't want to work on bad movies. I want to work on good ones. That's true. Nobody ever got anywhere by underselling themselves. Should you really be that critical, Liz? You're still selling Olivia's prints, after all. Well, you also have to start somewhere. Everyone was an amateur once, even you guys. With a loud harumph, Olivia crosses her arms. I'll see if I invite you next time, then. I didn't mean it like that, Olivia. Nico did great! The sets look fantastic, and the locations were really nice, too. Inko, tell her I didn't mean it. Olivia already knows. Even with her head turned away, I can see how her tail is flicking side to side. Well, only one last thing left to do. Our Dilo Spino friend motions toward the long and dirty red carpet, still sitting in the foyer of the theater. Taking a signal, I slowly push Olivia over it, my partner pretending to wave at an imaginary crowd for the premiere of the film. Finally, we exit the building. This is right behind us, holding the door open for Damien as he finishes rolling up the runner he brought from home just for the occasion. You guys have any other plans for today? <sighs> yeah, sorry, but my boss needs me at the studio now. I want to make sure I remember the script for tomorrow morning's show. I thought you said you had ad-libbed everything. Yeah, but... <clears throat> yeah, why do you think they're calling me in again? I can't hide my wince. It's all good. Rides are just butt hurt that I can't come up with better lines all the time. That I can't come up with better lines all the time. Liz sighs. I've also got business to attend to. And there's a full crate waiting at my office that I need to process, and Lenara asked me to set aside some, or set aside and then set some aside, and then there's the historical foundations whose order is missing and... Breathe, sunflower. Damien's hand rubs, the back, rubs her back soothingly, making her head droop slightly. Right, sorry. That's fine. You already received my newest set though, right? Yes, and there's already a queue of buyers. You're really starting to take off. Because you're a good saleswoman. They smile at one another. Do you two need a ride? 
Olivia shakes her head in the negative. We'll be good, Liz. In that case, we'll see you two later. Bye, Olivia. Bye, Nick. Bye, Inko. Swing by my office sometime. We'll do brunch. Sounds like a plan. Oh, and Inko? I receive a silent message with a nod. My fingers brush over my pocket, and Damien nods. <gasps> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Could there be a small box in my pocket? He smiles in recognition, both of us grinning as our girlfriends look confused. With waves of goodbye, we go our separate ways, our oldest friends heading towards the parking lot, but we veer down the sidewalk. Traveling down the warm pavement of Volcadero Bluffs, Olivia and I reminisce. Pointed at how much or how little the city has changed around us as we wander aimlessly down memory lane. Though, as we wander, I know there's a destination I'm particularly headed for. Carefully, I weave our path to my end goal, hearing the tiniest of gasps from my girlfriend when she sees the familiar water feature. Oh, jeez. My throat is going through it tonight. Entering that park from so long ago, Olivia can only smile and take in how it all looks the same, the exact same. Even the stairs upward, though this time I'm more capable of carrying her up. Recently gotten a, into a bit of farming as well. <laughs> Got a little garden going. It's tough work, but the fresh food is well worth it. Been considering documenting my progress and posting it online. Maybe some of my other findings. Turns out, self-sustainability makes you a lot more in tune with the world you live in. I ease her down gently on the ledge of the fountain, her tail's tip tracing over the water's surface slowly. Is my boy Inko fishing in his pocket? Wow, I can't believe it's still here. Yeah, brings back a lot of memories. For just a moment, the park is all white. The air is cold, and a younger Olivia is sitting beside me. And, with a blink, I'm back to the present. Though, Olivia seems to still be in that moment, and she stares wistfully at the water pouring down the fountainhead. Time passes as I simply stand beside her, listening to the trickle of water splash down. Finally, I feel her clawed fingers take hold of my hand, the scales of her palm meeting the skin of mine. She's finally come back. A heavy, shuddering breath passes through her lips. <laughs> Welcome back. She rolls her eyes and snorts derisively, but her fingers tighten around my hand. Feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but I still remember it perfectly, right down to our lousy wishes. She turns herself fully to me. Hey, I think they were good wishes. They came true, after all. She looks back to the fountain. Yeah, they did. It was a pretty wild day, huh? Real bittersweet. Yeah. We were pretty dumb back then. <laughs> At least I was, trying to jump up here. And then I helped you the rest of the way, yeah. It's a good kind of stupid. Scalar got a hold of me the other day. She wants to be on me to be an alumni speaker. Back in the same classroom, even. I'll stand where he stood. You gonna do it? I think I will. I wanna pass on to others what was passed on to me. In a way, it all started here. It was. Those are some pretty lucky wishes. I'm gonna test it. I quirk an eyebrow at her. I'm saying we should do it again. All right, then. With my free hand, I reach into my pocket. Oops, wrong one. Only one thing is in that pocket, and it isn't a coin. I have to draw my other hand away. Or I have to draw away my other hand so I can check my last pocket. And come up with only a single silver quarter. Well? Do you want to have the wish? She chews her lip in thought. What if we both flip and wish? Like, sharing? Yeah, like sharing. Together, then. Olivia nods, once more taking my hand. 
The coin is balanced on my finger. My thub is primed to flick it. Thub? <laughs> Missed the M there. On three. Two. One. I was going to reach for a coin, but you're not going to be able to hear me flick that through the air. Despite the awkwardness, Olivia manages to flip the coin perfectly into the well. I make my wish, curling my hand around hers. Although, it sort of forms into a prayer by the end. It's an important one. Well, hmm. What would you wish for? I'm looking all intense like that. You go first. Olivia's hand leaves mine once more, as she clenches her fingers together on her lap. To be his good a teacher as he was, and to be able to bring out the most in the things around me. You've already done so with me. You're making me blush. Cut it out. Okay. What was yours? Is it going to be to say yes? Oh no. <laughs> oh no! My wish? Tackled. Well, that's a pretty uh, resolute yes, huh? Was it worth it, Humo? Worth every bit of pain, baby! <laughs> Woo! We didn't just hug the gator. We didn't just kiss the gator. We have now married the gator. And, as a result, we get our happy ending. Our happiest ending. We married that fucking gator, baby. Hell yeah, we did. Hell yeah, we did. A nice contrast to the um, the fountain from before, right? Moved on. Now we're going to fuck that. We will have the gator babies. This is the next step, obviously. This is great. This was great. Uh, is this supposed to? I can't tell if this is supposed to be like right at the end of E4 because it's um. I mean, she's wearing the, the, the hoodie from before, and it looks like Inko's still in his regular stuff. So I, I'm not sure if this is, like, the resort we were at in E4, or if this is supposed to be, like, our house now. It's the vacation house? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense, then. That's what they drew together. Oh, true. Right. I, remember, I, I vaguely remember that at the end now. Here, let's actually run back to that real quick. You can take a quick look at that. You're also supposed to take a look for the pizza, and I didn't see anything with the pizza. Oh shit, no, wait, go back. Yeah, there it is. Right there. Okay, wait, no, there is something with the pizza there, isn't there? What is that? Is that just... Oh. I know what that is. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Anakin's hand. That's cute. Well. I heard to see those endings. Is it really? Yeah, you can kind of make it out. Because it, it, it's it's reflecting somebody's hand. It can't be um, Ben's hand. It's not my hand. So, it's Anakin's hand right below the painting. He's sitting over us. Hard to see those endings, I'm happy I got to see Inko and want to get married. Yeah, it's worth it. 100%. She looks so happy. <laughs> yeah, especially when you take into account what we were seeing on those other endings. But hey, we didn't save during those. We didn't save during those. So those those don't exist. We only have the good endings. Man, I'm not even a goddamn furry. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, that's a, you're a scaly now. You like the scales, the reptiles. Nah. I think people should be able to appreciate a good story regardless. Right? <laughs> Fuck it, we ball. I'm, I'm not gonna fucking back down. <laughs> I'll, t I'll tell you right damn now. You give me a gator wife, I'm going with it. We Fuck it, we ball. To, to, the, to the max. But... Yeah. So we've seen just about everything there is to see with, uh... 
I want to hug that gator. Uh, the only things would be, uh, what? Like, checking a couple of different, like, optional things and just seeing, like, a little flavor dialogue. See if no paraplegic or artistic gator wife. Yeah. We gotta hold strong. Maybe one day. But yeah, I mean... There's not, much, there's not really anything else to do. Really, I think that's literally everything. Yeah, I think, so. I think so too. Like, the only thing would be, like, I could think of would be the options when you're trying to get uh, Liz and Olivia to, like, make up at the tower. Because there's, like, so many different uh, permutations of it. But it's all just differences in slight dialogue. It, it wouldn't be really anything. So, yeah, no, majority of content, all done. And you know what? For 15 bucks... Fucking how many hours of content did I get here? This is uh, we we started today with about 27 hours on record. We're just about seven more hours, so just shy or just at 34 hours of content. I would say that's a good fucking 15 dollars spent. We had heartwarming moments. We had heartbreaking moments. Had moments where I cried. There's not many games that get me to cry. So, pretty moving. Um, and hell, it might have even inspired me a little bit to maybe get off my ass and do some stuff. So. Well, Mr. Huma, I think you could safely say you got to hug that gator. Yeah, you can see it right here. Gator being hugged. So. Oh, we're coming up on the seven hour mark. I think I've said my piece on this game. After each of the endings, I kind of gave my uh, gave my opinion. I think it's a great game. I think if they decide to do more like the ends in the future, I mean, I'll probably even start checking out some of their other games too, just to see how how the quality is. But if they any bonus content that comes this way, any good mods that get made, I'll more than likely check them out. Um, but yeah. Until then, this will sit on the shelf. It's a good memory. Been a little emotionally rough lately, and this game really struck something with me. Glad I got to stumble across your channel, man. This was a trip. I'm glad you stuck around. I'm glad you stuck around. It's we, <laughs> funny enough. This game uh, actually probably popped off the biggest on <laughs> my channel. Uh, uh, just after, or not after. Uh, just a bit more than Fear and Hunger, which it's interesting to see that, um, you know, you can pull a pretty, pretty good audience with these types of games. And then the people who that have come across to are very cool. So I'm appreciative for the Wani game in more ways than one. But yeah, I think I should probably go ahead and sign off here. Don't need to keep people strung along any longer than they need to be. Anybody who's in chat? Be lurking otherwise. I hope you had a good time. Hope you enjoyed the game. It's been a long time. I would do it again happily. But yeah. It's been a pleasure, man. Have a great night. You too. Everybody else, have a good rest of your night, day, evening, whatever time it is for you. And I'll probably catch you tomorrow for a shorter stream. It won't be as long as this one. Um, but yeah. Until then, take care. Listen to the music for a second. <laughs>